Welcome to RacerTV.com and our continuing live coverage of Bike Week 2018. I'm Rodney Tomlin, and we're here at Daytona International Speedway in Daytona Beach, Florida, for the Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross. And of course, with this, it is uh, main event time, and we've got bikes on the racetrack right now, and plenty of great racing action to still come with you. Of course, Jason Wygant and David Eisner right now giving us the call trackside. Let's check in with them. Your leader charging his way through the whoop section, Mike Ross. Ben Robinson out front here. This one a 109.4 last time by Jeremello had a 108.1. So there is your uh, leader working his way around with a 108.2. A 112 for Ross, and here comes Jeremello now. As they're coming back around into that rhythm section, the center. Ross goes for the triple. Jeremello does not. Back and forth through the sand. Switchbacks they go on the left hand side through the Rolex double. And that battle starting to heat up just a little bit now as Jeremello starting to close the gap up just a bit on Mike Ross for second and third. This is going to be their final lap this time around. As they head back onto the right hand side, Robinson out front. Oh, Robinson makes a little bit of a mistake there into the sand section. He's able to keep it on two wheels though. Back and forth they go. Here he comes into the rhythm section now. Robinson one final time. Look at the battle behind him between Ross and Jeremello. Jeremello in the number three spot, and Jeremello goes around the outside. Ross unable to make the rhythm section. Side by side they go, and it's going to be Jeremello up into the number two spot now. One quarter to go. Ross going to take that outside line, try to get the drive through the whoop section. Checkered flag is out. Ben Robinson with the win here in this one. Here they come back up and over the finish, so Robinson with the win. Jeremello on the last lap with one turn to go. Takes second, Mike Ross. Going to take that third and final podium spot here in this one. That was your plus 25 class. Our junior plus 25 on the line right now, our 65 CC 10 to 11. That is main event number 67 on the line, 68, 69, and 70. You guys should be in staging. Once again, race number 68, 69, and 70. You should be in staging. 68 will be our 51 CC four to eight limited class. 69 will be our super mini one. And our race number 70 will be our Vet BC plus 30 riders, which I got a feeling we're going to see several of these riders back out once again in our plus 30 class as they're coming off the track. So Ben Robinson, your plus 25 champion here for the 2018 Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross right here in Daytona, the world center of racing. As we get set to go now, the gate drops off and underway for race number 67, our 65, 10 to 11 class. Coming out of the first turn, they go. Good, clean start for the most part here. Couple riders getting tangled up and nobody really going down here in this one. Our 65cc riders working their way through the sand, through the switchbacks. And I believe that is gonna be the 177 out front here in this one. That should be Kate Johnson out of Holloway, Texas. Down the back stretch they go, first, second, third, and fourth. Starting to stretch it out just a little bit early on here. You see your fifth place rider. As all this rain has come down there, fifth place rider already pulling tear offs less than a half lap into this one. Here they come back into the sand section right now. First, second, and third. Oh, our second place rider, both feet off the pegs. And look at our fourth place rider all the way from fourth to second through the sand. Somehow finding a smooth line through that sand section. Works his way up to second. We'll identify that rider as they come around to timing and scoring. This is right now race number 67 on the track. 68 should be on the line. 69 and 70. Super Mini 1 and Vet BC. You should be in staging. Here they come around for lap number one. K. Johnson out front. That's going to be Thor Powell. Thor all the way from fourth to second in the sand section. Arguably the hardest part of this track for these little bikes. And Thor making quick work of it as he works his way up into second. Owen Covell in the number three spot. Luke Fowler in the four. Austin Schaefer in the five. Up and over the Rolex double they go. Thor jumping that double from the inside. Board that Cobra 65. Down the back stretch they go once again. Kate Johnson out front. Well, we are going to head down now to the Racer TV tent 
So don't forget to tune in to all your friends and family back home to tune into racertv.com as we'll be going live here very shortly to cover the rest of the ninth annual Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross here from Daytona International Speedway. Well, thanks a lot, David, as we pick up the racing action here on racertv.com. Welcoming everyone again along Facebook Live and through live stream as well as we are here at the World Center of Racing. And I take that back, we are uh, not yet and quite headed down the uh, we'll we pick up shortly. the action here in the 65, 10 and 11 year old yeah, class. Exactly. Six back uh, laps of racing is what Meaning. we'll be looking for. Kate Johnson opening up with the early lead in this one out of Hideaway, Texas. And of course, uh, he's maintained a uh, somewhat of a, a decent lead, about 2.6 seconds since that first lap uh, uh, obviously wrapped up uh, Owen Kobo uh, working up into the number two spot. He gets around Thor Powell, the number 15, who drops now to the number three spot. And Thor's been actually uh, making some moves out there, as we heard David Eisner talking about that just a moment ago. Luke Bowser, the 462 in the number four spot. In fifth place is Austin Schaefer. And if you take a look at the gaps right now, we've got a really uh, good race starting to shape up for second place, really tightening up. And it's not far off the pace of Kate Johnson, but Johnson does have a little bit of breathing room right now on the 177 machine. Uh, the tight race, though, is between Owen Koval and Thor Powell, the number 24 and the 15 machines. We'll pick those guys up here on camera in just a few moments. Luke Bowser, Austin Schaefer, uh, Logan Best is your sixth place ride aboard the 206. Nolan Riley, the 23 machine in seventh. Then it's Dilton Blecka in the number eight spot aboard the 511 out of Prusa, Colorado, out of Medellin. Not sure uh, what state that is, but uh, OS Augustin Barinci, the number 53, and Tyler Mollett out of Port St. Lucie, Florida, is rounding out the top 10 here with us this uh, morning as we kick things off in the main events for the 2018 Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross here at Daytona International Speedway. So as we watch the action, if you're just tuning in, you might notice that the, the track is looking a little bit moist right now as we keep an eye on that number 15 machine making his way around. But uh, as we said, a little moisture out there. Thor Powell dropping back to third. He is closing in on Koval still for that number two position. But saw a little bit of rain after this uh, morning's, or actually toward this morning's end of the uh, LCQ racing that uh, put the final few bikes on the uh, racetrack out here. But I'll tell you, when we started our first uh, main events, amazing how great this track was taking the moisture, and they seem to be doing it. All righty, just talking with Jason Wygant right now as we uh, pick the action back up with uh, Owen Koval and uh, Thor Powell. Looks like a, a little bit of a gap starting to open up, and now Owen Koval is only about a half second behind your leader, the 177 of Kate Johnson. And look at them go now. You can see here on the screen only about a bike and a half length separating them as they make to the inside of that turn. Koval trying to search for those outside lines, trying to slingshot around a little lap traffic coming into the play into this one. But the battle is on for the number one spot in this Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross Championship title. Johnson out of Hideaway, Texas, Plymouth, Massachusetts, the home of Owen Koval. Jacksonville, Florida is where we find our third place ride from Thor Powell. Johnson is a Yamaha Dunlop Bell helmet sponsored rider. He's also backed by Moose Racing. That 24 machine and Owen Koval out of Plymouth, Massachusetts on a Pilgrim Motorsports back machine, PAX Racing and Motorbikes Plus. And they are certainly taking both of these machines to the front of the pack. And all eyes are on the battle for the number one spot as he pulls up nearly side by side. Koval can't pull the trigger just yet, though he is locked and loaded, waiting to let the ammunition fly, and there it is. He pulls the trigger. He goes way outside. Let's see if a slingshot around the 177. It looks like that inside line may be the one that is going to keep Kate Johnson in that number one spot and keep Koval 
at bay at this particular point. You can see the hunger in these youngsters' eyes right now all the way here for Bike Week, and they want the folks and the fans here to see that they have been doing their homework over the offseason. The first major of 2000. Ooh, a little swap out there by your leader. And Johnson and Koval continue to battle. White flag is out. And this one will be checkers, and it will be long to Kate Johnson. Johnson will get the win on that one. Owen Koval, try, try as he may, will finish up in the number two spot. Thor Powell was third, Luke Fowler in fourth, and Dylan Blacha will round out your top five. I believe there may be some contradiction. There it is. If you're watching live timing and scoring, but uh, Kate Johnson, Koval, Thor Powell, Luke Fowler is fourth, Logan Best. Actually, I believe it's been given credit uh, for the fifth place position, but I believe it's still the 5'11 of Dylan Bletcha, who would be your fifth place position finisher there. As we move next to some 51cc racing, these riders here in the limited class. 32 riders making the main gate today. The number one of Maverick Snyder from Vincennes, Indiana. The number two, Kevin DePino out of in Salem, Pennsylvania, four, Ryder Andrews from Charleston, West Virginia. Number five, Lincoln Snyder from New Bern, North Carolina. 13, Christian Nyman from Nunnick, Connecticut. Connecticut. 14, Tread McElvain, McElvain out of Havelock, North Carolina. 22 is Jonathan Getz out of Old Town, Florida. 24, Colton Shives from Lake Placid, Florida. 26, Carson Wood from Zephyr Hills, Florida. 27, Griffin Miller from Zellwood, Florida. We'll pick up with your early leaders, and we'll give you the rest of the rundown here in just a moment as they jockey for position through that first turn. Man, these kids mean in business. Looks like Kevin DePino opening up in the number two spot. He is behind the number 930 machine. That is Seth Dennis from Port St. Lucie, Florida. And on the Orange Brigade Dunlop XL trainer and elusive gloves back machine, I believe he finished second coming into his qualifying heat. So up front, no surprises there for the number 930 machine, as he said, to Pino in the number two spot. Rest of the field real quick while we're here. We got Charles Chalaristi out of Graysonville, Maryland. 76 is Gavin Pepin out of Titusville, Florida. 99, Braden Comfort from Lander, Lander, Lander Lakes, Florida. The 116, uh, Trevor Forst out of Ottawa, North Carolina. 131, Andy Pacella from Wolfie, Massachusetts out of Georgia. It's the 133 of Gage Costello. We also got Hunter Clayton on the 223, 255, Zachary Hatt. 282, Grant McDonald. 312, Isaac Williamson. 314, Moto Harris. That's a cool name. 432 is Timothy Scott. Uriah Woods, the 456. Cole Blecka he is there on the 625. We are 525. We've got Micah Carpenter, Joe Benaglio, Landon Gibson, uh, Jackson Beck, and Caleb Likens all out there with us as well. And as we take a look at our First laps wrapped up here. The 930 still out front of this one is Seth Dennis out of Port St. Louis, C. Florida. As we said on the Orange Brigade, Dunlop, Excel Trainer, Elusive Glove, Scott, Answer, and Nost backed machine. There's the 525 we are watching. He is in the number three spot, Cole Blanca. He is out of Fruit of Colorado on board that Cobra. No sponsors mentions here. Micah Carpenter, the fourth place position. Running on the 710 machine out of Free Pill for Illinois is a Cobra backed rider on an alias Dunlop Bell Ray machine. And it looks like Carson Wood, the number 26, rounds out in the top five out of Sepri Hills, Florida. Taking a look at that 273 right now, I think, making his way around as we're looking at some of the field. There's the 710 machine. Micah Carpenter again, your fourth place position when we last checked in with him. And Look at the battle starting to shape up up front. We're starting to see a three-way shootout, possibly. And there's the 525 who's gotten around a couple of guys as we were looking at some of these other names a moment ago. It looks like Cole, Cole Blacka actually uh, moving up here. And we got one of our top ten riders going down. We'll try to get a number on that one for you. But some yellow flags as these riders approach the finish line region. A lap ago, it was Seth Dennis out front with Kevin DePino in second, Cole Blacha 
in the number three spot, Micah Carpenter fourth, and Carson Wood in fifth, Jonathan Getz in sixth, Landon Gibson with seventh, Grant McDonald in eighth, Colton Shives in ninth, and Matthew Williams rounding out the top ten. As we wrap up two, it's still Seth Dennis out front, the number 930, and that is Cole Bletcha, the 525 and the number two spot. So those guys are starting to tighten up quite a bit out there, it looks like. At times, at least for that second place position, as Micah Carpenter is now third, Pino drops to fourth. That's where I think I got a little bit confused. I didn't see that happen. So Kevin DePino actually dropping back a few positions. That gap between Dennis and now Bletcha, the second place ride on the 525, is nearly seven seconds at the end of lap number two. So the battle we should see ensue there between the second and third place rides, the 525 and the 710. And there's the 525. Fruta, Colorado's Cole Blanca, a 129.388 is what he's turned last time around. And he's got a little free clear racetrack ahead of him now. He is starting to put some distance between himself and the rest of the competition out there. 710, I think Micah, Car is that Carpenter down? Let's double check that. It looks like a couple of bikes down there in that section. Madness and mayhem starting to ensue here. Moist conditions, as we said, the rain did fall, but not a lot of it. Ricky Carmichael said during opening ceremonies, basically that if you don't like the weather here in Florida, wait 10 minutes and it could change. And uh, that's what we basically did. And honestly, I have to think though the track is a little moist, it's offering some perfect conditions. And these little guys seem to be traversing the sandy terrain without much problem. Dennis Steele out front. Blanche is your second place right now. Just over seven seconds behind. Jonathan Getz moving up. He's six seconds behind. Cole Blanche turning nearly identical lap times. Kevin DePino still in the number four spot. He dropped a lap time of a minute 40 and now 10 seconds back and forth. But Grant McDonald seems to be the rider on the move as uh, Fountain Hills, Arizona is where he comes from. Only five seconds behind the Pinos, closing up some gap a little at a time. Landon Gibson in sixth place aboard the 723 from Peachtree City, Georgia. Only 3.6 seconds back, and Carson Wood dropping off a few spots there on the 26, as he is now running in the number seven spot. Gage Costello, the 133, up to eighth out of Appling, Georgia. It is Matthew Williams, the 46, from Powhatan, Virginia, in the number nine spot. And Zachary Hatt, the 255, at our center here, Florida, rounding out the top ten. He's moving up, also looking for Braden Comfort. He's the 99 and the 11th. Uriah Wood moving back up a little bit aboard the 456 and 12th. Timothy Scott having some issues out there, losing a little time, but still 13th aboard the 422. Ryder Andrews is uh, 14th, and Tread McIlvain rounds out your top 15 from Havelock, North Carolina. That's your top 15, about half the field. Actually, I think 32 on the gate, so halfway point is Christian Nyman, the 13 machine, in that 16th place position. Meanwhile, though, back up front, Seth Dennis pretty much owning and controlling the scenario of this Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross, one of our about five amateur major events throughout the season. Technically, these riders introduced their 2018 or new year at the Winter Olympics, not far from where we are right now in Gainesville, Florida, each and every November. And of course, that's what many of these riders did. And then they'll start moving on to great places like Freestone and several other places across the country. And eventually it all concludes for many of them at the Amateur National Championship at Loretta Lens in August. Right now, this is our first look at some of these feature riders here in 2018, and the battles are waging. Thirteen machine. I believe that's Thor Powell who was having some issues back there. Let's see where he is now. Actually, that was Christian Nyman. I'm sorry about that. Thor was in the other race there a few moments ago, but there's the 525. Still 10.3 seconds behind the 930, but behind him, four seconds back is Jonathan Getz. Getz turning a couple of seconds a lap faster as our leader, or excuse me, our second place position, caught in some lap traffic. He actually made up some time on Seth Dennis, who has also found himself in some lap traffic, but there it is. The checkers are out. 
And this one in the history book, so it will be Seth Dennis with the number one position, Cole Blecka, in the number two spot. Jonathan Getz in third out of Old Town, Florida. As we wait for DePino to see if he's able to hang on to that, we got off to a good start. But Kevin DePino in that number two Cobra machine from Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, holds steady for a solid top five. Grant McDonald, a little time lost, but position holds steady there. 282 in the number five spot, 723. Landon Gibson in sixth. We wait now, should be seeing a few moments be behind. We should be seeing, there is Carson Wood checking in in the number seven spot now for the 26. Gage Costello, the 133 and eighth. Matthew Williams at ninth. And, uh, And we got uh, wheels, and of course, uh, Jason Wygant joining us in the studio now. As we continue the live coverage here at the Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross. By the way, best lap time that time was Seth Dennis. He had a 126.801, so that should tell you what the things are like out there. We're waiting next for the Super Mini to make their way out as we're joined, as I said, by the uh, world famous Jason Wygant, and of course, uh, none other than our own wheels over here. Mike Garrison joins us, and uh, welcome to uh, Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross on the TV side of things, Jason. I yeah, know you've been, you've been here for the last couple of days, along with GNCC yesterday. Yeah, so. I was here a little bit this morning, and then I headed to GNCC. Mike Garrison has been uh, here, I don't know, I think he was announcing on Tuesday, last Tuesday, but the race <laughs> started on Sunday. I don't even know that that's possible. Uh, so yeah, Mike called oh, yeah, it. Mike, we, yeah, I remember you. I don't. I called you Wheels. You're not Wheels. This is Mike Garrison. I know. I know. We Monster Cup. Wheels. Monster said. Cup. Yes. I've been called way worse. So that's, whatever you want to call yeah. me, that's fine Mike. Me. Good to see you, man. I, you too. <laughs> I said, I'm like, do you know Rodney? He's like Monster Cup, bro. Yeah, we had a good time working that one. That yep. was a lot of fun. And it uh, it dawned on me there for just a moment. I, was, I looked at him in the face when I see his face. I'm like, wait a minute, that's not Wheels. Seventeen announcers in one day. That's at Monster yeah. Cup. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that was yeah. the craziest thing. I pretty yeah. much just gave up and sat there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. Racing. Josh Verizzi right there. Yeah. This is your Super Mini 1 class, Jason. Well, again, and these are the uh, the ones that are so much fun to watch out here. And uh, as we look down through the results from the uh, qualifiers, Hunter Yoder Big comes in here. First turn crash. Mm -hmm. Sorry to cut you off. First turn crash. We've seen, it's crazy. Mike, we saw almost zero first turn crashes in the heats. And now the maze is happening. I don't know if it's the weather or what it's going to be, but I tell you what, one of the riders that has had no trouble looking over his shoulder there is the 79 is Jeff Reynolds. Reynolds, we saw him running in the schoolboy class against the big bike. He got a little extra track time today, which is going to be huge when it comes down to this, and now he is out front leading the way here in this one. Well, Jeff Reynolds has that vote of confidence coming into this one as he is one of the uh, heat race winners, and he had one of the first position picks on the gate, so... He gets off right where he needs to be, and uh, basically the rest of the field's going to try to sort it out behind him, it looks like, the number 37 machine. That is uh, Chase Prince from Petersburg, Tennessee. He finished fifth in his uh, qualifying round, but now dropping to the number three spot as he's got company coming, guys. Super mini. We were talking about it uh, in the heat races, practice qualifying. It's become one of the premier classes in amateur racing. Now there's a pretty big jump when you go from this super mini to a 250F. So some of the riders choose to stay on the Super Mini an extra year longer. So it'll be a little bit bigger when they do finally make that transition. So what that means is you got a better combination of both young and old. They're all kids. But a better combination of talent here. We're seeing it. You got Reynolds, Nathaniel Thrasher, <laughs> second, Chase Prince, Sage Lewis, Crockett Myers, who you're looking at right now on the 411 Suzuki. And behind them, Gavin Towers, Noah Stevens, Aiden Shy. Diesel Garrett, Justin Allen, and Miles Gilmore. That's your top 11. We got a battle on our hands. Nathaniel Thrasher, ready to do some thrashing. Wow. Going after Reynolds, bro. Well, it looked like Reynolds was going to run away with this one early on as he jumped out front. But I tell you what, the 428 machine right now is closing that gap up on him. And Reynolds, I just saw him look over his shoulder. He knows he's there now as the 428 has really closed up as they head into that whoop section. The whoop section this weekend has been one of those sections that has been a foul. Oh, look at got this. Him. We've got a pass for the lead now. Nate Thrasher taking wow. it away from Jet Reynolds. Great riding. Yes. Uh, you know, these kids got a chance to, to size each other up there at the week of Thanksgiving. But look, Jet Reynolds is not going to let that go by so easily unanswered. So this battle's going to intensify. But these guys have seen each other already. They know what to expect coming into this. And some of them might have picked their game up a little bit. Nathaniel Thrasher, as you say, yeah. is one of those, I believe. 
Yeah, I've hung out with his dad a couple times. Oh, your, your son races? Yep. His name is Nathaniel Frazier. <laughs> the dad has got one of the gnarliest accents of all time. And you might get to know Nate pretty well putting in rides like this. Kind of got himself in the map after two years ago at Loretta's and has really been a front runner ever since. Chet Reynolds not done though. He's trying to get him back. Whoa. Jet get a little bit sideways there. As Thrasher gonna be out front and he is thrashing his way to what he hopes is gonna be a championship win here. This flip section we were talking about the last lap around, that is one of the sections of the track that really wasn't tamed down that much from the pro race Saturday night. So a lot of the riders were talking about that in the pits and how big those whoops actually are. Well, I'll tell you something that's really uh, kind of impressive for Thrasher and Reynolds right now is that they have opened up a lead that is now over 10 seconds over the third place ride of Chase Prince and Prince uh, now 14.6 seconds behind. So those guys, this battle up front really stretched it out over the rest of the field, it looks like. Come on, Rodney, those guys in third and fourth and on back, these aren't spots of riders. I mean, oh. these are fast kids all the way around. So for these guys to stretch out a lead like this on those guys is impressive. That's crazy. Crockett, Myers in the fourth place position. Sage Lewis, the 142 is fifth. Justin Allen checks in at sixth after three. Then it's... Uh, Hunter Yoder in seventh, uh, Caden Amarine in eighth, Noah Stevens is ninth, and Joshua Varese rounds out your top ten. Well, Hunter Yoder, we were talking about him a little bit earlier as well, as Carson Mumford making his jump from the little bikes up to the big bikes, and now Hunter Yoder is the one out there on that uh, super trick Honda F-150, or F-150, TRF-150 four-stroke. Lap times right now, 102.7s for your leaders, 108.3 and 107 for Looks like Prince and Crockett, they've got a battle that's about to shape up, a 1.6 second battle between them, but we don't want to take our eyes off of Reynolds and Thrasher right now. Thrasher has pulled it out to four wow, seconds. four seconds. So he took it, didn't take long to make the pass, and well, knows exactly what to do with it. He pulled away big time. Look at Prince, and now uh, Myers, there's less than a second separating the 37 and the 411 that third and fourth place position. It looks like Crockett Myers is trying his best to make some moves for turning a full one second faster lap time the last couple of laps here. Well, I think we're gonna try to catch those two in what would be the battle for third. Crockett Myers on that 411 Suzuki trying to catch the 37 KTM. Wow, look we got at, him right here. Yeah, look at the distance between them and the front runners there. There it is. They are wheel to wheel, basically, coming in out of that turn side by side. White flag is out. This one's going to go right down to the checkers, I think, for that third spot. Want to get podiums here in Supercross. Here it is. Two lap riders and two riders battling for third. 37, that's Prince, 411. It's Myers. And now they've got the white flag as well. Behind them, you've got Lewis. Then Justin Allen, Caden Amarine is seventh, Josh Parisi eighth, Hunter Yoder ninth, and Noah Stevens tenth. Then uh, Chance Hymas, formerly known as Super Chunk, but I think he's leaning out, is 11th right now. Well, it, man, good battle. In theory, if you look at lap times, this should be Crockett Myers' race, but Kate Prince has risen to the occasion and actually now from a four tenth of a second uh, gap, it's eight tenths. That's not a whole lot but it shows you he is digging in there and fighting back. Woo, hanging oh, off what? the back of that thing. Yes, what a line right there for the 411 as we're looking right now. The checkered flag getting set to come out for Nathan Flat Thrasher coming around checkered flag. Championship win there in this one and he is pumped. Jet Reynolds is gonna be coming around for that number two spot. Well, Nate thrashed the field in this one also thrashed that poor super mini that had to carry him around because he's huge on that bike. Back to this battle for third. Nice job getting to the inside for Chase Prince on the 37. Oh, oh and a cross run. Oh. And that's going to be the difference. Yeah. Crockett Myers with the mistake, and Chase Prince going to take third. Well, I have to think that Jet Reynolds may be a little bit surprised, thinking he may have had this one dialed in. He was one of the faster uh, qualifiers, but at the same time, Crockett Myers came in finishing third in his qualifying heat. So, yeah, man, what a great race. Myers able to really redeem himself there. The Vet BC 30 Plus class coming up next, uh, Mike Garrison, and this is race 70 on the docket, 71, 72, 73. You guys all need to be in staging right now as we take a look at uh, the Vet BC Eric Conier on the number two, Juan Zegoto. Uh, uh, actually, he took the uh, Aaron Conier took a uh, division race win, it looks like. Another
Go ahead. Well, we are off and underway, Rodney, and this is going to be a good race to watch. We saw some fantastic riding from these riders in qualifying, and here they come through that rhythm lane. Out front early on, that's going to be the 45 of Jordan Hellman. Wow, Hellman uh, really getting a good jump off the gate there. If you take a look at his uh, moto scores, he finished second coming into this race. So he is one of the riders that is kind of anticipated to be right there right now. But he's also got a target on his back as these early laps get underway. Well, and Chris Olin going to be in that number two spot. We saw him a few races earlier as well. So he's already got, I believe he finished with a podium finish in his previous class. So he's looking to better that uh, here in this one, our Vet BC Plus 30 class as they're working their way around. A full gate of these riders, Helman looking comfortable out front. And look at the race we got, Rodney, coming up the inside right there. I believe that is going to be the 56, if I'm not mistaken, of Luis Romero. Yeah, Lo Romero coming into this one with a 10th place finish, so he's looking for a little redemption in this ride. A much better start, it looks like, and a battle right now in for the number one position. Look at that, cuts him off. A beautifully executed block pass there, but can he maintain that at the finish line? He does, barely by about a bike length. We'll see if he's able to hang on to this one. That's actually the 159 of Quentin Bigelow. Bigelow out of Kissimmee, Florida, with uh, Jordan Helm in the 45 in the number two spot out of Tampa, Florida. Daryl Ray Beach, Florida, for Chris Olin, the 516. And here we go, the first non-Floridian, Hunterville's North Carolina, Justin Smith, 333 in fourth. Andrew Kakuto rounding out the top five out of North Fork, St. Lucie, Florida. Then it's Richard Hoy, Tyler Jackson, Jonathan Little, Charles Harris, and Joey Slayton rounding out your top 10. Well, Quentin Bigelow, we saw him in uh, the heat races. He looks very comfortable out here in the sand. And now that it's rained a little bit, he looks just as comfortable, if not maybe a little bit more comfortable here in the main event here for our plus 30 BC riders. Helmet in that number two spot. And as you can see, first and second already starting to stretch it out. A good battle shaping up, though, here for third and fourth. The number 516 right there as he's working his way around. That's Chris Olin sitting in third. He's got company coming up behind him, though. Yeah, he sure does. That's Richard Hoy, the 294. He's back to the number six spot. And behind him, Jace, uh, Tyler Jackson in seventh place. These guys all within about a second and a half of that uh, fifth place position right now. And even going back to Charles Harris, the 314, he's only three tenths of a second behind the guy in front of him. We got a real good battle shaping up for that fifth place position right now. Well, I tell you what, all these guys in this class, that's what's so cool about a lot of these vet races that we've seen so far this weekend. All these guys are so close and such good, clean racing between all these guys. It makes for some of the greatest battles of the weekend. There we're looking at the uh, 333 of Justin Smith. And there's the 531 machine as he works his way around. That's Tyler Jackson out of Medina, Ohio, riding that Vanna Ray Studio Suzuki. Wow, so uh, again, two laps down, working on lap number three. Up and over the big Rolex double they go on the far left side of the track as they head down the back stretch now. And Rodney, I tell you what, the track has held up so well. The track crew doing a fantastic job here for Daytona. Mark wow. Barnett and all of his crew. All the rain and everything in the track still, all these guys still able to jump everything. Everything's and holding up well. The corners are holding up good. They've it done a fantastic job. It was job. still raining dur during the first races this morning, and uh, they were hitting everything out there. That just got, uh, that's what I was thinking. Wow, how great this track is, is sh sh shedding that water so quickly. Yep, absolutely. And as you can see, the rest of the field right here, the Vet BC Plus 30 riders working their way around, coming into that rhythm section. Quentin Bigelow out front again after three laps. Jordan Hellman is your second place position, eight seconds back. Chris Olin moves into third aboard uh, only five seconds back. He is uh, aboard the 516. Justin Smith, 333, five seconds back in fourth. Jackson, or Tyler Jackson, the 531, a couple of seconds back. Now Jordan, uh, John Jonathan Little has dropped back to about six seconds back. And that battle that was so tight and at the end of lap number two has really kind of backed off. Uh, we see that and Andrew Pacuto is seventh now. Charles Harris, the 314 and eighth. They've all got a second to a second and a half buffer there. Uh, Joey Slayton, though, may be a rider on the move up in ninth place aboard the 131. He's out of Chiloda, Florida. He turned a 117, and that puts him in pace to beat right there in that top five position. But he's got several riders in several seconds to make up to get there right now. And then there's Aaron Conier 
Rounding out the top 10, he's riding the number two machine, only a second off pace behind him. And he's turning a 115. These two hook up, we might see them start working up through the pack, Mike. Absolutely, and, when, and another thing we gotta look at here, not only is this a tricky track for these guys, but lap traffic in this one as well. Could be playing a part as we get later on as these riders trying to work their way through a bit of traffic here. As you can see through these sand sections, we talk about so many times, not just for the little, oh no, the 314. Getting a little squirrely there in the whoop section. As he comes back around, he's back on the bike. But as they start working their way through lap traffic, trying to take those inside and outside. Oh, Ryder going down hard there in the rhythm section. Looks like, just as we said, the track's holding up. It is holding up. A little greasy on top, though. Looks a little slick for some of these riders as they're working their way around. Well, it could be that. It could just be Ryder air, man. I mean, this, this track, uh, yeah, and I mean, it's got its, its little things are starting to pop up out there. And you know, as hard as the racing is, whenever you get to this level of, uh, of racing, whether it's amateur or not, the track ch constantly changes lap after lap after lap. Well, especially here at Daytona. Daytona, obviously, a half a lap into it is a totally different track than it was uh, from the very start. As you can see, the rest of the field working their way around right now. Well, riders, keep an eye on Justin Smith. Just popped off a uh, 115.305. He is now fourth place. Uh, Tyler Jackson in the number five spot. I think he gets up a spot there, it looks like. He was in the 117 range, jumped to Little John six. Aaron Conyer is now up to seven aboard the number two. He's turning to 116. He's, ooh, he's moving up little by little. Five. Ryder, Ryder going down there in the sand tank. That was the number two yeah. that been following. Yeah, Aaron Conyer, so uh, Conyer, that's gonna probably take him out of the running for a top five now as we watch this one now in nearly fading into the history books. Five laps down in a six lap race. Quentin Bigelow, Jordan Hellman in second, Chris Olin is third, Justin Smith in fourth, Tyler Jackson in fifth, Jonathan Little in sixth, Aaron Connie are still in the number seven spot after five. Looks like Billy Woodward moving up there into eighth place as Andrew Pacundo dropping to ninth and James Press moving into the number 10 spot as he gets around Joey Slate for that spot. And he's all the way from ha uh, Hawaii, Hawaii, man. Wow. Yeah, that's a long, I bet you he didn't drive. No, I <laughs> bet he didn't either. And here comes right now, Quinn Bigelow, working his way through the whoop section. As that checkered flag comes out, Quinn Bigelow, your plus 30 bet BC champion here at the 2018 Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross. I bet you're probably not going to hear or even say that. Uh, uh, or you're going to be hearing that and saying that a lot more this season. Quentin Bigelow really laying it down out here and uh, showing the folks that, you know, it's not that he comes to us with as any surprise either, Mike, because uh, he's been doing this in the last few years as well. Well, that's true. And a lot of these riders, we see them more and more up front. And as they, uh, even though it's a vet class, plus 30, these guys still learning, still getting faster, still getting better. And Quentin Bigelow, one of those riders that uh, has worked his way to the front, and I think, uh, as you said, we're going to see him there a lot more often here throughout the season. Bigelow, Hellman, Olin, one, two, and three. Justin Smith in fourth. Jack, Tyler Jackson in fifth. Jonathan Little in sixth. Uh, Aaron Conyar holds on for seven. Billy Woodward in eighth. Andrew Picuto in ninth. And look at this. Rick Schroeder rounds out your top ten. So another change there on that final lap. Coming up, senior 40 plus, Henry Cameo. I uh, got the number three, Chris Fosnot. The number eight, John Silvia. Jorge Negretti at the number nine, Philip Overland at the number 10, Barry Carson at the 31, the 40 of Steve Nagy, the 42 of Mark Ricker, 44 Greg Palmer, uh, 45 Ashley Tonsky, 48 Jose Cabrera, John Drewy is the number 70, 89 Christopher McMillan, 102 is Mark Powers. Well, we're off and running here, Roddy, and John Drewy with the whole shot. We saw earlier today a fantastic battle between Paymart, Drewy, and Carson. And well, once again, they are right back at it. Well, I tell you, it's good to see that because the last couple of years, the 70 of Rui has basically been untouchable. And, you know, he gets in a few battles every once in a while, but his conditioning level and his, just his riding has really elevated him so far ahead of the rest of the field. Now, these guys minding that same groove, it looks like, that John Rui's found. And Barry Carson training uh, really hard, I know, to catch up to this point. Watch this go. Look at that Palmer back there, the 44, closing in on the 70. It's the 31 of Carson right there. And how about, oh, Carson, a little mistake there. And that number 50 machine, I believe that's who that was getting by there. Yeah, he stuck by him right there. But Barry, oh, Barry Carson comes up short in the rhythm section. 
I tell you what, Barry, in the earlier heat race, or earlier main event earlier today, Barry Carson was running second the entire race, and John Gruy on the last lap washed the front end and handed the win over to Barry, and Barry was pumped. So John Gruy, he's looking for a little redemption here in this one. Well, it's Gruy, Paymark, then Barry Carson, one, two, and three. The 500, that is, of Billy Schlag from Mechanicsville, Maryland, on the KTM in fourth place. In fifth place, the 930 Galen Dixon out of Weatherly, Pennsylvania. Sixth place, Steve Nagy from Fort Orange, Florida. Seventh, the number eight of Yon Silva from Middletown, Rhode Island. Eighth place, 102 Mark Powers from Rockford, Michigan. Ninth place, the number nine Jorge Negretti from uh, here in uh, Key Biscayne, Florida. And rounding out the top ten, uh, Philip Oblitz, the number ten machine out of Akamula, Hawaii. And then you got Ashley Tonski in 11th. Mark Ricker is 12th. Frederick Jenstra is 13th, Andrew Morano 14th, 15th, Jeff Long and 16th is uh, Christopher McMillan. Well, we're looking at on the screen right now, we got the number eight of John Sylvia out of Middleton, Rhode Island. Working his way, trying to battle right there through the sand section. And Roddy, the sand section just getting deeper and deeper in those inside lines. They are faster, that's no doubt about it. It's a shorter line. However, that inside ruts are getting so yeah. deep and so rough. We're seeing more and more of these riders taking that outside just to stay safe, and they're actually gaining a little bit of time once in a while. And I, and I think that may be uh, something that we see. Oh, a little, how, little mishap there by Silva. Silva is now uh, let Galen Dixon get by after that little mishap, it looked like. But Silva is still uh, charging up through there, and he is sixth place. Dixon is number five. We got Steve Nagy back in seventh. That gap is starting to widen. He was right there on the rear wheel a lap ago, but uh, the number eight of Silva is pushing them so hard right now, they kind of stretched that one out. Galen Dixon's not out of the water chest yet, Mike Garrett. No, absolutely not, and I tell you what, right now John Gruy's still out front here in this one. We got uh, Paymart in the number two spot and Barry Carson in the number three spot. These two right here, though, good battle between these guys. As the number eight machine working his way back by another down rider in the sand section there. And once again, down on the inside. So that inside, definitely faster, but it's a little more risky for these riders trying to take that inside line. Well, he passed him once a lap ago. Galen Dixon got back by him right there at the finish line. So can John Silva still maintain the position as we roll through this one? This would be for the fifth place position. Uh, the front runners right now, ooh, Palmer and uh, Gruy still battling seven tenths of a second. They just went by the finish line. Karsten right on the rear wheel. Says a couple of seconds back, but visually right now, they are looking so much tighter than that. We've got two good battles, but man, Gruy and Palmer, Paymart are really making uh, waves out there, and they are giving us our money's worth. What happened? I see Paymart going by on the far stretch. Is John Gruy still leading that one? Yes, he is. As a matter of fact, he gained a little bit of time. That must like. have been what happened. I didn't, yeah. Yeah, I didn't see him when I looked up. And it looked like a few laps ago as well, Carson's may have lost a little bit of time over here on this uh, double jump as well. So wow, racing everywhere here in this Senior 40 Plus class, the Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross here at Daytona International Speedway. John Gruy, Greg Paymart, four tenths of a second separating them now. He gains, now Barry Carson is just over a second on time behind Paymart and Gruy. Two seconds separate the top three riders as they battle their way around this race course. Billy Slag in fourth place. About seven seconds back, John Silva is fifth place. Another 15 seconds back. Sixth place is Galen Dixon, still making him honest. Only 1.2 seconds back, but back up front. Gruy, Paymark, Karsten. That's where all eyes are right now. But yeah, we're looking at Gruy right here, the number 70. Gruy taking that inside line. That's where he gained most of his time on Carson the last time we saw him on the track. Whoa, Carson. Gruy, a little oh, mistake. That's the same corner. Gruy went down on the last lap of the last one. He's going to Paymar to the lead now. Oh, he was trying to get out there and block that line, but Paymar had way too much momentum. Now Gruy's going to try to go to the inside. Oh, we got a drag race now going down through the woods, but Paymar's got the momentum as we take the white flag. One to go. This is going to be a good one, Mike Garrison. I tell you what, Paymar right now, he's got his hands full as he is out front. 
Gruy, though, charging hard in second, and you can't count out Barry Carson. Barry Carson, he has been a force to be reckoned with all weekend long. Gruy taking the inside. He's got the inside on Paymart. Paymart, though, protecting the inside on the next turn. Well, if these two get together, we've said it a million times, and you've heard it probably a million more. These two battling could be the biggest favor that Barry Carson may see, but at the same time, he knows he cannot rely on that. He's going to have to try to make passes himself, and here he goes now putting the pressure on the 70 of Gruy. Absolutely down the back stretch they go. Barry Carson, keep an eye on him on this outside right here. Gruy's going to take the inside. Carson's going to take the outside. A little bit of lap traffic could play part in this one. Paymart's still going to be out front leading the way. Paymart to the inside. Pay oh, look at Carson. Carson tries to cut him off there. The 70, though, of Gruy closes the door on him. They are Ooh. side by side, Rodney. Wow. This is something you may not have seen a year ago. Gruy had everything down in lock, stock, and barrel. But it's Greg Paymart taking the win here at Daytona. Gruy in second and Barry Carson in third. What a race right there. And you can see Greg Paymart. He is pumped. Barry Carson. All of them congratulating one another. That's the cool part about uh, these vet classes. That was our senior plus 40 class in Paymart. A fist pump right there as he has taken home a championship. And Rodney, something that we've been waiting all morning to see. The sun is shining here at Daytona <laughs> International Speedway. So this track is going to start uh, drying out a little bit. We're going to see these riders only getting faster. Well, our motos, 34 motos. This is a super cross format, so one moto counts. We've got riders from 51 cc's and four years old to senior, 70 plus years old, I think. And uh, right now, as uh, the clouds break away, beautiful partly sunny skies, as you pointed out, and just a beautiful 70 and comfortable 70 degrees is what we're looking at. You couldn't ask for a better day in Florida, that's for sure. As this right here, as we are getting set to go now, looking for the gate to drop. And we're off and underway into the first turn they go. 250C limited, watching for riders like Stephen Moore, the uh, number 11. Also, uh, Seth Stevens could be a uh, front runner in this one. And uh, also, Renzo Medivis out of uh, Miami, Florida. A lot of unknown names in this one, Mike Garrison, on the national scene as they are just now, I believe, starting to make waves out there. Well, Whoa. I tell you what, one rider making waves right now is the 103 of Luke Finite out of Zionsville, Indiana, riding that B-line racing and American tennis course, JTM. He's taking over the lead here. Race 72 on the racetrack right now. There is the number 11 of Stephen Ward on the Club MX Brewer Cycles Bell Helmets Back Machine. This 19-year-old rider from Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, took a uh, qualifying race win, so he got one of the top picks. He's back to the number three spot, so it's going to be fun to watch and see whether or not he can work up through the pack. Well, as they come back through that rhythm section, coming around to this, the uh, finish line straight into the whoop section there, you see the number 38 as he's worked his way up into second. That's Zachariah Gebuit out of Hawaii. A lot of well, several Hawaiian <laughs> riders out here with us. That's good to see. As they work their way back around right now, second and third, your leader already trying to put a little bit of a gap on them early on as they come through this rhythm section. I believe that is, uh, yes, you said Luke Phineas, the 103 slash out front. Kalua, Hawaii is home to Zachariah Gabal, the 38 machine in second. Stephen Ward in third, the 11 of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. St. John's, Florida is Evan Hamowitz. Then we got Pierce Moss with the number 50 slash out of Wappinger Falls, New York in fifth. We got Roberto Burgos in sixth, Colton Hemmings in seventh. Waldo Musa is eighth, Logan Flanders in ninth, and Daniel Heed rounds out your top 10. Well, down the back stretch they go right now, and as you see, your leader stretch out. Good battle right now for third and fourth, though, into this section. They're going double-double. And that wide line right there, that's going to be a little bit slower, but the number 11 having a little bit of trouble through the inside line there. 11 is Stephen Ward out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. He drops back to the number four spot now. I believe, has, yeah, Evan Hemowitz has moved up around Stephen Ward from fourth to third now, so we got a battle for second place, watch the, that 13 machine, I believe it is, we're keeping an eye on, Evan Hamowitz. And this might be one of the big surprises of this uh, 250C class. Well, I tell you what, Hamowitz right now, he looks fast, he looks comfortable. He's got some good lines through these rhythm sections, and he is closing the door fast right now on the number 38. Coming in under the radar, finishing fifth in his qualifying round. I'll tell you, Mike Garrison, he might have played his cards right. Oh, and our second place rider, the 38. Going down right there is Zachary Gambuit. 
goes down in the sand section. That's going to hand it over. Right there as they work their way back around. But he lost valuable time on that one. And a lot of momentum we see all the way back to eighth place right now. Logan Flanders. So uh, it looks like uh, he's dropped back to at least a seven day play position on board the 38 machine after being in the number two spot. There's the 53 just ahead of him. So still some work cut out for him. We'll reassess the situation, Mike Garrison, when they come around here in just a few moments. Two laps down, working on lap number three. Well, yeah, still a lot of racing left to go here for these guys and some close racing. I tell you what, this group of riders right here in this one, our 250C limited class, has stayed closer and bunched up more than a lot of these classes we've seen earlier on today. So anything can happen, it's still anybody's race at this point. Yeah, this is a very tight-knit group. I mean, we've seen the, the gap starting to open up about this point in the previous round of uh, motos we were watching. Now, first and second, Emo uh, uh, Evan Hamowitz is about seven seconds all the way up to second place now aboard the 13 out of St. John's, Florida. Roberto Borgos, the number 382, latches on, moves up to third place, aboard, uh, or excuse me, uh, 1.9 seconds behind. Stephen Ward is uh, fourth aboard the number 11, and Pierce, Pierce Foster rounds out your top five. Now, lap times, Luke Phineas is your fastest at a 107.5, and, a half, and uh, Evan Hamelwitz turning a 108.9 in traffic and trying to make passes there. Let's see if a little bit of uh, free track, uh, racetrack will give him a little bit faster lap time. Well, and Rodney, the 382 Roberto Burgos, he just came around the outside of that berm. He had gone over the top of the sand berm. So he's going to drop back several positions here in this one as well. Man, and there's the 11 of Stephen Ward, one that was expected to be a, a front runner in this one. And he really seems to be uh, struggling at this point, whether it be uh, maybe uh, just the hard racing before, you know, maybe middle game, but, you know, still can't say a whole lot about where he's at. Third place position is nothing to sneeze at, you know what I mean? That's very true, and I tell you, the other thing that a lot of these riders are facing right now, their heat races are shorter races, just like the Pro Supercross team. They're running a longer race here for the main event, so these longer laps, these later laps in this one, as we're seeing with, like, the number 11, tend to drop off just a little bit, and that's where the, the stamina and the training before the weekend even gets started, the off, off days from the track, that's when it really comes into play. Yeah, and people, you know, you, you think of a novice group of riders, you think, ah, novice, they're un inexperienced. That's not so much the case. These riders at the novice level, at this uh, amateur uh, national level, if that's what you want to call it, uh, these guys are a step above the normal novice class rider, it seems Absolutely. like. Absolutely. Well, and the, the other thing about them, you know, they're going to school throughout the week still working a nine to five job, still finding time to train and practice and all that, and now they're here doing this. So this means more to them, I think, than, than people realize, you know, and these guys work hard to be where they're at, and uh, it shows, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, they, 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 the least riders haven't had it handed to them. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> here we go, this is the battle. Luke Phineas trying to get around that, or excuse me, uh, Evan Hamowitz trying to get around that 15 machine now. One, one rider and I there. believe, yeah, that's what I was looking to see. I believe that was the lapper, but that lapper was giving him a fit there, and that's going to allow that three-second gap maybe to open up to now a little bit further. So it was nearly seven seconds. It's been dropped to just over four, or just under four. So Evan Hamowitz is closing on your leader as time wears out here, but we are in the middle of lap traffic. Will that slow Luke Phineas down after... Uh, Five laps, he turned a 109.1. Evan Hamelwitz was a 107.016. So a little faster than a second, but at the checkers, it's not going to matter because Phineas had just what he needed in 4.3 seconds to take that win over Evan Hamelwitz. Wow. I tell you, I don't think that we've seen the last of the number 13 of St. John's, Florida's Evan Hamelwitz. This kid, this young man, comes out. I think he has opened up a lot of eyes, and uh, I think a lot of eyes in these uh, 250 C class are going to be looking for him the rest of the summer. Absolutely. There you see the 103 high five in the fans as he works his way around the bleachers there. Coming back around, we're getting set to go for our next race. It's going to be race number 73, our 250 B limited group. This should be a good one here. All these riders lined up getting set to go here, 250 B limited. 
29 riders in the main event for this one. Carson Mumford definitely going to be one to keep an eye on in this one. He took the uh, qualifying win out there, it looks like. I believe all of our riders transfer from qualifying into the main in this one. So Mumford, the 122, will watch and see if he's able to do it in the main here today. But like Mike pointed out, these uh, main events a little longer than the qualifiers, so that could be a little bit different tale of what takes place. Is that the 501 we see out front there, or did I misread that number? Looks like that's going to be the 587. Oh, 587. the way here this one. Went by like lightning. It was hard to read. That's Aiden Tejero from Ripon, California, Ripon, California. He's on a KTM Orange Brigade Monster. Answer Scott and FMF back machine to open things up here, but He's not opening up comfortably. He's got company. Well, and I tell you what, Rodney, you were talking about Carson Mumford. Mumford goes down in the first turn. He is back up and running right now, but he is dead last on the track as he works his way around on that Amsoil Honda. So Mumford's chances right now at a championship title here today seem to be out the window, at least in this class. Meanwhile, back out front right now, the 111 and the 235. 735, I should say. Whoa, getting sideways through that whoop section. Aiden Tejero hanging on to this one, though, it looks like, at that first lap complete. Grant Harlan, the 111, is second now. Tristan Lewis, 735. He's out of Locust Grove, Georgia. He's in the third place position. Hanover, Massachusetts, is Justin Coquino in the 444. Jason Kessler, the 51 machine out of Eagle, Michigan, rounds out your top five. In the 32 and six is Mason Meyer. Seventh, Carter Bees, the 243. Eighth, the 45, Cameron Mitchell. Ninth, the 23 of Tyler Carr. And tenth, the 754 of Peavy for our Brown. Brandon Peavy, I guess that is. Well, Aiden Tierra right now doing what he has done all weekend long, and that is to continue to stretch out his lead. He's looking for a championship win here in this one. A good battle right now between the 444 right there of Justin Pocono. Oh, coming out of the sand there, the 51 getting sideways. That's going to be Jace Kessler out of Eagle, Michigan. Riding that Husker. Oh, the 444 catching a tough block. We're about to go three wide, it looks like, down the front stretch, the 343. Trying to make his moves here in this one. Well, I tell you, saving grace for uh, Aiden Tejero right now. Three and a half second lead. Don't have a whole lot to worry about because Grant Harlan, Tristan Lewis, Justin Kikinos, and Jace Kessler are all battling right now, keeping uh, themselves at bay from the number one spot, it looks like. Well, what we've seen earlier today as well is as these riders start battling with one another, the riders behind them actually start catching up because as they go on the defense, they start losing time and they're not running their fastest lap times. So it creates more of a battle as more riders start catching up. So that's something they got to watch out for here in this one. And again, watching out for that. Two laps complete to Harrow, Grant, Harlan, Tristan Lewis, Justin Coquinos, Jace Kessler. A little further back now, Carter B still at six. Cameron Mitchell at seven. Devin Simonson in eight. Mason Meyer ninth. And Cameron Pettit rounds out your top ten. A few changes there, it looks like, throughout our top ten, at least uh, six through ten there. Coquinos under fire and under pressure now. Well, Rodney, we just saw Carter Beast there, the 243. He went for that triple, came up short on the quad and just about went down, but he was able to save it. And in doing so, he's able to get around a couple of riders, including Jace Kessler here in this lap. Justin Kikinos will drop a position, it looks like, as Carter Bees has moved in, at least according to timing and scoring. That number four spot, Kikinos checked in in fifth. And if you look at their time, it says about four tenths of a second separating them. That's how tightly knit they are right now. Yeah, any one of these guys right now have the talent to be leading the other. And it's all about uh, line choice here in this one and where they're going to make their moves. And as you can see, look at them go side by side down the back stretch. Up and over the box double, they go into the triple section now. There we see the 45 of Cameron Mitchell out of Dallas, Georgia. Well, I'm getting involved in this one as a spectator right now, just kind of watching the battling going on. I'm as tense as uh, moms and dads out there right now. I think this is a good one. Another great part about this event, bringing out all the families and all the uh, the friends and families. The pits are just full of them. The packs, the uh, bleachers are packed. The fences are lined with all their uh, family and friends. It's cool to see so many people out here cheering their rider on. It's hard to believe, man. Reading these kids' names when they were riding on 50s and 60s and now seeing the level 
that they're riding at here in this 250B limited class. Blowing my mind right now. Tejero out front, Harlan is second, Tristan Lewis is third, Carter Bees is fourth, Cameron Mitchell in fifth, that's the 45 machine. Devin Simonson in sixth aboard the 70. Jace Kessler, the 51, is in the uh, seventh spot. Kakino just dropped back to eighth, and Mason Meyer, the 32 and ninth. Cameron Pettit, 214 rounds out in the top 10. That's hard to believe, man, Kokino's dropping back like that. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened to Kokino. He definitely, uh, we expected him to be up front and running uh, much better than he's running in this one. So I don't know if he's got maybe, perhaps mechanical issue, maybe went down somewhere at some point. But uh, definitely a surprise to see him that far down. Most definitely. And Grant Harlan checking in with us now in the number two spot. His gap, only three seconds. He's turning nearly identical lap times as your leader, eight to Harrow. Oh, Rodney, your leader has gone down. Your reader just went down in the sand section. So Tierro hands over the lead now to Grant Harlan. Wow. Grant Harlan, now your leader, the 111 down the back stretch. Eight Tierro falls on that inside line out of the sand section. Well, you got to wonder, will Tejero be able to uh, maintain at least a second place position? Tristan Lewis is coming with a head full of steam. Carter B is right behind him right there. So those guys are mean in business. Well, we've seen this so many times today, these final few laps, that's when all the excitement seems to intensify. Wow, look at this battle. This looks like a battle for fifth. Devin Simonson and Cameron Mitchell right now. Simonson trying to get around Mitchell for that number uh, five position. Meanwhile, Grant Harlan checks in. Tejero does check in in second place. Only a second behind Grant Harlan. Remember that they were turning nearly identical lap times, but that boosted Grant Harlan's lap time up from a 103 and a half to a 102.4. Talk about some incentive now. Absolutely, when as you can see, we're looking at them right now as they work their way around on the far side. They're gonna go down the back straight now. Nero in that number two spot, up and over the wall. Uh, Out of the back side they go. Lap six in the history books, final lap, uh, lap seven for this 250B limited class. 258s are coming up next. Grant Harlan turning the fastest lap of this uh, moto with a one minute .714 is his fastest oh, lap. Oh, Tierro sends him off the track right there. Tierro sending Harlan flying off the racetrack. Wow, <laughs> trying to get that redemption out there, man. This is how hungry these guys are in this 250 uh, class out here. They all want to make names for themselves. Making statements right now, Mike Garrison. Wow. A statement indeed as Tierro sends Harlan straight off the track, up and over the berm. That was a hard crash right there. Wow, you wonder if Abe Tierro feels that maybe uh, Harlan might have drunk him someplace in this one, or he wanted to win that bad, I guess. I got a feeling right now from looking at Aiden Tierro, he didn't quite mean for that, I don't think, to be uh, quite as aggressive as that was. And, and un unfortunately, that wow. happens sometimes. It looks worse than uh, what they intended, or it becomes worse than what the intended were. But when you're super cross racing, the adrenaline is high, lines are tight, you got to fight, you literally got to fight for those positions. Well, I mean, there's a, there's a national championship title basically right now on the line for these guys. It's, it's what it feels like for these guys. So they're going to do whatever it takes, and uh, Aiden Tierro is going to take that one. Well, 258 class coming up next. We think uh, that was good. What we got in store for us now, Kylie Foss not out here in this one. We got Trey Fager. Uh, one to watch, I think, uh, will be Garrett Marchbanks, the 182. He took the uh, qualifying race win, and uh, generally, 182 machine is always one to watch whenever he lines up. And I believe he grabbed the lead there, at least just for a moment. Yep, he's out front. He's got that 58 machine in that number two spot. That's Justin Rodbell out of Prince Frederick, Maryland, open things up, Mike. Well, and as you see, Mark Banks right now out front. Looking smooth already. Oh, double rider. Oh, Hannah Hodges, I believe. Oh, that was not Hannah Hodges. That was Jarvis, one of our WMX riders, going down right here off the start. Tough break for the number 30 Jarvis out of Clayton, North Carolina. She's a Yamaha sponsored rider backed by EBR Performance Monster Fox and Dunlop. But uh, you can bet your bottom dollar she's going to pick up the pace here. Well, we've got several of our WMX riders, which we'll see later on for their WMX events. They are also out there in the A class, riding with the uh, riding with the boys, not afraid to uh, rub elbows with them. That's for sure. As we're looking at a fantastic battle right now, second, third, and fourth. Marchbank's going to be out front, lead the way. 
with a 58 holding on a second right now is Justin Rodbell. Well, Rodbell under pressure as we can see. He's not the only one though. Mitchell Paul, Derek Drake, Dylan Greer, Carter Halpain. We're all playing. We're all playing hard out here right now as they go by the uh, finish line. Or excuse me, by the announcer's booth here. Finish line's up opposite end of the racetrack. But Mike, I tell you, it's almost like if you watch Loretta, if you watch the, the winter O's, it's like we're picking up where we left off with these kids racing against each other at the intensity. Oh. Ooh. Yes, and the 58 goes down. And just as Man. I was going to say that, March Bank also had gone down. Oh, and is that Mitchell Fall? Wow, everybody, all sorts of riders. Nobody wants to win this one. <laughs> Maybe they all want to win too much. That's there goes possible. the, wow, 612 machine going by there. That's Mitchell Falk getting by your early leader, the 182 of uh, Garrett Marchbanks, who is now in the number two spot. So Mitchell Falk is your leader. Garrett wow. Marchbanks in second. Dylan Greer up to third. Man, that changed a lot on that lap. I think when a lot changed, and Roddy Mitch, uh, <laughs> Marchbanks, he just, if I'm not mistaken, squatted through that rhythm section in the center of the track. And I don't think we've seen that done all weekend long. We'll have to wait and see when they come back around if he does it again. The 182, Team Green, he is on a move here in this one, trying to chase down that poorly designed KTM of Mitchell Paul. I tell you, Monster Energy, Team Green Kawasaki puts a lot of faith and energy into this rider for a reason. And I think we're about to witness that. Even from a second place position, he's putting on some riding clinic out there. Just watching how great a rider he is. And also the 612 of Mitchell Falk, how great a rider he is. This is going to be a fun race to watch. And like we pointed out, the battles sometimes slow these guys down. So we might see Dylan Greer and even Carter Halpain, who's less than a second from Greer in that third and fourth place position, ease up on this one. And that's exactly what we're seeing happen. Oh, a absolutely. half second between the two uh, front runners and now just over two seconds separating second and third. And right behind him is fourth place position. Well, and March Bank did it again in that rhythm section. He gained so much time on Mitchell Falk through there. He is just literally sending it as far as he can. And now he's trying to come up alongside of him. Down the back, no! Oh! They just about bump wheels. March Bank whipping it over there on the Fox double back into the triple section. March Bank takes over the lead now. Mitchell Falk dropping to the number two spot. Well, this is the section where these riders are having so much problem, that sand section, but uh, March Bank's able to maneuver his way through a little more cleaner that time as the 612 machine. Still, Mitchell Falk is not going to relinquish that number one spot so easily as we come around for lap four complete. Well, at this point, Rodney, from the looks of it, March Bank is on full defense mode as he yeah. is doing whatever he can to keep Mitchell Falk behind him. Yeah, it looks like Mitchell Falk is certainly in the attack mode. Carter Halpain is moving up to third. Dylan Greer in fourth. Tanner Stack in fifth. Jordan Bailey now in sixth. Cameron Fosnott is seventh. Justin Rodbell back to eighth. Steven uh, Carzanota in ninth. And Luke Neese rounds out your top ten. But it's all eyes on 182 and 612. Well, Rodney Mitchell Falk just went off the track right there and came back on, losing a little bit of time to Marchbanks, but he had to go around the big Rolex double. Well, Marchbanks pushing it so hard right now. Try, or I'm sorry, Mitchell Falk pushing it so hard right now, trying to catch back up to Marchbanks. Wow, look how rough. I mean, just challenging that track is. This right here is a great section of the course. I, I love the sand. It has uh, so many different characteristics to it, to it throughout the race. And what we see now, I don't think will be what we see in a little bit. It's just going to continually change throughout this race. Well, absolutely. And the number 77 still sitting in the number three spot. That's Dylan Greer out of Somerville, Florida on the Yamaha. Here you see your top two riders. And I tell you what, Greer, no, I take that back. That's Carter Halpin. I'm sorry. Closing that gap up just a bit. Halpin in the number three spot, chasing down March Banks, your leader, and Mitchell Falk. Wow, how about Jordan Bailey now up to a number five position? And look at this, sub one minute, Tanner Stack, a 59.755. That's the fastest lap time set here in lap number five, Mike. Wow, these guys are definitely on a move here in this one. March Banks jumping up to the big bike not too long ago. Making it work for him right now as he starts to stretch out his lead just a little bit on Mitchell Falk. Yeah, I think uh, I think Jason Wyga and Kevin Kelly used to refer to him as the man child, if I'm not mistaken. 
Look at this, through lap traffic he goes. Mitchell Falk starting to see that gap open up now. Just over two, looking at three plus seconds. Carter Halpain though, closing the gap up from Lubbock, Texas on the 17 machine. 1.2 seconds, so all of a sudden, Mitchell Falk becomes not the aggressor, but the defensive rider in this one, it appears. Well, yeah, it looks like Halpin may be uh, able to put a late race charge here. And we were talking about those longer laps. This is especially a longer race. We'll see if any of these riders here, this one, uh, suffer from a little bit of uh, fatigue as they come back around here. Well, Tanner Stack last time around, a 59.472. Uh, I'm not sure if that is, the, I think that's that best. Yep, that best, lap six, 59.472, splitting hairs, but that 59 second lap time was the fastest there for him. As Garrett Marchbanks checks in with another lap complete, running in the 101.5, Falk a 103. He's second, about four seconds back. There's your leader slicing and dicing himself his way through that lap traffic. What's amazing is the lap time that March Banks is carrying through this lap traffic, it's only about a, a second or second and a half or so off the face of what we're seeing uh, the fast lap runners do. Well, you're absolutely right there. Tanner Stack, a rider from my neck of the woods, from the Kansas area, Missouri in Kansas. And I tell you what, he has been a hard working kid uh, for years and years, even when on his mini bike days. And Tanner Stack, I think, uh, is one you can't count out on this one as he is starting to close that gap up just a bit on Mitchell Falk. A nine lap race, seven laps down. March Bates, Falk, Halpain in the number three spot. Tanner Stack is fourth, Jordan Bailey in fifth, Dylan Greer in sixth, Seth Hammaker is seventh. Here, Derek Drake in eighth, Scott Meshi in ninth, Cameron Fosnott is tenth. Then we go back a little further, Marcus Phelps 11th, Justin Rodbell is 12th. Luke Neese drops to 13th, Wyatt Lionsmith 14th, Steven Carzanota is 15th, and Logan Leitzel rounds out your 16th halfway through the field. Well, we'll have a lap to go now for these riders here. This one, March Banks looking for that race win, looking for that title here at the RCX. As they work their way back around, you see Mitchell Falk right there trying to hold off. The rest of the field coming up behind him. He's got the 57 there. That's Cameron Baroba, or Bar Barbo, I'm sorry. Cameron Barbo, I believe, a lap down as our leaders are really starting to work their way through the tail end of this 258 class. White flag out on this one as eight laps are down. We're working on lap number nine. And checkers come out for the 182 of Garrett Marchbanks, who takes the win here in Daytona for this 258 class all the way from Colville, Utah on the Monster Energy T3 machine. Carter Halpain, Yamaha rider out of Lubbock, Texas. Blue Crew machine finishing second. Mitchell Falk, the 612, running in that uh, number three spot when the checkers fly on that one. He is a Troy Designs Red Bull GoPro KTM rider and uh, comes all the way from Costa Mesa. California. We got Jordan Bailey in fourth and Dylan Greer rounding out the top five when the checkers drop on this one. Mike Garrison at race 75 is coming to the track next. This will be our 51 seven to eight year old class. These are limited class riders. 75 on the gate, 76 in staging. That's schoolboy two, 12 to 17. Race 77, the 85, nine to 11. You should be making your way over to staging and pre-staging 450C. Race 78, start thinking about it if you haven't already because you should be moseying this way. Yeah, we got another good race here in this one. And it looks like we're gonna do a little bit of track maintenance here on the track before the uh, 50cc riders get out there. And I got a feeling these dozers gonna head out there and uh, try to smooth out the sand just a bit for these guys. These ruts got so deep in practice and in qualifying for the 50cc riders, they were literally dragging both sets of pegs, left and right, all the way through them. Their knees were up around their ears just trying to make it through the ruts. So the track crew getting out there, trying to smooth it out a little bit, make it a little bit easier, a little bit more fun for these guys as it uh, has definitely taken some wear and tear over these past few races, especially that 250A moto. Well, taking a look at some of the results, familiar names coming in this 51, seven, eight year old limited class. 9.30 of Seth Dennis on the Orange Brigade KTM, backed by Dunlop, XL trainer, Elusive Glove, Scott Anser, took the uh, qualifying race win. 
32 positions on the gate, 29 of them is all we filled up, so we have one qualifying race, it looks like. And Seth Dennis took that win. Then we had Micah Carpenter, the 710 in second on the, the Cobra back machine. He's also sponsored by Alias Dunlop Bell and Bell Ray as well as Scott. And third place, the 723 of Landon Gibson out of Peachtree City, Georgia. Those top three, I think we've seen them vying for uh, top spots there just a few moments ago, if my memory serves me correct. Jordan Ge or Jonathan Guess, the 22 Husqvarna rider out of uh, Old Town, Florida, 100% Bell and Evans Power Sports sponsored rider. He finished in fourth. And the fifth place position was Grant McDonald, the 218, or 282, I'm sorry, out of Fountain Hills, Arizona, Flow Motorsports, AEO Power Sports, Dunlop Tires, and Garnet back machine. So those were your top five rest of the field. At the number one of Maverick Snyder from Vincennes, Indiana. He finished 17th his first time out. Number two, Kevin DePino from Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, finished 7th his first time out. He's a Team Green Kawasaki back rider, also by Callahan Motocross School in O'Neill. Ryder Andrews, this out of Charleston, West Virginia, Minton Cycles, Mr. Hole Shots. Andrew is his tin, uh, timber contracting and Amsoy on the first in synthetics there. For Ryder, the 05, Lincoln Snyder out of New Bern, North Carolina. 28th spot finish in Moto 1. 13, Christian Nyman from Nunnick, Connecticut on a uh, Ford's Lobster Packs Racing Liat exclusive gloves machine. The 14, Tread McElvain out of Havelock, North Carolina. 22, Jonathan Getz from Old Town, Florida. 100% Bell Evans, uh, Power Sports sponsored rider. 24, Cole Shives. Colton Shives from Lake Placid, Florida. He was 13th on an iDesigns Build Central Florida Power Sports back machine. Carson Ward, a top 10 finisher in ninth from the qualifying race out of Zephyr Hills, Florida, right to 26. Then it's Grant Miller, the 27 out of Zellwood, Florida. He was 27th. Tanner Moore, the 31 from North Fort Moore, Myers, Florida. KTM rider on a clean and care machine. 32, Knox Lewin out of Hopkintown, Iowa on a uh, cost cutters, packs racing, elusive gloves back machine. Then we've got uh, the 46, Matthew Williams out of Powhatan, Virginia on a BTO Minton Cycle JWFT machine. 65, Charles Chalostri out of Graysonville, Maryland on a Knacker Cobra machine. 131, Anthony Pasella from Walthall, Massachusetts. We've got 133, Gates Costello from Appling, Georgia on a Tucker Rocky answer back machine. 255, Zachary Hatt from Center Hill, Florida on a uh, KTM Moto Play Motorcycle Enthusiast Link MX Graphics backed machine. Flow Motorsports brings us uh, Grant McDonald, the 282, on an AO Power Sports Dunlop Tires machine. Again, he finished fifth. 312, Isaac Williamson out of Alliance, Ohio Motorsports, MD, Mel's Training, and Bell Helmets back rider for that uh, 312 machine. 432, Timothy Scott from Hagerstown, Maryland, on a blind racing, not blind, but B-L-I-N-E, blind racing machine. Uh, we got the 456, Uriah Wood from Sturgis, Michigan, on a Burlington Graphics, Welch Packaging, Cobra Moto Machine. 525, Cole Blacka out of Frusia, Colorado. 615, McKeaton Fitch out of Absolute uh, Race Technology, Fox, Sun Enterprise, Skidmore more back KTN machine. 710, Micah Carpenter from Freeport, Illinois, as we told you, finished second on the Cobra back machine. 715, John Banaligio, Banaligio out of Allison Park, PA. Motorsports MD True MX machine. 951 Jackson Beck from Bel Air, Maryland on a Beeline Racing Traders Racing back Husky. And 998 Caleb Likens out of Bell Fountain, Pennsylvania on a Team LR O'Neill Decal Works ODI back machine. That's the field of 29 riders in this with Mike Garrison. And, you know, like we said, we've seen some of these riders out a few moments ago. So to say that we should expect uh, a barn burner quite possibly. Yeah, I, I think this. I think we're going to see a lot of passing. I think we're going to see a lot of uh, competitive uh, racing throughout this entire moto. Uh, obviously, starts are going to be critical, and we'll see who gets out on top of this one. Uh, I think it's it's going to be tough to stop Seth Dennis out there, but I think we got some kids out there that might be hungry enough to pull it off. Well, for sure. And just a, a reminder as well, everybody out there. Uh, want to take something home with you to remember this event by so don't forget to stop by mad moose media they're located over there in vendor row got some great photos from throughout the weekend make sure you stop by them 
the sun is out, the main events are underway. What better time to uh, visit them along with all of our other sponsors as well. Go get your photos uh, from Mad Moose, located over there in Bender Row. And now's the perfect time to do so as we're doing our uh, track maintenance in between our uh, main events here. We'll get back to racing here very shortly. We're going 51 cc 78 Limited, race number 75. Well, as the official retailer of 2018 Ricky Carmichael Daytona Amateur Supercross, Moto Tees carries every piece of merchandise for the event. The extensive inventory includes everything from T-shirts to hats to replica model dirt bikes. Check them out in Sponsor Village. Rider featured on the official 2018 Ricky Carmichael Daytona Amateur Supercross event shirt is the GOAT himself, Ricky Carmichael. Be sure and check that out. You can also uh, go to uh, uh, mototees.com and get some merch laid in there as well. If you're on social media, you want to be sure and help us out and uh, keep promotions and on yourself as well as the event. Facebook, it's real easy to follow us. Uh, it's facebook.com forward slash RCSX Daytona. If you're following on the Instagram, it's at RCSX Daytona. And Twitter, the same thing, at RCSX Daytona. We ask that you use the official hashtag to keep us trending together this week as the hashtag RCSX. Well, today we are live with Amateur Supercross two-wheel action. Just want to remind folks that we'll be back again tomorrow on RacerTV.com as our fourth annual Fly Racing ATV Supercross will take to this very racetrack. And folks, I'm telling you, if you've never stuck around to check that out, I think you should. You'll grow, I think you'll gain a whole new respect for these guys on four wheels out there. And um, and especially with those pros hitting the track, uh, Joel Hetrick taking the uh, championship out there uh, uh, last year as far as the overall championship. But Chad Weenan will come in as the Supercross uh, champion and the one to beat here. So this is going to be exciting. Uh, we'll be at the uh, Maxis General GNCC in Washington, Georgia this coming Saturday. You'll want to tune in about uh, 1 o'clock to check that out. And also on April 1st, uh, our season opener, Big Buck GNCC, that took place uh, a couple of weeks ago up near Union, South Carolina, will be aired on NBC Sports Network. Again, you can mark that down, Racer TV, on April 1st. And then again, April 7th through the 8th, uh, we'll be at the FMF Steel Creek GNCC in Morganton, North Carolina. And those will be uh, right here on racertv.com and through live stream and through the racertv.com Facebook pages. So uh, thanks for joining us here, folks. And uh, right now, as uh, Mike pointed out, we got more of these 51 CC 7 to 8 year old riders getting set to roll here, it looks like. I'll say thanks to a couple of sponsors that help us out here, Mike Garrison, because you know, things like this Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross wouldn't be possible without the help of uh, so many folks in the industry, great companies like, well, RockyMountainATVMC.com. Uh, those folks support uh, the sport in a level that I, I think is unparalleled to many, many, many folks. Uh, and we have a lot of great support, but man, uh, uh, Rocky Mountain ATVMC knows how to l step it up. And if you go online, you're going to notice some great savings. You're going to notice that there's quick turnaround, fast, friendly service, and they've got a couple different warehouses across the country, so they can get that stuff to you very, very quickly. Check them out yourself, RockyMountainATVMC.com. Get ready. Also want to say thanks to Bell Power Sport, Bell Helmets, for being on hand with us again this year. One of the, uh, I think, uh, best helmets on the market out there. Uh, they uh, certainly have been around the sport of motocross. Uh, the R&D, the technology that is put into the design of the Bell helmets is unparalleled. And Tim Clark, we want to say thanks to you for being on hand with us here this weekend with that as well. Sunoco Fuels on hand with us also. We want to say thanks to CJ Harris and Tammy Harris. You need those Sunoco Fuels, stop on over and see them. And pat them on the back, say thanks for, 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 for being here. Also, uh, our friends at uh, Thor in-house with us, Hilton Beatty here. I actually saw Hilton over at the GNCC yesterday. He's taken as much advantage of this uh, bike week in 2018, I think, as many of us are going to try to do. Fly Racing is uh, here with us as well. Jason Thomas, our representative, and, of course, uh, Fox. You can't uh, forget about Fox. And, of course, Todd Hicks, the man with the plan over in the uh, Fox uh, rig. Medic Gasket, Matt Klug is here with us, and Pro Circus Jim Payton is also here with us. So, I mean, that's a, a really good host of uh, great uh, industry sponsors that are here with us right now, Mike Garrison. Yeah, and I tell you one that also you can't count out to is Ricky Carmichael. Ricky Carmichael this weekend, he's been around 
not just the name on the race. He's been involved in the race. He's been out there with the riders. I saw the coolest thing in practice. Our 50cc riders struggling with the sand section. And Ricky Carmichael himself out there taking facefuls of sand, digging kids out of the sand, trying to point which lines to take, out there coaching them around the track. Really cool to see that uh, Ricky is so involved. And it's not just a name on the race. You know, Ricky's in the race. He's part of the program. He most certainly is. I mean, he takes this, he takes the bull by the horns when it comes to the event. If he's going to put his name on it, he wants to make sure it's done right. And uh, he helps out so much here each and every year with track designs and things like that. So uh, saluting the greatest of all time, Ricky Carmichael. And thanks for uh, uh, letting us uh, be a part of the uh, great experience that takes place here at Daytona International Speedway. I want to say thanks to all the manufacturers and OEMs that are here with us as well, like Cobra, Sean Hilbert, Sean Smith in-house with us this weekend. Honda is here, Brandon Wilson uh, along with Honda, Husqvarna, Sean Murphy, and Bobby Hewitt both in with us. Uh, Ryan Holiday here with us from uh, Team Green Kawasaki. The KTM folks bring in uh, Nate Ramsey and Hope uh, Stillmock. The Troy Lee Designs KTM is Brett Presnell and Tyler Keith. We also got Suzuki, uh, Pat Alexander. Good to see them coming back, man. I know they had, uh, you know, they, they did kind of some rebuilding a few years ago, man, but they're coming back in full force and Pat Alexander is leading that one. Uh, man, I tell you, with his sword drawn and they are moving forward, moving fast. Also want to say thanks to Yamaha, Tommy Handy, Drew Elliott, Ed Torrance, uh, all you guys really uh, making things special here for the riders and of course the manufacturers themselves for, for being here and, and making sure those guys are out here in support and the contingencies that they offer and pay to these riders for being a part of this program. Well I had the opportunity yesterday to speak with Nate Ramsey a little bit from uh, KTM and I tell you what the, the level of support that these kids and the, these amateurs get from all of these companies is just incredible. It is just fantastic to see these companies stepping up behind these amateur riders and pushing them to that next level. And they follow them right through, all the way to up to the top, you know, and it's uh, it's really cool to see, the, especially uh, the involvement of these guys and Nate Ramsey out there, of course, obviously a former pro, a former uh, top runner in the pro ranks himself, out there on the track now, handing down what he's learned, what he's gathered over the years, and making these riders that much better. I know, it, it, it is pretty neat. I've watched Nate uh, through his uh, career, and. And so many of these riders in the industry, or so many of the folks in the industry nowadays, you see them transi uh, transitioning from racing into the industry themselves, and uh, the changes uh, are coming, and uh, of course, bringing uh, new ideas and innovative things to, to the sport, uh, we just continually see it growing. And of course, uh, speaking of growing, uh, this is the ninth annual Ricky Carmichael Daytona Amateur Supercross events. Once again, it returns to this International Speedway. It is the biggest two days of amateur Supercross racing on the planet, period. Uh, that all follows Saturday night's Daytona Supercross. Amateur racing kicks uh, kicked off yesterday and will continue through today. And uh, I think that is uh, something neat that they give the amateurs two days of racing out there like that. And of course, don't forget tomorrow, the four wheelers will be out here, the ATVs, quads, if you will, and the best on the planet are gonna be here. You know that uh, Team USA, we have a, a, a quad cross of nations uh, that we went to for the first time there last year in Europe, and the uh, United States uh, team of uh, Thomas Brown, who won the overall, Joel Hetrick, who was uh, the 2017 uh, AMA, Pro AMA ATV motocross champion, and Chad Weenan, who was the 2018 uh, Daytona ATV Supercross champion, went to Italy and they won the world championship title. So you're gonna see wow. world championship riders here tomorrow going head to head against each other, as well as uh, some of the best out there on the planet. So man, I, I'm super stoked about bike week in general. And you know, it blows me away, the crowd that shows up for this. I mean, people, all these guys up and down the strip, I mean, uh, so many folks, every year the crowd keeps growing and growing and growing. We have a monumental crowd on ATV race day and the race fans really seem to enjoy it. Like I say, if you're here, stick around and watch. I think you're really going to enjoy it for sure. Well, as we get set to go racing with these little 51 cc's, it's hard to believe that Daytona International Speedway has been hosting uh, Daytona Supercross uninterruptedly since 1971, man. I mean, they've been, uh, and this is one of the premier events each and every year, and it, it's different than any other Supercross in a lot of different ways. And 
I think a lot of it is just the nostalgia of being a part of Bike Week, Mike. Oh, absolutely. And, and I think that, you know, the location, the open stadium, the fact that this is where the Daytona 500, yeah. the biggest, you know, the, the most prestigious race, arguably in NASCAR, takes place. It adds that extra, extra pizzazz to this race and uh, on both levels now, the, pr the pro level and now the amateur level. And this event, being in its ninth year, has just continued to grow more and more. And it itself has become one of the most prestigious amateur races for a lot of these guys to attend. I've been coming for the last five, six years myself. And I, I got to tell you, every time I come in, Mike, I get the little goosebumps. The hair raises on my arms and I get those that tingly feeling. There's something about it. Whenever you roll into this stadium and you look up and you see World Center of Racing. I just gave myself goosebumps again, man. <laughs> <I mean Yep. laughs> yep. This place, the nostalgia here is unparalleled, just like you said, uh, of any racetrack, I think, on the planet. Uh, and the Daytona uh, Supercross certainly uh, has added a lot of fa fa uh, flavor and flair to uh, the nostalgia of this particular facility. Well, and to think about all the legends in racing, not just, not just Supercross, but just in general, all of the legends of racing that have taken place and raced in this facility is amazing to think, and uh, I think Tim Cotter said it the other day in, in the riders' meeting, the fact that you, if you leave here a champion, you are a champion at Daytona, just mm -hmm. like Dale Earnhardt, just mm -hmm. like so many amazing Oh, got names. goosebumps again. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's just <laughs> unreal, the opportunity that, uh, you know, not only the, the pro Supercross level, but these amateur riders have to be here this weekend. And all thanks to, like you said, all the sponsors and, of course, Ricky Carmichael himself. No doubt about that. Uh, and just a uh, little tidbits of information for you. For the 11th straight year, Supercross legend Ricky Carmichael returns as the course designer and bomber uh, built motocross track right here at this uh, Mark Barnett uh, building this uh, Supercross track here under Ricky Carmichael's design strategy. Uh, I think that's pretty amazing uh, that Ricky, and you know, every year I gotta, I gotta tip my hat to Ricky, and I'm not just blowing sunshine right now. It <laughs> seems like he puts together some really good raceable tracks. There's been one or two that may have been less favorable than others, but for the most part, man, every year it gets better and better and better and better. I think the consensus so far this year has been this has been one of the best tracks I, I've that heard they've that ridden too. on. You I know, that I think everybody from a pro level to an amateur level, everybody's enjoying this track. And Roddy, we're about to go racing to see more of this track in action. Those 51 CC seven to eight year old limited riders we introduced to you a few moments ago, led out by Seth Dennis, or at least uh, finishing up leading out by Seth Dennis, the 930 when they ran their qualifiers a little bit ago. Boy, the sunshine getting bright out there. As you can see, well, Rodney, it looks like it's going to be the number 46 of Matthew Williams grabbing that early hole shot here in this one. Well, right behind him is the 22 of Jonathan Getz out of Old Town, Florida. He finished fourth on his 100% Bell back machines. And they are going at it. They're actually distancing themselves from the rest of the field. Yeah, it looks to me like Carson Wood now, the 26 KTM rider out of Zephyr Hill, Florida. He's worked his way up into the number two spot now. Wow, so they're already jockeying for position out here, and I have to think that there's gonna be a lot of changes by the time we reach this uh, first lap complete, then lap one to two, I'm looking for even more changes. So here we go, there went some changes right there. It is absolutely amazing to see what these kids can do with these little bikes. They are jumping just as big as the big bikes on these back straight and over here on the Rolex double. As you see, your leader's coming around right now, the 930 of Seth Dennis out to the front here in this one. Micah Carpenter who finished second out of Freeport, Illinois on his Cobra-backed alias machine. He's moved up into the number two spot now behind that 46 of Matthew Williams. Matthew Williams, by the way, finished 11th in the qualifier, so this might be a redemption ride for him right now. Well, these youngsters looking good out front right now. Your leader already trying to put a little bit of a gap on second as they come through the rhythm section, but I tell you what, our second place rider, Micah Carpenter, not letting him out of his sight too far early on here in this one. Carpenter uh, is second, Getz now drops to third, Carson Wood is fourth, Cole Blacka is fifth, Matthew Williams is sixth. The uh, 46 machine is what it says on here. So, uh, oh, that must be the results from the first race they had out there because that's not the results that I'm looking at <laughs> right now. That's actually how they finished uh, what we're seeing on live timing and scoring right now. So 
Never mind anything I just said, but wow, mind that. Mind that, if you will. Micah Carpenter out of Freeville, Illinois, launching that Cobra right there just a moment ago. And it is, I mean, he is on rails. He is making things happen out here. Yeah, I tell you what, right now, he is uh, working this track and making it his own right now as he's trying to close the gap up on Seth Dennis out front with the number 22. Right there behind him is Jonathan Getz in the three spot. Carson Wood trying to uh, keep pace back there as well on the 26 and four. Cole Black of the 25. Is that Black? I know that's the five. Hey, is that the 282 maybe moving up a couple spots? That could be Grant Davis. If so, he got two spots on that lap. And, man, he is really working hard, it looks like. Well, here they come back through that big, giant whoop section. Up and over the finish line they go right now. The 28 of Carson Wood, Zephyr Hills, Florida. Still trying to close the gap up on your leaders. Your leaders working their way into the sand section right now. Whoa! That 26 get a little bit sideways there in that rhythm section. Good battle out front as well with between the 930 and the 710. That number 22, Jonathan Getz still sitting in third. Ride the husk of Arna machine. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I haven't seen it unless maybe we missed something out here, but they've got seven or 930 of Seth Dennis out front. He may have in a mix and mashup of all that gotten out front and even missed our TV camera crew. Uh, but right now we're looking at uh, Seth Dennis out front. I didn't see him go by. He turned to 122 last time, but uh, that uh, goes to show you that's how fast that kid is. That's why he comes in here with the number one spot. And that's why probably everybody's gunning to beat him right now. Micah Carpenter second, Jonathan Getz is third, Carson Wood in fourth, and Cole Blacka in fifth. And as you can see, these riders trying to struggle their way through that sand section, trying to pick the best line right now, the 26 of Carson Wood. Oh, and Wood dropping back a little bit now. It looks like it's going to be, I believe that's going to be the 525 of Black. Indeed it is. Black gets by Wood. As they're coming back around to the front straight now, both of them are going to take that tight inside line, set themselves up for the whoop section. Well, Wood right now riding a uh, very uh, Good race. He finished ninth his first time out, so he's uh, solid there in a uh, top five trying to make that happen. All the way to the checkers. We're three laps into this one. Seth Thin is still out front. Carpenter, Getz, Blecka, and Wood still your top five. Matthew Williams now in the number six spot. Landon Gibson in seventh aboard the 723. Gage Costello is eighth aboard the 133. Grant McDonald, the 282 and ninth, and uh, Colton Shives rounds out your top 10. We look a little further back, 11 through 15. Colton Shives drops to 11th, actually, just uh, caught up with that. It's Knox Lewin moving into the number 10 spot, so Colin, uh, Colton Shives is now 11th. We see that Kevin DePino has checked in in 12th. He moves up a spot there. Zachary Hatton, 13th, and Ryan Wood is 14th. Christian Nyman is 15th as we round out the top 15 after three laps of racing in this five lap race. Well, Rodney, as the wind is starting to pick up, just a reminder to everybody out in the pit area, please make sure we are under wind advisory this afternoon here in Daytona. So make sure all of your uh, easy ups and campers and tents and all that, everything is staked down. Make sure all those uh, tents are all staked in place and uh, don't want them to blow away. Back down the hatch, boys. That's right, exactly. <laughs> White flag is out here in this one for our 51cc 78 limited class riders. As they're working their way around, we're looking at the number 22 right now, Jonathan Getz out of Old Town, Florida, riding that Husqvarna. And he's working his way around. Your leaders balancing out now. Your leaders on that far left side of the track. See if we can uh, pick them up as 930 of Seth Dennis has got his hands full. With the 710 of Micah Carpenter chasing him down right now. Looks like Micah Carpenter has taken over the lead here in this one. So Carpenter, now your leader. Seth Dennis dropping to the number two spot. Here they come onto the back right side of the track. They go both doubled into the corner. Here they come into the sand pit now. This is going to change things up a little bit as they dive in and out of the sand. Wow. Lap times right now, 125 and a half. But Carpenter a little bit faster, less than a second behind. Will that be the tail of the tape as we're joined once again by Jason Wygant? Jason, you couldn't have come at a better time, I don't think, as this one really heats up. Booyah. Where am I at? There, I'm at right there. I like it. And that checkered flag comes out, the 710 of Micah Carpenter out of Freeport, Illinois. He's going to run this show. Ricky's going to run this show. You handle the results. We have a top 10 rundown. We'll have Ricky Carmichael do that part. There we go. That we're just going to give the analysis. 
We'll give the analysis. So there's our 51cc 7.8 class limited rider coming off the track. Now the 710 of Micah Carpenter with the win. I do believe they're in that one. Indeed it was. Coming around in the number two spot, Seth Dennis. So Micah Carpenter, a hard fought race in that one. Well, Jason Wygant, now we've got the man himself. The me? Yeah. Oh, him. The GOAT. Him or me? Ricky <laughs> Carmichael oh, in the booth with us. What's up, guys? Ricky, we got Schoolboy 2, 12 to 17 on the line right now. Yep. I think this is going to be an exciting race for sure. We got a full Gator Rider, 34, lined up here this one. Yeah, well, it's a stacked field. And, and Schoolboy 2, you could argue at the amateur level, one of the fastest classes out here. Uh, oh, yeah. They're not B or A technically, but your young kids on uh, 250Fs, they're going to go real fast. So this should be fun to watch and uh, some big names in this one. I'll just try to run down where we were with the uh, heat races. Cullen Park picked up a third in the heat. Carson Mumford got the win. Carter Bees had a third in the other heat. And Jalik Swole had the win in the other heat. So Swole and Mumford have the two heat race wins coming into this main event. Well, and another one you can't count out too, uh, Ouija, is Hunter Kelly won the last chance qualifier, but he too has the speed to be up there with those guys as well. Now, bad gate pick, that may play a part in this one. We'll wait and see. He's going to try to go from LCQ to uh, to the top. main event win. It's yep. been done before. Yeah, That's part of the Supercross game. All right, let's get it locked and loaded and go racing. One thing about the uh, out, out starting outside, you can bolt, hit that bowl turn, carry some speed around, doesn't get jammed up on the inside. Nicely done. Well, the gate drops. We are off and underway here for Schoolboy 2. 12 to 17 into the first turn they go. Coming out of this Brown one. and Small side by yep. side. Right there together. Oh! That was close. Yeah. Small was. almost got to the back of Brown. And Small right now. Out front now leading the way. As here's Brown in that number two spot. Hardy Munoz on the 211 right in the mix there. Also trying to get around the 63 of Pierce Brown. And now going after the leader, too, so Hardy Munoz not messing around here. Good to see them in the mix. There he is on the outside. Two KTMs wheel to wheel. Munoz the big jump and makes that pass stick. Now Brown tries to come back on him and gets some back. So a good battle there for second. 67, Jesse Flock back there in fourth. Well, here they come some of the lap times Flock had earlier. Here we go. Yeah, here they come through that rhythm section. As you can see, Swall. Trying to get the drive through the whoop section. He's already got a couple bike links on the 63 right now. Pierce Brown. Brown had a little bit of a rough go in several of his classes in qualifying, but he right now is running that number two spot. Not for long. He's challenging Swole. These two battled earlier today on the last lap. Pierce Brown went down. He was in second. That allowed Swole to get away and take the victory. Now they're back. That, I believe, was 250B. Now it's schoolboy. Pierce Brown wants this one bad. Yeah, you know, Swole definitely does play around with his insides, man. He's really been protecting those inside lines You're right. all day long. Yep. Of course, it's, and, and so no one but, what I've been seeing a trend, nobody wants to follow follow each other through the inside. So they go outside uh, in the burrs, and they yeah. lose so much uh, track position. Swole now into lap riders and just inching away a bit from the 63 of Brown. And Brown's going to get hung up outside. That didn't work at all. Well, and the fact that they're already into lap riders, that itself is pretty amazing. It just shows how fast these front runners are going here in this one. As you can see, Swall out front, Pierce Brown the number two spot, Hardy Munoz in that number three spot, Jesse Flock in fourth, and Grant Harlan in the number five spot. And what's interesting is we had a big pile up a lap ago in this corner. Yellow flags are out, that forces everybody to go inside. Hardy Munoz, Jesse Flock coming through in fourth. So they all had to avoid a little catastrophe. But yeah, you're right, those outsides, every time yeah. someone goes there, they lose ground. Yeah, yeah, big time. I understand why these guys don't want to follow on the inside. You know, you just, it's really hard to see where you're going, but still, you almost need to, you almost need to do it anyways, even though you can't see good, because you lose so much time. And Would it almost be a benefit to, do, use the inside to follow him for two or three corners until you get to the spot where you want to try to set him up. That's Just right. try to stay close. Yep. Well, Ricky, is there a point in this race that the inside lines become so rutted and so rough that we're going to see the outside lines being a 
better choice? Well, there is a chance that could happen, yes, yeah, especially the, uh, the right-hander after the long rhythm lane by, uh, by the front stretch, Daytona front stretch. Possibly there we can see that scenario happen, yes. As we're working our way around right now, it's still going to be full out front leading the way. Pierce Brown in the number two spot. Artie Munoz in that number two, three spot. That's the clock in the four. And Grant Harlan in the number five. Looks like Cullen Park six, Gage Linville seventh, Kay Nipping eighth, Cameron Mitchell ninth, Cody Gross tenth, Carson Mumford eleventh. So Mumford again stuck with a bad start, wins the heat race, terrible start, and in eleventh place right now. And he also had a bad start in the B-Moto earlier today and was barely able to get into the top 10 there. So, bummer for him. Yeah, Mumford a little bit off pace from uh, where we expected him to be in the running here in this one. And I tell you what, it looks to me like Pierce Brown is trying to close that gap up on Swole. Swole definitely uh, handling this pressure really good from uh, Pierce Brown. Just riding his race. He hasn't wavered yet, so uh, if he sticks to Racing in front of him and not what's behind him is definitely going to help him lock this, lock this race up. Well, down the back stretch they go as they work their way back around right now. Small still out front, Pierce Brown in the number two spot. Small looks like he gained a little bit of time on Brown that left side, but here Brown starting to close it back up and he takes that outside line into the sand again. <laughs> yeah, he said these guys are the Camp Carmichael. Go to the insides. I mean. I'm not out there riding, so you know maybe there's, there's got to be a reason why these guys aren't following. However, they just lose so much time, and as a rider, you can feel that. Uh oh. Hey, trying to make the moves. The white and flag he, comes out. What uh, happened to Swole? Yeah. Wow, he just, that's strange. I think Swole got hung up behind a uh, lapper there. I'm not not exactly sure who that was. Messed him up on the inside and allowed uh, allowed Pierce Brown to get by him here. So that was the break that Pierce Brown was hoping for earlier in 250B. He was behind Small the whole time, and then he crashed. This time, as the white flag's coming out, he makes the pass, and now Small's trying to get desperate to reel him back in. Well, yeah, Pierce Brown right now, he looks to be on a move, and that was a weird situation there for Small. And Small has been uh, on the gas all weekend long, and now Pierce Brown, now that he's in the lead, seems to be taking those inside lines, Ricky. Yep, there he goes inside. It's going to be funny. See what he does here. Is he gonna block this inside? Oh, he's, yep, he does. Pierce Brown goes to the inside. That's gonna work. Checkered flags out. Pierce Brown comes from behind and wins your schoolboy championship here at Daytona. And he had to earn that one, making it work, pressuring Small. Small made one error, and that's all Pierce Brown needed. Big tall kid out of Utah. And that was good, man, good revenge after not being able to pull the trigger on Small earlier. Got it done here. Small was digging deep on that last lap to try to get him back. <laughs> yes, indeed he was. It looks like Jesse Flock gonna take third here in this one. Artie Munoz fourth and Grant Harlan rounding out your top five here in this. As we get set to go now for race number 77. Our main events lining up. This could be our 85cc 9 to 11 class. Give it the rest of the top 10 there. Cullen Park was sixth in schoolboy. Caden Niffing, Gage Linville eighth. Cameron Mitchell ninth, and Carson Mumford did make it up to 10th ahead of Jack Rogers. So that's gonna do it for schoolboy two. Remember, it's a super cross style format. Heat races for yesterday. These are main events. So each gate drop is for everything. The championship for the year is decided in one race. Good work by the graphics department. Just as soon as I say, they put it up there. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, unbelievable. So yeah, we have uh, 34 different championships that we crown to the Supermoto, uh, Supercross format. Supermoto, Super am I kidding myself? <laughs> Supermoto, that's why they're using those insides. It's like Supermoto. Uh, 70 degrees, uh, partly sunny. I believe that when I see it. Oh, there's a little bit of blue. There's, there's a little, little bit of blue bit. up there, okay. So 85, nine to 11, the youngest of the 85 cc age divisions. I like that. Part partly sunny, not partly cloudy. Cloudy. Yes. That, optimus. Is that the same thing? Yeah. That's yeah. Optimus. Yeah. Half yeah. full. Half full. Exactly. Half, half full. Half full. Yeah. I'm half empty kind of guy. Well, <laughs> no, I'm are actually, you? I'm not half empty. I'm a realist, dude. Well, I expect the, the real worst and okay. hope for the best. Okay. You know, like I've always been that way, even with my racing. 
you know, I, I expect the worst and hope for the best. That way, if the worst does happen, You're ready. then I'm not let. I'm ready for it. I'm not <laughs> yeah. let down. I'm like, okay, I'm. I, I have a good chance. There's a chance I'm not gonna do good today. And you were the only person that thought that when you line up on the gate. 100. percent You were the only. I've told I you earlier. I was scared to death of getting beat. I would see you and your mom and everybody in your crew freaking out. I'm like, you've won 150,000 races. What are you so worried about? I'm telling you, I just <laughs> scared to death. Somebody's gonna just beat take me. Take it dude. away. <laughs> Maybe that's the secret. That's what all these kids are missing, and that's what they got to do for the perfect season. They all need to think yeah. less. I always had a fear that somebody was gonna figure out a way to beat me. Always. Every day. Oh yeah. Wow. Time. Every day. Paranoia, not a powerful motivator. <laughs> that's racing. what I don't. That's what I don't miss about racing. Dealing with that. Yes. Dealing with that. All right, so we're 85, 9 to 11. Our heat race winners were Kristen Yannick on the number 27 Kawasaki from Oakland, <laughs> Illinois, and Casey Cochran, the Suzuki rider from nearby Groveland, Florida. And I believe that's Cochran who got the jump on everyone here. Yep, there he is, Casey at the bat, out front, and looking good. One of the premier riders, the Suzuki's kind of revamped amateur scene. Yep. Oh, tough break for the 177. He started third, Kay Johnson, but got into the tough blocks. And a pile up even further back than that. Yeah, so that's all the stuff Casey Cochran is missing. Yeah, Suzuki definitely. They got a, they got a special one with Cochran for sure. Yeah. He can he can ride a great kid. Most of these kids out here they're really good kids, but uh, definitely Suzuki having Casey on the RM Army is helping their uh, amateur program out tremendously. Yeah, I remember seeing him on 65s, getting some titles. Now moving up to the 85 and getting that Suzuki deal. 27. Yannick, we mentioned winning the heat race. He's up to second, so let's see if he can try to run down Casey Cochran. I love the Casey Cochran hair, man. He's got the full, like, ramen noodle, blonde, curly highlights. Riders down. Hopefully everybody's up That's, and okay. Uh, Adams. Yeah, Drew Adams. Drew Adams. Adam. One, one of the contenders generally yeah. in this class. He looks shaken, not stirred, but not going to be able to get back and contend for the win in this one. Talking about He's scouting, picking up, picking up the numbers, picking up the numbers, picking up the names, right. good stuff. Right. Jordan Renfro now in third. He was the one that was battling with Yannick. Casey Cocker looking good so far, Mike. I think he's looking fantastic out there, and like you said, the 27 of Yannick out of Oakland, Illinois, on that Monster Energy Kawasaki in that number two spot. And there for a minute there on that first lap, Renfro looked like maybe he was going to close the gap up on him and. Uh, put a charge on him, but now Renfro is starting to pull away from uh, just a little bit on fourth. As they're working their way back around into the sand section here, you see your leaders. And it looks like Drew Adams walking his way off the track now. All right, good to see. So yeah, Drew Adams down on the first lap out of this race. He's hurt, but he is walking off. He'll be a contender in the future in a different race. Gets the lineup again, but he is walking off. Casey Cochran continues to lead. And we'll wait for them to come by here in our announcement tower. Cochran trying to just put the hammer down and get away. Here he is. He's rolling right now. Well, Janik still in the number two spot. Renfro in that three spot. Logan Best in the four spot. And Dylan Blecka rounding out your top five here in this one. What are the challenges, RC, of uh, having an amateur track? And now you've got to have a track that works for a variety of bike sizes. What are some of the things that you do to try to accommodate that? you got 450s and 50s out here. Yeah, that's, that's the hard part is, you know, it's a compromise like anything. It's like motorcycle suspension. You get yeah. the front working, the back's probably not going to work the way you want it. To yeah, be. yeah. The rear suspension's not going to work the way you want it. But uh, first and foremost is safety, you know, but, but challenging. And, um, I don't, I don't know that there's a perfect scenario. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. if you make it too easy, well, if you make it hard, then we'll, you know the guys, like the 80 guys, can't do stuff. Yeah, but it's good for the, you know, the A class. But then if you make it easy for the mini bikes, then it's too easy for the A class. So right. it's tough. I think the biggest thing is layout uh -huh. and be able to go back and forth rather than a lot of like short lanes yep. and back and forth, uh, like um, I just call it 90 degree corners. Yeah. Just tend to have a tendency to get uh, really one line. So the 180s makes for good racing. And as far as the jump goes, 
you know, you just have to find it's you have to find the happy medium where it's somewhat challenging for the for the A A riders and as well as safe for the for the mini bikes. And then we know what happens. The jumps that are jumpable for the big bikes, some of these oh, fast yeah. eighty five riders start eyeing them up <laughs> and start doing them. <laughs> That's right. There's Janik, you see on your screen, the 27, still trying to catch Cochran. No, they're almost matching each other, Mike. Yeah, nearly identical paces between these two. Janik trying to close that gap up on him. Like you said, Renfro in the three spot still. Logan Best in the four spot. Dylan Bleka still in the five spot. Here we're looking at uh, Janik there on the number 27. Monster Edge Kawasaki working his way into the whoop section. A little bit of lap traffic already for these riders. Here are 85cc 9 to 11 main event here in this one. You were talking about some of the jumps and stuff that these little guys will do that were built more for the big guys. Not to mention jumps that weren't intended to be, for instance, a quad. Suddenly become right. a quad. Well, yeah. that's right. So this rhythm lane um, at the end of the front stretch, you know, some of the uh, the A riders, like, they're, they're tripling this jump that was intended to be a double double. Yeah. So they're triple singling it. And uh, it's like, well, what do you do? You know, like, uh, that was never intended to, to be a triple. Now, so look, I'm sure you had to deal with that at your level. I'm sure there were times where someone did something in practice. Oh, I was scared to death of Yeah, that. I know Especially you were not, like not your thing. Racing James Stewart, it's like, oh, my God, yeah. I hope he doesn't <laughs> jump this, you know, because I really don't want to do this jump. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't Wyndham do that, too? Like, it was not afraid of Wyndham some big leaps? Wyndham yep. was very creative. Yes, yeah. Very creative. So then you're like, great. Yeah. This is what we're going to have to do now. That's right. Yeah, so it happens at every level. That's the crazy part. Whether it's 85 CC riders here, whether it's uh, Ricky racing at like Anaheim, <laughs> it's, it's going to happen in Supercross. And that's what Casey Cochran and uh, Chris Janik, Jordan Renfro, your top three right now, are dealing with. White flag is out for Cochran and trying to bring it home for the RM Army. Janik, the team green rider, solid in second. And Renfro on the Orange Brigade, KTM is third. I got to say, though, very positive feedback on the track on Saturday night. You like Riders that? Riders were pumped. Look, I'm independent. I'm, I'm not even out there. But some of the hardest to please, and Chad Reed, all-time critic of racetracks, <laughs> had good things to say. Maybe, he he's, maybe right. he's getting friendlier in his older maybe days. Maybe that is. He's instead that. of getting crankier, right. getting friendlier. Going, yeah, yeah. Okay, the other way. Okay. Riders were pumped. But like you mentioned, the long lanes. They like the long lanes to give an opportunity to set each other up for a but pass. But they've had long lanes in years past. How long has that lane been? That's like the same long finish line lane. Thank so you're you. saying the lane's length is really not any different? That's what I'm saying. I mean, how, you know how long that lane's been. That yeah, it's been there the, the whole time. Stretch, yes. And I actually looked, I don't know if you know this, I looked at um, Eli Tomek's average lap time from 2017 to 2018 here was two tenths of a second different. Different layout, all worked out the same. Right. <laughs> one year they hated it, one year they loved it. I don't know. Well, you know, somebody that is loving it is Casey Cochran, who just took that checkered flag and he is pumped up as he has just won our 85cc 9-11 to title here at this one. Christian Janik going to come around for that number two spot, I do believe, with Jordan Renfro on that KTM coming around in third. Battles right down to the last lap right in front of our tower. We have two riders go down. I think you're going to be okay. And, yeah. yep, they're getting back up. Got to get that bike situated. So they were battling down to the last lap of 9 to 11, 85 cc. 450 c is your next class. Let's see if we'll hold the gate here while I wait to get these riders untangled. This is turn three. All right, he's popping up. Shaken, not stirred, as I like to say. Awesome to come and hang out here at Daytona International Speedway. What I love about it, I say it all the time, they treat every single event here the same. Whether it's the Great American Race, the Daytona 500, which you could argue is maybe the most famous motorsport event in the world, or our Supercross for the pros on Saturday, or right here to the amateur racing, our ATVs tomorrow, flat track on Tuesday, or sorry, Thursday, road racing over the weekend. They bring out the A team and the A crew and treat every racer the same. Doesn't matter if you're uh, Austin Dillon winning the Daytona 500 or someone that's on the line in 450C. You get the A-class treatment when you come race at the World Center of Racing. Heat race winners in 450C were Brian DeRoyter and Jake Rossa. Well, we saw Jake earlier on this, year, this morning, and uh, he put in quite some performances uh, 
early yep. on. We saw him a couple races ago, though. Rodney and I were talking about him a little bit, a little bit off pace a few races back. So we'll see if he gets back on his game here in this one. Jake Rasa is sponsored by American Tennis Courts. He said he's more of a clay guy than a grass guy. <laughs> and I don't know about sand. I don't know how that's going to work at all. I course. personally like sand, uh, sand, sand courts. Sand courts? Yeah. Yeah. Sand, sand tennis courts. courts. Yeah. You go to the volleyball court with a racket. <laughs> yeah. You go to the volleyball court. You spike that thing. Spike or it with clay a racket. Courts. Clay courts. It would be clay courts. Clay court. Yeah. There's a little. Is there any clay left on the track this year? Is there any clay? Didn't use any. No, no clay. Really? O only for the start. Yeah. And I wouldn't really call that clay. That's like a red sand. Yeah, it was pretty deep. Uh, that was a good change, though. Maybe that's why the riders like oh, it so yeah. much. Yeah. Well, it definitely the, the jumps get gnarlier and ruddier. And, uh, and, but the jumps might be a smoother transition with the... Uh, oh, not having to go from the sand to the to clay. The yeah. Pack, yeah, yes. exactly. Yes, before it's like hitting the curves. All right, revs are up. Gates down in 450C. Wow. They're done with the clay court. Somebody grabbing a handful of throttle there on the inside of this one. How did he make that work? Stuck to the inside. I, I have no idea, but that's going to be the 64 of Doc Smith. Well, that's why. He's a doctor. That's right. Doc Smith getting to the inside. Oh, and the rider in second goes down. Lost the front Rasa. end. That's that Rasa. was Rasa. Well, because he's only good in the clay. All right, so Rasa. And oh, we just saw it. He got up. He was in second. He picked himself up about, what, 15th place, and the head nod showed it all. He's frustrated. He knew he threw away a great start. He had to return serve on the American tennis courts. So Brad break for Rasa, good break for the doctor, Doc Smith. Well, Doc Smith gonna be out front here in this one. The 38 of Zachariah Kabuban out of Hawaii, coming all the way here from Hawaii. And he is running the number two spot right now through that rhythm section to go, coming around for lap number one. Drove the RV all the way out from Hawaii, <laughs> family in tow. Impressive, battle is on now for second place. Aloha to the rider out of Hawaii. Going to deal with some traffic now. That's a good battle. That is a long ways. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, that's about as far as you can go and still be considered in the United States on end to end. Probably the longest trip you can make. Maybe going all the way up to Maine. Wait a minute, we got a prop. Rider stalls in the corner. Now it's all, all sorts of block passes yeah. taking place now. Oh boy, the 217 now of High June Simmons. I believe it's just worked his way up and up in the number two spot. Third to first. Doc Smith trying to deal with the pressure now. Let's see how far up the 217 of Simmons can go. Well, Simmons right now just ahead there of the 38. Zachariah in that third place spot right now. Your leader, though, out front. He's got no idea what's going on behind him. And Doc Smith trying to check out here in this one. Checking out and giving a checkup. That's Doc Smith right now. He's got the anatomy of this track figured out. He's performing some surgery out there. Every one of those ruts. Got that front end sharpened up like a scalpel. Doc Smith pulling away from everyone in 450C. He's got the prescription for a championship. He's got the script. Yep. Nice. All right. I mean, look, when you got to fill seven days at Loretta's, we, we really, we maximize every opportunity we get. 217, Simmons has taken over second. He's battling it out with Hunter Blackledge, who's in third. So Simmons has locked that down. Kai June Simmons, he worked for that second place spot, Mikey. Yeah, he did indeed. And now he's finding himself uh, in another battle here as they're working their way back around. There he is. Oh, he's got a little bit of a gap on him. Now watch Simmons. Section. That's the 217. Go ahead. Yeah, there he goes through the sand section right there. Hunter Blackledge on that 34. Going to be chasing him down. Back to the sand they go once again. So battle for third and fourth. A couple bike lengths apart. Hunter Blackledge still third. Brian DeRuyter, who won the heat race earlier, is fourth. Stephen Ward fifth. Zach Grubai is sixth. Brian Burkdar, seventh. Evan Hamowitz is eighth. Marcelo Felipe de Lima Sousa rounds out your top ten. That's ten names, actually. He could round out the top ten just with his own first name. Unbelievable. He's the entire class. Well, Doc Smith out front in control of this one here, the number 64, working his way up and over the wall. Down the back section he goes right now. 
out front leading this one. As you see, he's going to go hopping over the Fox Zello into the double-double section there. Nobody in this one going for the triple. You see more of the uh, tripling action in the uh, two classes, it seems like. Well, Doc Smith, it. yeah, he's trying to keep it upright, keep their position. Doc Smith out of Chandler, Texas, your leader on that number 64. Battle is on right now. Let's see who's putting the pressure on the 217. It's the 413 of Evan Hamowitz. He's made the move for a third. We saw them banging bars back there with Hunter Blackledge on the 34, and now it's on. Nads are working their way around right now. Doc Smith still out front here. And I like battle. seeing, yeah, I like seeing these battles like this. Yes, good battles right, right here for in this podium. One. The 413. He's trying right now. Both riders taking that outside line up and over the Rolex double. They go. The 217 of Simmons. Up and over the wall, down the back stretch. Now the 413 gets by now. And that 413, Hamwitz from St. John's, Florida, just 19 years old. Looks like he's got the pass locked down. So the second place spot has shuffled quite a bit in this race. Let's see if Evan Hamwitz can try to make a run at your leader, Doc Smith. Smith has not dealt with any pressure in this race at all. And the lead is pretty big. It's eight seconds. So we'll see if there's anything that Hamowitz can do. We've had several other riders in second. They were not able to close in on the doctor. And there's only one lap to go. So he's going to have to hope the doc makes, an uh, makes a mistake. I hope Doc's got his malpractice insurance paid up in case he does make an error out there. Well, Simmons from Tallahassee, Florida here. And that's where I'm from. And yeah. I've never seen the guy. Doesn't come by the goat farm? Doesn't say hi? No, I don't think he hadn't been there. Man. Can't knock on the door, maybe leave a house for me. Right? Jeez, right? There he goes, exiting that corner. Got a good drive out of there. Fun double. See, now he's going to the inside. This is a good line. Less track. Yeah, nice job with the rhythm section there for Simmons in third. Trying to stay out of the deep stuff and kind of float over it. Still dealing with a little heat from Hunter Blackledge in fourth. Logan Flanders has climbed up to the fifth place spot. Meanwhile, this race is just about over. Doc Smith looking to get it done. He's into the final corner. There he is. Oh, and several down riders there. Again. Wow. All right, Doc, you don't have to help the riders right now. You're not a medic crew, you're just Doc. <laughs> just focus on your race. Checkered flag is out. Doc Smith wins it. And look at that. Hamowitz got right to him. He did. He was just about alongside of him there. He was eight seconds behind when the white flag came out. Now, Doc Smith was definitely cruising on the last lap because he had a nice lead, but that was too close for comfort. Hey, Weege, do you want to tell me where Logan Flanders is from? What town he's what, what town is Logan Flanders oh. from? Wow, wow, all right, I gotta, got I gotta dig deep. I might have to put some reading glasses on or maybe some x-ray specs. I can't, he all right, here we go. From Thona to Sasa, <laughs> Florida. Thona to Sasa. Thona to Sasa. Wow, been there many times. Yeah. Big, I love it, come down in the winter time. Thona to Sasa is lovely this time of year. Wow, do you have any idea where that is? Florida native, do you, have you ever been to Thona to Sasa? I haven't, and okay. I'm looking Number 124, Holtman. Okay, there's two, they must be brothers out there. You th can you tell me where they're from? No, because <laughs> no, it's so long, my <laughs> sheet cuts it off. Sao Jose dos Pinhais. You know, I don't always drink, but when I do, I make it a Sao Jose dos. <laughs> yeah, that's where he's from. Okay, so congratulations out to Doc Smith taking the win there. That was on his chart. He had an appointment made. It was very well scheduled out that he had an appointment on the track. And the doc gets it done. What's up, doc? You're going to go meet David Iser down at the podium, be crowned champion here at the uh, RCSX? Well, boys, I think I'm going to leave it with you guys. I'm going to go watch some racing get down yep. in the trenches. Watch some people win some championships. How are you feeling a couple days into the uh, whole Daytona experience? You all right? You yeah, in I'm good. I'm good. I was a little bummed on the weather this morning, but yep, it's partly sunny now. It's, it's partly sunny. <laughs> it's partly <laughs> <Everything's> sunny. Good. <laughs> <laughs> 
you, it's you're all good. good. You're just a realist, man. You're Matt. hoping for the best, and it all came together. Has anybody seen Matt Walker today? Yes, he's yelled to yeah. me several times. Did he? He yes, was texting me. Yeah. He was texting me when uh, Casey Cochran was out that on the guy. track, and he said, you know why he's so fast? Oh. Because He said, because I've been training him for four years. Has he come to the Camp Carmichael? Well, yet? see, well, that's why I was going to enlighten uh -oh. Matt. That okay. He <laughs> is a graduate <laughs> of the <laughs> Suzuki Camp Carmichael. <laughs> so I'm claiming it's because he came to Camp Carmichael. Okay. All right. So, it seems like a wishbone. Casey Cochran, we got two guys helping out. Okay. Right. RMP hairstyle. That's flatter. good. That's good stuff. Two guys fighting over. Yeah, I know. Well, it's winning the 85 9 to 11. Of course, everybody wants to claim that. Heck, when Brayton went on Saturday night, I heard 130 people say that was their guy. Yeah. When you're a pro for 16 years, you've probably had 11 different mechanics. You've been on four or five different teams. So every team manager you ever rode for, every sponsor you ever had, every mechanic, the amount of people that were like, Brayton is my guy, I worked yeah. him way back. Yeah, yeah. There's 15 years worth of guys that worked with him. What a feel good story that was. Right? Though. I mean, I was so right. happy after yes. that race, and you could see how well he is res he's respected amongst his peers. Yeah. Everybody was happy. Yes, even already. Tomac was pumped for him. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's saying a lot when, when you know, your peers come up to you and congratulate you and are just as happy for him as they would be for their self for winning. That's really cool. It says a lot about Justin Brayton. What I think was really impressive of that, I mean, Tomac was definitely coming after him, and that is literally a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for Brayton. If you mess that up, you might never be in that position. Again, and the guy's almost 34 years old, so the window's closing. Knowing that, with that pressure on him, with Tomac bearing down on him, he didn't let it get to him. He right. was ice water in the veins. He was. It was uh, unbelievable because he was a sitting duck pretty much the whole race. Yes. Out there by himself, knowing that these other guys are coming, you know, yeah. guys that have won multiple races, and... Uh, you know, at Marvin, uh, that was Marvin's race to lose, and he choked, man. He made a mistake, then he turned around and backed it up with another one. Yep. Right here in this corner by where we're sitting at, yep. he got up too high on the berm. The berm gave way, and, uh, you know, at that level, I said it on the broadcast. I'm like, you can't turn, you know, one mistake into another at, at this level. You know, that's, that's uh, rule number one. So he's definitely going to have to uh, try to eliminate, uh, you know, those mistakes. Had a golden opportunity to make up some really valuable points and didn't capitalize. Yep, that. yeah, and Brayton, again, that window was open and he took advantage. He, he, did. he did not choke. I mean, that was as much pressure as you could expect to deal with. I thought Tomac was going to catch him. For a little I while, did. he was doing the math. I'm like, two seconds a lap, yep. we got four to go. He's going to get him. I thought he was going to catch yes. him. Yes, but Brayton stepped up, and the next to last lap, he was doing 114s, 115s. He had a 113 left in the, yep. left in the tank, and that he got it done. That, tur that 13 really helped yep. him. So. And I think Tomac was like, all right, I'll see you next week. That's right. That's <laughs> right. All right, well, thanks for stopping by. Thanks, RC. Guys. It's always fun bench racing. It. You yep. guys have a great one. I'm going to go watch these guys, give them some encouragement. should be fun. Well, Back this week. one's going to be big. We're going to the pro class. WMX is going to be coming up next, I, I believe. Say, yep. He's going to go watch these girls. As they are yeah, going to go watch the girls. That's right. right. All right, guys, I'm going to go watch the girls. Right. Here we go. WMX is uh, coming up next. And uh, we actually had a big break in the action. They had practice early in the day. We didn't run their uh, race until now. And by the way, they have two motos because the WMX is actually part of a running motocross series with the traditional two moto format. So instead of heats and mains like everybody else out here, they've got to do the double. We had our big women in racing symposium from 10 to two. So we had their wait for their first moto to run because a lot of the WMX riders were in that. That was a really cool event that happened in one of the press conference rooms here at Daytona International Speedway. First time they've ever had that at Women in Racing Symposium. And it was really cool. I actually heard that uh, the opening remarks were made by Lisa France Kennedy, who is uh, one of the head honchos here at Daytona International Speedway, uh, part of the uh, France family who were the originators of uh, NASCAR. She actually came with the opening remarks for it. So primarily that is uh, the conference they had today was for motorcycle racers, ATV racers, and things of that like, but it was good to see Lisa France Kennedy coming out and really legitimizing that uh, as one of the, uh, you could probably say one of the highest ranking executives of all in motorsports attending that conference. So big thanks to Lisa France Kennedy for coming by with opening remarks for that. And uh, not just, it wasn't just racing based, uh, the symposium. We had a lot of people from a variety of different roles in the industry, a lot of great racers, women's racers there, uh, but some big uh, companies that uh, have high-ranking executives, again, that are perhaps sponsors, that have females in position of power, um, some of our race promoters, like right here, 
when you have an event run by MX Sports, you know that the Coombs family is involved. Carrie and Rita Coombs, of course, they were there. Uh, I like to say, look, I've only had female bosses in my entire life. I've only had female bosses. And by the way, that even includes when I come down here and work at Daytona, working with uh, Julie and Jennifer here at Daytona, who really helped run the show on Saturday night for the professional Supercross and then help out on Amateur Day. So it was really the idea to get all the females who are in such a variety of powerful positions, you don't really think of it that way. They're just doing their job day in and day out. They don't really think of it as anything where they're necessarily bonded or connected. So they made that connection today. You know, sponsors, promoters, racers, and it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that. They'll produce some notes uh, over everything that everyone discussed today. I, I think it's pretty open. I don't think they necessarily went in there with a the game plan of when this is over, we're going to accomplish X. Uh, but I think a lot of it really is to try to figure out how to influence other females to buy a motorcycle, buy an ATV, and go riding. Sure, absolutely. And you know, it's one of those things, motocross and supercross, it's such a family sport. Yep. So when you can get the entire family, when you can get the moms and the sisters and stuff on a bike and out there yes. riding, they can enjoy it too, and it just further brings everybody together, which is, is awesome to see. Well, our track crew right now doing some work uh, on the track, getting set to go here for our women's WMX Moto number one. Race number 79 here coming up in just a few minutes. Some of the fastest women riders in the nation and outside the nation as well. Joining us here. Of course, in practice, we saw Hannah Hodges laying down the fast time. Hodges was almost a second and a half faster than any of the other women riders in those pr time practice sessions, however. Still a lot, uh, lot on the line here as they come back around for moto number one of our WMX coming up next. Race number 79 here from the Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross here at Daytona International Speedway in Daytona Beach, Florida. Oh, not, not HIV, I meant tonsillitis booster.
keep falling off. Thank you. And we welcome everyone from that uh, conference that we had, the uh, Women's in Racing Conference. And uh, we were talking about that just before we took our break, before WMX rolled into the gate. Almost 70 people involved with that kind of an open symposium, a forum from a variety of backgrounds. We had a lot of women racers in there, obviously, from a variety of different disciplines, both uh, motocross racers, GNCC racers, ATV racers. Uh, we had some of the flat track racers in there as well. Uh, but also a lot of the women executives from uh, both the promotional side or companies that are big involved with the industry as far as sponsorship is concerned. Uh, we had folks in the AMA. Uh, we mentioned Lisa Franz Kennedy. Big thanks to her for coming out uh, from Daytona. Uh, folks from Amsoil. A variety of women that are in positions of power in the industry getting together really under the guise of how can we make racing better for women, how can we make riding better for women, and how can we get more females on motorcycles and ATVs, both for fun and in competition. So I think MX Sports and Racer Productions will produce some notes out of that event now that it is complete. And we'll get an idea of what everyone was thinking and what some of the goals are for the future. Now these goals on the line are very simple. They have been well-defined for a long, long time. This is our first WMX points paying moto of the 2018 season. Let's bring up the revs and let's drop the gate. WMX is underway the first of two motos for them the motocross championship so they will run two motos today and a first turn pile up and we just looks like coming out front that is going to be the 30 of jarvis with that early hole shot several riders going down in the rhythm section there jarvis out front with the early lead but look there it's the 172 of hannah hodges you saw hodges go so fast in that time practice session earlier today and hodges now up into the number two spot jamie estadio on the 49 third and brinsley dias was fourth where's kylie fosnott our champion 
not the start she wanted. She's back. I'm looking around Mountain said sixth place, I'd say. So JJ, Jordan Jarvis trying to get away. Oh. And a mistake. Ah. Mash oh. get under control. No, it did cost her. She stalls on the inside. That's going to get the lead to Hodges. Astadio and Fosnot somehow has climbed all the way up to second. That was an impressive charge. Had her outside the top five of, as they came out of turn one. Well, yeah, and Jarvis went for that big triple on Max Hine. A lot of riders going double double here in the uh, WMX division. However, Jarvis went for the triple and it cost her there on lap one. So Hannah Hodges out front. And we, this is the last place that these girls want Hannah Hodges to be with the speed she was showing earlier today in time practice. It's going to be tough to catch up at this point. Oh, but Fosnock will take that challenge. That's what's going to make this so interesting. You already get an idea of how competitive she is because she's running that WMX number one plate. And then this first lap certainly showed something. She made about four passes to get the second. And now she's digging deep to try to track Hannah Hodges down. Should be a great race. Astadio coming through in third. Diaz fourth. Jarvis picks it up in fifth after the mistake. Bryce Martinez sixth. Ka Casey Belcher seventh. Emil Shade Lavelli is eighth. Shelby Rowland is ninth. Morgan Johnson tenth. Marissa Polchinek eleventh. Cheyenne McGuinn twelfth. Nicole. Wardern, that's your top 13. Back to your leader, Hannah Hodges. Now up to running the A-Class, by the way, also competing in the Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross down here. We saw her in B a year ago. Well, and actually today we saw Hannah Hodges and both Jordan Jarvis as well in the 250 A-Class. So Jarvis was out there uh, doing her thing. And yep. right now Jarvis sitting in the number five spot, I do believe. After that mishap on the first lap, Jarvis grabbing the whole shot, leading us out early on. Right now, it's Hannah Hodges in control of this one. Hannah Hodges out front with the number one. Up, Kylie Fashnot in the number two spot. They work their way through the sand once again. Coming around up and over the Rolex, double they go. Around the Daytona sweeper, up and over the Honda wall. Hannah this, Hodges. It's gonna be a battle of wills out here, Mikey, because a 107 lap for both Hodges and Fosnock. Fosnock three tenths of a second quicker, but she's three seconds down, so this one, could go down to the wire. Well, we got a good battle shaping up as well in third and fourth, just behind them. As you see them on the right side of your screen there, coming around into the sand section as well as Jarvis starting to close the gap up. But as you mentioned, there's a reason that Fashnot has that number one on her bike. And she's looking to defend that championship title right now and she's chasing down Hannah Hodges. Into the whoop section they go, Hodges out front here in this one. by Jordan Jarvis in the four spot. Those two riders are going to be pretty close right now. As your leaders working their way back around. And there you're looking at Jordan Jarvis, the number 30, working her way through the rhythm section as Jarvis has now moved up into the number three spot. Wow, what a comeback for Jarvis. She's going to have to wonder what could have happened had she not made that mistake while leading lap one. But remember, the two-moto format, she knows she's got to try to get herself in an overall position. Third is good, potentially good enough if she can go out try to win the second moto. I don't know if she'll have enough time to track down the lead duo. Maybe. She's definitely going to make a run for it. Right now, it is Hannah Hodges leading the way. If you're watching Jarvis on the number 30 here at racertv.com, hashtag at RCSX. Tell your friends to watch this one. Back to your leaders. Hannah Hodges on that Monster Team Green Kawasaki, the 172. Fosnock is slowly creeping in. This is unbelievable. Their last lap times were absolutely identical down to the thousandth of a second. They both ran a 104.79. Wow. This time around, Fosnock a 104.2 compared to a 104.7 for Hodges. So this time, Fosnock makes up a half second. And you can see, Mikey, she's as close as she has been at any point of this race. Well, Fosnock, yeah, I'm definitely making moves that they're working their way through traffic. Now, Hodges stretching out just a little bit there. And Fosnock uh, didn't quite get through lap traffic as easily as uh, Hodges did. Back around on the back side they go. Both those riders going for the double-double section. Jordan Jarvis still in that number three spot. And Jarvis with a 104 as well that last time by. So Jarvis running pretty consistent lap times with your front runner. Man, I love watching these battles. Be it in WMX or some of our women's amateur classes that we'll have out here or at the other big amateur events around the nation. This group is just so competitive. When you see someone like Fosnock back here in second and she's got a three second deficit, you know that she is going to go through a wall if she has to. She will go through a wall 
the proverbial sound, anything it takes to try to make up ground, she's going to be willing to do it. Same thing with Jarvis in third. Then it's Aspidio, who you're watching here on the screen on the number 49 KTM in fourth. Brinsley Dias in fifth. Such a competitive group. They pour the heart and soul into this one. They want to win. I don't want to say just as bad as the riders in the other classes. I think they actually want to win even worse. Well, and the other thing is you got to remember about this. For these guys, these girls, I should say, for these girls out there in this one, this is the start of their championships. This means not yep. just today's racing. This is not just about Daytona. Right. This is kicking off the season. Yep, so it's not just a uh, one race championship, but points are on the line to be the national champion in professional women's motocross in the United States in 2018. Fosnock trying to show why she has that number one plate. Working her way forward. Well, Hannah Hodge is out front right now. Still looking in control of this one. That's not the number two spot there. You're looking at the 49 of Ostadillo. Jamie Ostadillo on that KTM machine. Sitting in fourth, Brinsley Dias in the number five spot. Hodges, it, the lap traffic's gonna get tough out here. She just cleared two more. And Fosnock able to get by them as well. And you do see the lap traffic. It's a big factor in this. You have riders like Fosnott and uh, Hodges who are riding and training year round. Some of the riders in this class are certainly doing that. Others not doing that as much. Maybe they've been wintering in a place where they can't ride. Then you come down here to Florida and suddenly get to get on the motorcycle. So you get a fairly wide discrepancy, at l especially late in the moto. So lap traffic could play a factor. But right now, Hannah Hodges has been aces on that 172. Fosnock has been trying and trying. Last time around though, she went into the 105s. Fosnock, Hodges stayed in the 104s. Fosnock had worked so hard to take the gap from about three and a half seconds down to two and a half seconds. And now it's back to 3.1. There she is on the number one. Not quite able, all that work she did, not quite able to keep it there. And she's gonna have to go back to work. Fosnock, your champion, backed by Empowered Racing, Fox Racing, Maxima, Mika Metals, Twin Air, Nihilo Concepts, Dunlop Tires, and Cherubitz, and Braking. Well, Jason, as you said, with the track changing lap after lap and a longer race for these girls, it's gonna take its toll on them. It's taking its toll on all these riders in the mains today. So these riders right now, the stamina and the training off the track in the middle of the week, that's gonna play a big part in this one as well. Yeah, they've gotta have logged some long motos to get ready for this one. And remember, they have a fairly quick turnaround. We started this first photo a little bit later because of that women in racing form. We wanted to get a chance for the WMX riders to go there as well as riders from all sorts of different uh, racing disciplines that would be competing down here at Daytona. But this photo will be over around 2.45, and they've got to be back for the next one at 4.45. So only a two-hour break, and they are leaving it all on the track right now. Fosnock really closed in. She dipped into the 103s. She just turned in her best lap, and now with a lap to go, she has Hodges in her sights. Does she have a spot on the track picked out to make a pass? I tell you what, Jason, let's keep an eye on this back straight away. I got a feeling Fosnock may try to go for that triple section unless lap traffic gets in the way of this one as Hodges has not done that triple section all weekend long that I've seen, but I do believe Fajnot has done it in practice. So here they come into the triple, we'll see what she goes for. Nope, goes for the double-double. Didn't do it, now she's gonna oh. try outside. Hodges on the inside, Fajnot running out of time. We've got two turns left, a left, and a long straightaway and a right, and don't forget those whoops before the finish. That could tell the story, Fosnock is right there. It's gonna come down to the wire in our WMX moto. Fosnock still trying, outside line through these whoops. She's gonna get the drive. Will it be enough to overcome Hodges? Wheel to wheel to the finish. Hodges holds on for the moto win. Woo, what a race. What a race right there, Hannah Hodges. Taking moto number one. As you said earlier though, it's a two moto format for these girls. So now Fajnot has set herself up. If she can go two one, she'll take the overall today. So Hannah Hodges not in the clear just yet with that moto one win. Although a great start here for WMX race here at Daytona. Absolutely, we got another motor to settle it between these two. That's going to be fantastic. Both of them gave it everything they had. Fosnock really dug deep to get that 103 with two laps to go, and that got her to the rear wheel of Hodges. Hodges did not make the key mistake. She kept her cool. She wins the moto. 
And don't forget Jordan Jarvis, who was leading earlier. We know she has the speed to run with those two. And despite the uh, error, the, the stall, she was able to climb back up to third. So she's not out of this. Top five's on your screen here at racertv.com. Astadio fourth, and Brinsley Diaz fifth. That was some great racing. Yeah, and I think, like you say, you know, if you keep all three of those top three riders together, off the start, everybody keeps going, nobody goes down, nobody kills the bike. I think Moto2 is going to be a really exciting one to wow. finish out uh, the RCSX here this weekend. Could not agree more. They put on a real show. And like we said, they'll be back in two hours, so not a lot of recovery time. And now the track is rough. Sunshine's out, a little bit warmer than it was. So it'll be a real test of fitness for the WMX in Moto2, which will be coming up at 445 Eastern. Now we move on to 450B, and we'll crown a champion there. Jesse Flock won the heat race in 450B. But that only counts for gate pick. It's a super cross format. Let's go racing in the main. Revs are up, and gate is. It's not down. This is the longest <laughs> gate hold I've ever seen. Something has happened. <laughs> I don't think they're well, holding the gate no, I, 17 I, seconds for the B class. No, I don't think so. As these guys are prepared to do this once again, I tell you what, we've got some uh, heavy hitters in this one for sure. We saw a lot of these riders in the heat races battling bar to bar, and they're about to do it again here in the main event. Not sure. They had to test the gate, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the nerves went up. They're going to come back down. You're right back up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And also, uh, I was hearing some riders talk about even on the pro side, um, there is nothing that heats up a bike, especially a four-stroke, that revving that thing to eight, 9,000 RPM with, with the, the clutch pulled, yep. pulled in, right. Exactly. So, let's see how these engines perform. Yeah, I was talking to Vince Freezy after the race on uh, Saturday. His bike overheated because of the start, and then he fell over in a sand turn and packed the radiators with sand, and he said that was it. The bike was hot, it never cooled off. Engine was cooked. Let's try it again. Revs are up, and will it happen? The gate is down in 450B. End of the first turn they go. We'll see who grabs that whole shot here in this one. Oh, couple right. Oh, the inside line riders going down here in this one. Here's Browns, one of them on a 63, one of the favorites down. Wow, so it's going to be the 138 of Austin Kozat out of High Spring, Florida, rides that MX for Jesus. Fox Dunlop starting Suzuki out front, leading the way. The 211, Hardy Munoz in that number two spot as they come around here for lap number one. So Kozad trying to set sail. Oh no, he's got company. Looks to be a great race shaping up here. Let's see what happens in this triple section. There it is, you see the big triple pulled out. Munoz not scared, goes around the outside, takes the lead. Well, Munoz right there was also able to make that inside even though he made the triple section, which helped him tremendously there as they come back around through this rhythm section. You see they'll come around to the whoop section now. And Kozat moving the wrong direction as he drops back to the number three spot now. Yeah, that was a great start, but these kids are sprinting hard early. One lap of the books in 450B. Hardy Munoz is gonna try to run and hide. Here they come back around through that rhythm section in the center of the track right now, the 211. Out front, Hardy Munoz. Out front, leading the way through the sand they go. The number seven is Jeff Sinison in the number two spot now. Kozad in the three spot. He's got pressure coming up from Zendaris. In the number 77, Cowie Rider out of Texas. There you see Kozad up and over the wall jump. He goes to Zendaris right there behind him. A great train of riders behind them here in the 450 B class. Jesse Flock won the heat race. Starts this one in fifth, but watch out. He has been turning some burner lap times lately, Ooh. and that's him. Trying to, he's got these behind Zendaris. See that 77 tripling in? That's Zendaris in fourth. And Flock right behind him in fifth. Zendaris, not done. Trying to get inside Austin Kozad and take over third place. And Jason, I've just received word, just a reminder. With this high wind advisory, please make sure out there in the pits, guys, make sure you tie down those easy ups. All those tents and easy ups, guys, make sure you got them tied down and secured. We are in a high wind advisory here. We got some tents flying around out there, and that is the last thing we want. Third place battle is on right now. That looks like a 67 a flock, making it happen. And Flock is dealing with Cody Groves. That's actually fifth place battle. Cody Groves in the Suzuki number 15. 
right there. So let's keep an eye on these two and see if they can make a run for the podium. Block and Gross. They've actually flip-flopped it a couple of times in this one. Wow. And I tell you what, right there, the 67 of Flock, he was scrubbing through that double-double section. And you said it early, you called it. Flock is going to be one to watch here in this one. Then we've got Bailey Breen behind them in eighth. Here we go, Dirko van der Westeisen is ninth, and Sean Calderon is heaven, is heaven, he's seventh, <laughs> tenth. I don't know why, I just want to say he's in seventh place so bad. I must have money on that. Well, here comes your leaders working their way back around right now, the number 70. Where did Simmonson get Munoz? I was watching that battle for third, fourth, fifth. Simmonson now in the lead. Simmonson out front, Munoz in the number two spot. Zindaris in the three spot. Kozad still sitting in the number four spot here. This one with Fred Corley in the third and four, five spot. Digging deep. Trouble there, I thought that was one of our leaders. Yeah. These guys are digging deep right now. The gaps are a little bit spread out. Their leaders are together. Simmonson and Munoz, but then you've got two seconds back to Zindaris, and then another second and a half back to Kozad in fourth, and then another second and a half back to Greg Corley. So if anyone's going to close the gap from third, fourth, or fifth, they've got to make it happen right now. There's Kozad in the sixth place spot on the 138. No, I think he's been shuffled back. Flock's gotten around him. There's Flock 67. Yeah, they've gotten around Kozad. And as they work their way back around onto the back side of the track right now, your leader, Simonson, trying to stretch out his lead a little bit on Munoz. And one rider, like you said earlier on, that went down off the start that we expected to be up front with the 60 team of Pierce Brown. Pierce Brown, obviously, he was putting in the pass lap for a but the main event, Start is super important, and it's super important that you stay up on the start. And unfortunately, Pierce Brown, one of those riders, got tangled up right now. There's Hardy Munoz. On the 211. And there's the 32 as well of Mason Meyer out of Spring Church, Pennsylvania, working his way around the track. All to the back side of the track, the 211 machine right there. Artie Munoz in that number two spot. He is chasing down your leader. Looking at the gap between them right now, looks like just over two seconds. As Munoz working his way through that rhythm section, coming back around onto the front straight now. Your leader, the 70 of Devin Simons, the 77 of Devin Zindaris. Zindaris sitting in third right now. He's got company coming up behind him, though. The 34 at Gurley. Trying to close that gap up on him through the whoop section. They go now. White flag is out here in this one. And Devin Simons is looking for a championship win. There he goes, the 70, working his way around. Side there, you see the 34 machine of Brett Gurley. Brett going to be in that number four spot right now, chasing down Zindara. Here in our 450B main event. Here's the green car by Amateur Supercross in Daytona. Number 63 at Falcon by our announcer group there. With no front number plate, but back on the screen, we've got the number 70 out front. Out of Max, North Carolina, right at SOB of Max, Yamaha, Bloomington, Real Inc. Graphics, Race Tech, William Motor Works. CSCI Exteriors Torque Performance checkered flag right there. The 70 of Devin Simonson taking the win and the championship title here. Simonson, your 450B champion. Here from the Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross at Daytona International Speedway. And he is all smiles as he comes off the track there. Number 70 taking the win here in this one. Hardy Munez going to take second. 
Devin Zitar is going to round out your top three. Here for 450B, there's your top five on the screen. Devin Simonson first, Hardy Munoz second, Devin Zindar is third, Red Curly fourth, and Cody Groves moves his way up to the number five spot to finish out the top five there for 450B. Now we get set to go, race number 81. On the line here for 81, it's gonna be our mini senior two class, 12 to 14 year old. 33 riders coming up here in this next one. The sun is shining, the wind is blowing, and we are ready to go racing here in Daytona, looking for that gate to drop. Race number 81. Our mini senior two riders, all lines on the gate, gate drops, we're off and underway. Into the first turn. We'll see who comes out on top here in this one as they make their way around. Looks like a fairly clean start early on. And it's gonna be right out of the gate through the rhythm section. Wow, look at the 199. Oh, several riders Big going crash. down hard. The 199 to rider DeFrancesco, though, stays out of all that, and he is out front leading the way with number 15 of Gavin Towers in second. Rider DeFrancesco out front early on in this one. DeFrancesco, he has been on fire all weekend long throughout qualifying and practice, and now he's once again out front leading the way here in this one. Rider D trying to get away right now. There was some real fisticuffs there off the start to try to thread the needle and get to that number one spot, but he made it work. Indeed he did. And then right behind him is going to be the 15 of Gavin Tower. Yep. The 34 going to be in the number three spot right now. That's going to be Bryce Shelley. But Shelley's got company from the 37 to Chase Prince. Prince trying to make a move now. Take those caps up in there with him as well. They come around to the front side. And the medical flag waving here in this one that rhythm section they got to roll their way through that section get a roll 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 your jumps that's right say roll 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 your jumps and rolling right now is De Francesco he's pulled away Gavin Towers let's see what he can do dealing with some pressure from that number 34 Bryce Shelley well there's a rider right there you can't count out as well as the 411 of Nicholas Romano Romano of course team green teammate with your leader, Ryder DeFrancesco. And look at Ryder right now, stretching out his lead already here in this one. The 15 of Gavin Towers in that number two spot. The 34 of Bryce Shelley out of Telford, Pennsylvania. Sitting in third. It's a good battle right now. Just as soon as Shelley got to the rear wheel of Towers, Towers bending him off for the moment. See if those outside lines start to work their way in. You were kind of theorizing earlier when we had Ricky Carmichael in the booth that maybe they would get to a point where those outsides become the preferred line. Earlier in the day, for certain, the inside was better. No, yeah, especially noticed, on the smaller bikes, too. I was going to say, I yeah. noticed it with the smaller bikes starting yep. out was uh, throughout the heat races, the inside lines became so rough and so gnarly and so deep that it was actually faster and safer more than anything. Yes. Maybe not even faster, maybe safer is a better word for it, to take the outside. So we'll see if that plays a part here in this one. And finally on the radar, the 411 of uh, Nick Romano. Everybody loves Nick Romano in fourth. And then it's Nick Caps. Yeah, 38 special in fifth. Chase Prince is sixth, Miles Gilmore seventh, Preston Bass Flute eighth, Derek Leatherman ninth, and Trip Rex wrote round out your top 10 of Mini Senior. Still watching this battle. 15 of Gavin Towers and Bryce Shelley right by. Oh, Shelley stepping it sideways. Here comes Romano. From fourth. Hey, Deborah. <laughs> On the inside. Shelley leaves the door open. They almost come together. Oh, oh getting Romano. Yeah. Shelley both getting Ooh. sideways. Getting sideways there in the whoop section. They come back around right now. A good three-way battle here between these three riders. They come back into that center rhythm section. Almost medic flags are no longer waving. You can see him airing it out there. The 34 jumping to the inside, coming out of the sand section. He got towers, but then he oh, tips over. Shelly goes down. So Shelly had second place for about eight seconds, like the rodeo style. Did the big jump, and then the next corner he goes down. Ah, what a bummer. A little trouble getting the bike going, it looks like, as well. So Gavin Towers back up to the number two spot. Nicholas Romano up into third now. That's going to be Chase Prince up into the fourth spot. 
Well, that was wild right there, a three-rider battle for second. Gavin Towers sees one rider go down, but guess what? He's still got his hands full. Nick Romano, Team Green Kawasaki man, out of New York, trying to work his way to the inside. Towers leaves it open. Romano says, thank you, and takes over second place. So good job, Nick Romano, from fourth to third to second. Referring to those outside and inside lines, I would say, Jason, the outside line is not yet going to be the prime line. He's not that close. No, definitely. We just saw that. <laughs> yeah. Romano making it happen. Is there time for Romano to go after Ryder D? I don't think so. There are 13 seconds. Wow, how did Di Francesco open up that big a lead? And big outside line for Romano, and it almost got paid back. 15 of Towers almost got him. Ryder Di Francesco right now, what was his last lap there? It looks like a 105. Or Di Francesco, so about a second faster than second place last time around. Yeah, as you can see, that battle right now, second and third, working their way through the sand right now. Romano starting to stretch down just a bit on Towers. Now he's in the number three spot. Prince in the fourth spot. And Post Plug working his way up to the top five now. Love hearing these bikes out here. You get the old two-stroke sound. You hear them clutching the bikes out of the corner. And we we get the smell of premix right here in our office today. You folks can watch in your office. Unfortunately, we cannot pipe the smell in. We have not figured that technology out yet. I wish we could. Working on it. Love the smell of premix in the morning. And there's Romano. Hard fought run to get up to second. But that's probably out as far as he can get. As Ryder D. Francesco is gone, they've got a whole plate they got a 30 foot long Jimmy John's sandwich waiting for him I mean all you can eat Jimmy John's lunch buffet and he's in a rush to get to that freaky fast is the number 199 of Ryder De Francesco and I think it's gonna be there he is this should be the final corner here silent a little bit there wheeling it through that rhythm section one final time through the whoop section here for the 199 checkered flag and it goes to Di Francesco. I believe that's the second win, unless I miss one. Might be third, second title for him today. Yes, indeed. As a matter of fact, he ran the first one in the rain this morning. So what a change for Ryder. Right. He goes out in the rain, in the mud this morning, and now he's out here in sunny skies with the wind blowing. Excellent point. The versatility shown. Nick Romano, a great run for second. Gavin Towers will hang on for third. Preston Bates Blue and Miles Gilmore round out the top five. Chase Prince sixth. Thomas Welch seventh. Looking for the 38 special of Nick Caps to take eighth. He does. Noah Stevens is ninth. And top ten the previous lap. Yes, and he holds on, take the checkered flag. Derek Leatherman. Got that multi-tool in his pocket. Derek Leatherman taking over tenth. And Patrick Murphy will round out the top 11. So that was mini senior two, 12 to 14. Well, there you see your top five. As Jason Wygant just read to you there, Ryder De Francesco taking his second title here at the Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross here in Daytona. As we get set to go now for our 125 two-stroke 12 plus class. This race coming up here, we got 34 entries coming up in the next one. Should be another great race to watch. Some big name riders in this one as well. Yeah, 125, 12, 12 plus, pretty much an open division. Obviously not as far as bike size is concerned, but rider skill, 12 plus will have a variety of ages and experience levels. Cullen Park took a heat race win. Caden Niffing second. Those are two very well-known names in a variety of amateur classes. So they decided to do some of their battles here in 125, 12, 12 plus, as well as Aiden Tierro. Christian Dresser, they went 1-2 in the other heat race. Gage Linville had a third in a heat race. So those are some of the names to watch. Trevor Bailey, third in the other heat. And you can hear the 125s coming to life. Revs are up, Gate is down. And they in the first turn, we'll see who comes out on top here in this one. Eight zero. Going to have to be my pick probably in this one. He is sitting in the number two spot right yep. now. That's going to be, I believe, the 402 just ahead of him there. Linville. 
Lynn Bell with that early hole shot. And now the 85 jumping up into the number two spot of Cade Nippich. Well, we got three of the big stars of this division. One, two, and three. So this is going to be a great race to watch. As they head down the back stretch here for lap number one. Look at this. Already some side-by-side -side battles here in this one. Out front leading the way at the 402. Cade Linville out of Lake Park, Georgia. He's working his way through the sand section right now. He's got behind him there. In that number two spot, the 85 of Cade Knifing out of Escondido, California. Sponsored by Monster, Seven Bell, Dirt Shark, Dunlop, Garnet, and FMF. First, second, and third, of course, it's the 587. It's going to be Aiden Piero. He's in that number three spot right now as he's working his way up. I tell you what, the 402 of Gage Linville, he is on a move here this way. Another rider to look at here, the 43 of Cullen Park. As Jason said, a heat race winner. He is now all the way up to third as he gets by A.D. Piero. But now Cullen Park working his way up into the number three spot. Oh, and the 14 of Brady Gilmore. Now to Cairo, Georgia going down. Your leaders on the back side of the track. They go right now, the 402. Out front here in this one, Gage Linville. Trying to hold off the 85, chasing it down. In the number two spot of Jason Heinzig. Gage here was the number three spot, but now he's in 43. On Cullen Park. And this is the way back through the left section there, you see. Coming on to the front side now. Gage Linville out front, knifing in the number two spot. Those two riders starting to stretch out just a little bit on Park in third. Through the center rhythm section. And look at the 85 right now of Cage Knifey on that 7 KTM. A BTO sports back ride as he worked his way around. Little mistake there for the 402 of Cage Linville. It's an awesome race. Niffing now trying to put the knife to him and slice his way into the lead. Linville almost threw it all the way. Top four are all in, a, all in the same spot. Cullen Park third. Aiden Tierro right there. And then Chase Yen for fifth. This is a great battle, Mikey. Tripling around the outside is wow. Tierro. There you see Tierro trying to carry his feet into the sand section. He goes outside to inside. Wow! What a move! And Tierro trying to make the pass. Unable to make it stick, though, at the 43. Holds on. That's going to be Cohen Park. Holds on to the number three spot here in this one. And Tierro in the number four spot. Man, that was impressive going from outside to inside. But for all of that, he still couldn't make the pass on Cullen Park. As we watch the leaders now, Nipping taking another shot at Gage Linville. Got Peyton Nipping right now as they work their way back around onto the back side of the track. He is going to be all over the back door of your leader right now, Linville. Followed up by Cullen Park and Aiden Hero. Chase Yenser now. Wrap that your top five here this one. Coming back up to the sand section, Gage Linville. He has got roughly less than a second, it looks like. Over Nipping in the number two spot. Yeah, Nipping's still right there to put some heat on. Keeping the pressure on your leader. You're watching Cullen Park on your screen right now in third with Sierra right behind him. Man, you know the 125s are going to give you great racing, and that's exactly what they've done. Cullen Park. Trying to avoid the big mistake and not hand that spot over. What happened to Tierro here? He lost his ground. He oh. must have made the error. Yes. As they work their way back around right now, so Tierro dropping back just a bit here, this one. And your leaders starting to work their way into a bit of traffic. And as you mentioned at the start of this one, this is an open class as far as skill level. So the difference between first and 34th right. A big gap between those guys. Yeah, so that means lap traffic is going to be a big factor in this one. Right now, Linville's lead is one second over Caden Nipping. Oh, what did you say about the uh, skill level difference? Look at the lap traffic now. Yeah, absolutely. Now, oh, we got a rider down there, and that's going to shake things up a bit, too. Linville coming around right now, Nipping in the number two spot. Park in that three spot. Gero still in fourth, Gensler in fifth. Gage Linville, 
trying to lock this one down on the 402. Right behind him, I mean right behind him, is second place Caden Nipping. That's the two KTM oh. riders. And Sergio Nipping goes wide. Is he gonna make the pass? Is he make it happen? Nipping shuts the door and gets it done. Wow. Well, Jason, we saw so many times that first place spot be just handed over with an outside line through the sand section and once again. But I tell you what, Linville right now, he's not giving up here in this one. No, he's right there on the inside. Nipping oh. shuts the door and oh, Jades Linville loses the front and goes down. Man, Linville led the majority of this one. Now he's going to finish way back. Amazing how quickly fortunes could change. Wow. What a race right here for the 85 of Kate Nipping. He's still got, and there it is, the checkered flag, and he is pumped. Kate Nipping coming around for the win and the championship title here. Poland Park going to be coming around, I do believe, for that second place spot. We'll see if Linville can get back up. And on that bike there, you see the 85 taking home a big win for him right there in our 125 12-1. Well, Nipping had to work for it, sharpened his skills up, knifed his way to the front, sliced up the competition, and took a cut of the big trophy. He's going to be headed to the podium with the win. There's your top five leaderboard. Park inherits second due to that late crash. Wow, I, don't, I cannot believe Linville was able to hold on for third. Kind of got stuck in an awkward position and lost a lot of time when he tipped over. Slade Smith fourth and, fourth and Chase Yenser fifth. So Tierro, not sure what happened to Tierro in the second half of that race, but he ends up back in sixth after running up front early. That's gonna do it for your 125 class. And now you wanna hear some thunder? Open Pro Sport is up next. Jason, I got a feeling, obviously these are some of the fastest guys here this weekend. I think they are going to prove it here in this main event. All these riders getting set to go. 35 riders on the line here in this one. Let's check out your results from the heat races in Open Pro Sport. Garrett Marchbanks, the man child, taking the heat race win. Probably not a surprise there. So who's gonna be taking the swing at him? Carter Hall Payne, he'll be one to watch. And Tanner Stack, who finished second and third in the heat. Here we go. As they work their way to the first turn, we'll see. Who's it gonna be coming out on this one? That's gonna be the 510 and the 512. Side by side right there. That's Seth Hamaker on the Kawasaki. No, but getting around him is Mitchell Falk. Yes, for Mitchell Falk taking over the lead early on here in this one. Derek Drake in the 33 in the hunt as well. So that's six or seven big names that we've given you. But right now, leading the way, Mitchell Falk on the Troy Lee Designs KTM and already starting to pull Hamaker a little bit. Wow, tripling wow. big time. It's, can he make the corner? March Banks. Well, he made the triple. He made the corner, but he didn't make the pass. No, he did not. He was coming in hot there on that one, though. As March Banks up, whoa, March Banks. Where is he finding these jumps? I have no idea, but he's making all new lines here. And this one's the number 17 of Carter Halpin. It's up in the mix now as well. And Halpin looks to be trying to get by there. Here they come back. Oh, Ooh, tough block kicked out by the 17 of Halpin. So all kinds of cool lines and combinations for March Banks didn't work for him, though. Meanwhile, Mitchell Falk trying to get away. Seth Hamaker in second, the winner of the Monster Energy Cup. Amateur All-Star Race, then it's Hall Payne, then it's March Banks. Then the 58 of Justin Rodbell, James Harrington, Wyatt Lyonsmith, Jordan Bailey, Marcus Phelps ninth, and Corey Karsten, top 10. Some great racing here, but in control at the moment is Mitchell Falk. Well, Falk is out front leading the way here in this one, but his teammate, Derek Drake, not so lucky here in this one, and he is buried in the pack right now. Drake, another one. Really thought we'd see up there in the front of the pack early on in this, but not quite the start he was looking for. There's the 5'10 right there of Seth Hamaker. Hamaker working his way back into the infield right now, trying to chase down your leader of Falk. Mitchell Falk right now looking super comfortable out there aboard that Twin Designs KTM. He's got the monster energy Kawasaki right there behind him, the 5'10. Diving at the inside, sitting in the number three spot, still going to be Halpain. On the 17 machine. 182 here, Mark Banks. And the number four spot followed up by.
by the 133 of Jordan Bailey. Out of Orlando right now, Fox Rangers beat Husqvarna. Man, this is called over pro sport, but I want to call it the all-star class because we've got a ton of the biggest names in amateur racing all locked up here. Don't even count out sixth place Jordan Bailey. He could get in on this one as well. It's going to be awesome. As this photo develops, what can Hamaker come up with in second? What about the 17 of Hall Payne in third? What about Marshbanks in fourth? Marshbanks to the inside on Hall Payne. They have had a heck of a battle for third. Well, indeed they have, and as you can see, Marshbanks getting a little bit sideways through the whoop section there, chasing down the number 17 of Hall Payne. Hall Payne looking pretty smooth here. He had a little bit of uh, a run in there with the tough blocks early on, but he has put that mistake behind him and is moving forward in this one. Mitchell Hall out front still. The 510 in that number two spot of Hamaker. And now lap traffic is starting to play a part already early on here in this one. Just saw Jordan Bailey in six come by. Actually up to fifth. He's gotten around Rod Bell. Do not count him out on that Rockstar Husky. He's closing in on that top four. We're watching right now. Your leader is Paul. Second place is Hamaker. And then these two, Hal Payne and Marchbanks, have been battling about this close the entire race. Marchbanks to the inside. Well, there may be one of those times where the outside actually proved to really be a little right. bit faster. I agree. And there is Bailey on the Husqvarna. If those two maybe slow each other up in a little bit of a battle, Hal Payne and Marchbanks, Bailey would love to join right in. And this is the future right here, the immediate future. You might see any of these riders as professionals soon. We're talking Falk, Hamaker, Hal Payne, Marchbanks, Bailey. They've got the factory amateur rides Whoa. right now. Mitchell Falk goes off the track, and he has to come back on. He misses the back wall jump. So Falk making a big mistake right there. As Falk out front leading the way, Seth Hamaker in the number two spot, Al Payne in the three spot, Mark Bates in the four, Jordan Bailey in the number five spot. big collision between those two riders on the front stretch right there. That's going to shake things up a bit in this one. Wow. You can see how Payne was not happy. Mitchell Falk still going to be out front leading the way as he works his way onto the back side of the track now. Going into the triple section, Seth Hammaker in that number two spot. Jordan Bailey still in third. Now Tanner stack up in the number four spot. Justin Rodbell in the number five. Really impressed that brief mistake by Falk. He didn't lose much time. And otherwise, he has been able to march away from this stacked open pro sport class. Hamaker is no slouch back there, but has not been able to keep up. Yeah, we'll show replay that, absolutely. Has some crazy action. Let's check it out. March Banks, Hal Payne. Oh, wow. Jeez. An aggressive move right there by March Banks. He came oh. into that corner hard. As you can see right here, Hal Payne. Not, not happy oh, about that. Oh, oh, oh. Not at all. He took the opportunity to say some words there to Marchbanks. There was no room, and Marchbanks just absolutely sent it out of the inside of that corner, and that was a hard collision. Marchbanks looks to have gotten the worst of it, and now they've cost themselves. They could have been battling for a podium. Well, they were battling for a podium. One of them was going to get it, and now it won't happen for either. Meanwhile, back to your leader, 612, Mitchell Falk, KTM rider came through the Orange Brigade program, now locked and loaded with Troy Lee Designs KTM. Well, he's looking good out front right now with still several laps left to go here in this one. Man. What was the G-force on that hit from the inside with March Banks on Hal Payne from the man-child trying to move Hal Payne out of the way? Hey, don't count out Seth Hamaker. Somehow in this lap traffic, he has managed to slither through and get a little bit closer to your leader. Jordan Bailey still third. Tanner stacked fourth. 
White line, Smith fifth. Justin Rodbell sixth. Kristen Lane seventh. Luke Neese, Carter Halpain, and Marcus Phelps round out the top ten. As they're working their way around right now, Mitchell Falk still out front. Jordan Bailey putting in a fantastic ride here in this one. Sitting in that third place spot on the 133 machine. There you see him headed into the stand section right now. Stanner stacking into the four spot. On your screen, we're watching the 133 of Jordan Bailey. Started about seven, worked his way up, but not gonna have time here. He's eight seconds behind. Your leader, Falk, at about five seconds behind second place, Hamaker. Number seven on the Suzuki. Don't get excited, folks. That is not James Stewart. No, it's not James Stewart. That's uh, Austin Barons from Florida, New York. From Florida, New York. How about that? I, a guy's so confused. He, he thought this was his home race. <laughs> he is from Florida. Poor guy. Had to drive 30 hours to get to his home race in Florida. So it has settled down. An intense battle early. But Mitchell Falk taking on all comers. Out of Costa Mesa, California, JTM has had this kid locked into their program for quite some time. Falk, I believe, lost some time last year, got hurt doing some of the arena cross races. Back in a big way here one year later, and Mitchell Falk gets it done, wins open pro sport. And he had to deal with everyone in that one, and he put it to them on that 6-12. Seth Hamaker finishes up in second on the 5-10, but Mitchell Falk. Let's have a big round of applause for him. Great run and some great sportsmanship from Hamaker in second. Well, both those young riders, this is not going to be the last we hear of their name, and I got a feeling instead of on uh, Monday afternoon, we're going to start seeing them before too long on Saturday night for the, uh, the pro Daytona Supercross. That's for sure. It won't be long before we see those guys out on the track battling with the pros. Excellent point. Yeah, it could be uh, as early as next season, I would bet, for some of these riders in the A classes. Bailey third, Stack fourth, Tristan Lane fifth, Wyatt Lyons Smith sixth, Justin Robell seventh, Luke Neese eighth, Carter Hall Payne ninth, and Cameron Fosnock rounds out the top ten. We've got some track maintenance coming. We'll be right back.
to hear this one. As our main event here for our little guys working their way around here on lap number one. Track maintenance is complete and we are back racing. Our 65 CC 711 riders coming out of the gate here in this one. Early on that hold shot, gonna go to the 482 as he's working his way around, airing it out, up and over the big Rolex double. Leading the way here in this one early on. That's gonna be Luke Fowler out of Midland, Pennsylvania. Down the back stretch they go right now here in this one. This is main event number 84. Race 84 on the track, race number 85. Gonna be on the line now along with 86 in staging, 86 and 87 in staging. So these are 65, 711 riders working their way through the sand section right now. Out front, the 462 machine leading the way here in this one. Into the rhythm section he goes in that number two spot, gonna be the 37 just behind him there. That's gonna be landed peppered all the way from Alaska. So peppered making a long trip and right now looking for a podium, but the 206 jumping up into the number two spot now, the 206 of Logan Best out of Northport, Florida. As they come around lap number one, green flag flies. Here they come back into the center section right now. First, second, and third all going to be right there together here in our 65cc 7 to 11 class. Back around into the rhythm section. Fowler out front. Best in second. Pepper did third. Look at this side by side battle now here. As the 206 trying to go to the inside on Fowler, and he makes the move now. So Logan Best up into the lead now. Luke Fowler dropping back to second. Landon Pepper to the number three spot as they work their way onto the left hand side of the track. Down the back section they go. Landon Peppard all the way from Alaska, sitting in that third place spot, first and second. Gonna be right there together. I tell you what though, the 206 of Logan Best, he is trying to stretch out his lead here in this one just a bit. He's out there on that Triangle Cycles KTM machine. All three riders that look taking the inside line now. We've got our fourth place rider jumping up in the mix. That's gonna be Diesel Thomas, the 524 KTM rider. As they come back through here, you see your leader putting a little bit of gap on second and third. Good battle for second and third, the 462. Into the whoop section they go. Coming around for lap number two here in this one. The 37 of Pepper trying to close the gap up at 37 right now. Pepper to the inside, oh, hanging off the back of the bike right there. What a save for Pepper through that rhythm section. And now as they start coming back around into the sand section, the 524 sneaking up in there as well. Diesel Thomas trying to make his move. Not far back from Diesel Thomas could be the 300 to Drew Adams. We saw Adams go down hard early on in a moto in the sand section. Good to see him back out there as well. Logan Best out front leading the way here in this one. Luke Fowler in the number two spot, Landon Pepper in the number three spot. As they head down the back stretch into that double double, these riders starting to take that inside line. We were all talking about earlier the inside line started to get deeper and deeper, but they did a little bit of track maintenance before this one. These riders taking full advantage of that as they work their way around. Right now, you're still looking at the 462 of Luke Bowser in the second place spot with Landon Pepper right there behind him in the three. And look at this trying to make a move there, Diesel Thomas. Oh, Peppard makes a mistake in the whoop section now. Diesel Thomas trying to make his move by him. As they're working their way back around to the front side now. Into the rhythm section once again. The 462 of Luke Bowser in the second place spot. Meanwhile, Logan Best has no idea what's going on behind him as he is starting to stretch out that lead with a 3.2 second lead now. Up and over the Rolex double they go. Luke Bowser in second, Diesel Thomas in third, Landon Peppard in fourth. Drew Adams in fifth, Dylan Pleck in the number six spot, followed by Johnson, Richards, Marinche, Mullen, Wheaton, Burge, Locker, Procure, and Golipski. Your top 15 here in this one. Well, I'll tell you, Fowler has got his hands full as Thomas and Landed Peppard and Drew Adams all right there knocking on the door. We're talking about a second and a half, maybe separating those three riders as they do battle for that number two spot. This one is another great one, and this one is a big, uh, uh, Sigh of relief, I think, for Logan Best because this battle that's going on behind him might uh, afford him the opportunity to not have a lot of pressure toward the end of this moto. Well, you're right, Rodney. As we were talking about, 
as these riders start battling, they start slowing down a bit as they're playing defense and offense and back and forth they go. Meanwhile, Logan Best has nothing to worry about out front here in this one so far as he is out to a 3.2 second lead. Diesel Thomas up at the number two spot now. Landon Pepper in the three spot. So little changes there. Actually, Teasel Thomas in the number two spot. Bowser drops the third. Peppard is uh, fourth. And look at this. Dylan Blecka, who has actually turned uh, one of the fastest lap times in this moto, is moving up through the pack. I saw him move up from seventh now into the number five spot as we have lap four in the history books. So a five-lap race. So we're on our final lap right here. So he's trying to get some stuff done. Well, again, like you say, now the new fast lap, it looks like they're going to be Diesel Thomas with that 111 point. Wow. Nine. Absolutely that, laying it down. Yes, uh, that's amazing how fast that these kids can make these machines go. And Thomas, under that pressure, well, he's not so much now. He stretched it out nearly two seconds after getting past Bowser for that number two spot. Well, and here they come around one final time through the turn here. You're looking at the number 206 of Logan Best out of Northport, Florida. One final time through the whoop section. He's looking for that checkered flag. And he's got it. Your wow. winner, Logan Best. Oh, what a wild ride right there for the rider next to him. That's Diesel <laughs> Thomas. Diesel yeah. had closed into within one-tenth of a second at the checker flag right there. I saw it in the waning moments going down through that stretch, that whoop section there. And wow, man, Diesel was putting the pressure on. That last lap time of his was a 112.8. Logan Best a 115.2. I tell you, wow. if he'd have went a 115.3, it would have been a whole different finish. Well, yeah, look at the gap they're showing here on timing and scoring 114 thousandths of a second. That's, split, that's splitting hairs bikes. right there. Yeah. Oh, wow, <laughs> that's a matter of where they put the transponder on those bikes, that's for sure. As Logan Best takes the championship win there in 65, 7, 11, Diesel Thomas second, Luke Bowser taking third. Rodney, coming up next, we got race number 85. That is going to be our Super Mini 2, 13 to 16. Main event. A whole stack of talented young riders once again here coming up in this next one. Well, these are certainly some of the uh, funner classes to, to watch, I think. These, these classes give you a lot to be excited about as far as the future of motocross and supercross racing because these kids on the verge of uh, making that big step up usually always seem to put a lot of uh, effort out. And I'll tell you, Nathaniel Thrasher is going to be one to watch in this one again. It's the 428 out of Livingston, Tennessee. Comes into this one as uh, the, the uh, winner of the, I guess you would call it heat race coming into this. Uh, basically qualifying race, qualified them for gate positions. And then 32, Kate Namorine, he finished second. Chase Prince, the 37 from Petersburg, Tennessee, he finished third in the qualifying race and right now the gates down and these riders sifting through turn number one well and as they come through that rhythm section it looks like out front rodney that's going to be the 32 i do believe of caden amarine out of great bend kansas grabbing the early hole shot here in this one with a 37 of chase prince going to be right there behind him followed up by the 428 of nate thrasher and of course out there as well you hear the four stroke the 508 of hunter yoder we talked about him I guess you'd say taking the place of Carson Mumford as Mumford has moved his way up to the big bikes now. So he has taken Mumford's place on that Amsoil factory on the F-150. Well, Kate Namorai brought to us by Rides Unlimited, BTO Sports, and Seven and Garn A as he is being chased by Chase Prince, who's on Lynx Racing Factory Connection, Bell Helmets back KTM. And it looks like we got changes happening there, as we pointed out. Nate Thrasher now, the 428 machine, just threaded the needle and made his way into the number one spot. As we wrap up that first lap of racing, he's showing why he won that qualifying round. Well, he thrashed his way right up into first here in this one with the 32 into the number two spot now. As Amarine dropping back to second as they work their way through the rhythm section. Nate Thrasher, we've seen him on the gas all weekend long through the sand section. He goes. Unknown variable in this one right there is the third place ride of Jeff Reynolds. Reynolds DNFing his qualifying race to get into the Super Mini 2 class. And that right there may be something that, well, folks uh, wondering whether or not Thrasher's going to be able to rise to the occasion in the uh, drop of the main event. Well, we're about ready to find out. Thrasher doing everything he needed to do get to get up front. He's doing oh, everything. Oh, Jeff Reynolds down hard as he slams the ground. Swap that out. But back up on his feet, 
What amazing recovery. That kid has got to be made of rubber, man. I mean, the way he bounced around, standing up there, shaking his head. Unfortunate for him, we're going to wow. see a double DNF in this particular Super Mini 2, 13 to 16 year old class. Unfortunate uh, in both occasions, it looks like. Well, we didn't really see him off the start so much, but he was coming on strong there in that one. Just looked to me like he overjumped the Fox double just a bit. Got a little bit of head shake coming through that, uh, what I like to call the mini gravity cavity there on the back stretch. And it bit him there on that one hard. Glad to see him back up and on his feet and okay. Obviously, you can see the disappointment on his face. Well, here's the running order now. Thrasher, Amarine, Chase Prince back to third. Joshua Varese is fourth. Hunter Yoder on that four stroke in the number five spot. Crockett Myers is running sixth aboard the 411. Aiden Shive, the 731, is seventh. Patrick Murphy, number four, is eighth. Jose Goodell is uh, the 88 and ninth. And Sage Lewis rounds out your top 10 aboard the 142. Keeping an eye out on Derek Leatherman in 11th. Thomas Welch in 12th. Diesel Garretts in 13th, Sawyer Shoemaker in 14th, and Noah McLaughlin in 15th. Those riders have been moving up from about the 18th, 19th place positions. They've each gained a couple of spots of the last lap. Well, and Nate Thrasher out front, working his way up and over the finish line. There you see the 32 of Caden Amrine out of Great Penn, Kansas. Last time by the line there. Nate Thrasher with a 102.4. He's now got a five second lead over Caden Amrine with 104.9. Wow. So it looks like, uh, let's take a replay here of Jet Reynolds. Oh, there it was. He scrubbed that jump. Oh, wow. Just wasn't able to bring it all the way back. Man, right back up on his feet, though. I'm not going to say he wasn't a little bit stunned, but you can see he's very frustrated at this particular point. We'll wish the best for him. Hope to see him back out again here in a little bit if he's got some more classes to ride. But, wow, Jet Reynolds. You know, we know what he's capable of. Absolutely. We've seen him We've seen him at Loretta Lens on more than one occasion, so I don't think this is going to deter him so much. But I will say one thing. This is certainly going to give Nathaniel Thrasher a big boost of confidence heading into this 2018 uh, amateur season. Well, yeah, you know, and confidence is such a huge part in this sport. And Nate Thrasher right now, he is out to over a five-second lead. We'll get the exact here as the 32 of Amherst crosses eight seconds. Wow, Chase Prince moving up a little, gaining a little time on the second place ride. He in third aboard the 37 for Reeves, gaining a little time as well aboard the 24. Only talking tenths of a second. Actually, uh, Joshua Varese, though, about two seconds, or actually about a second and a half faster than both Amarine and Prince, has closed the gap up to two tenths of a second behind Prince. And we've got a heated battle right now for the number three spot with the uh, 37 and the 24 machines now making their way around, and I believe this would be the final lap if this is a five-lap race. Well, yeah, and Hunter Yoder trying to work his way up there as well. Look at this battle we got here side by side. The 24 and the 37, Ooh. Prince and Varese. The Perfect. 24 making his move on Prince now. So the 24, Varese works his wow. way up to the third place spot. Man, how, I mean, just look, you can see just how much faster Josh Varese is going right now. And, how that is or why that is is beyond me, but that kid has certainly found something out there that is rocketing him around the track. I think he's got some of the fastest laps. Actually, Thrasher has a 101.4 on lap number one, but wow. then that would mean that uh, he has the second fastest lap in that 102 market there. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's ironic, too, that you would see these laps coming so late in the race when normally the riders would be getting tired and slowing down a bit and he's actually picking up the pace as the race goes on. Well, you know, we're talking about semi, basically professional small athletes. They, they aren't necessarily professional, but they work like professionals. They, and that's one thing that they work toward is that endurance. And they know through science, through training, through studies, that that's where the race is won. So they start working with their training and conditioning and they've got themselves already conditioned for this moment. They do, it's absolutely incredible the amount of work that goes in behind the scenes from these young riders as they're working their way around here. There you see the 428 and Nate Thrasher working his way through the web section one final time. Checkered flag for Nate Thrasher. Thrasher gonna take the Super Mini 2 title here at the RC Supercross. Wow, a 101.840 is fastest lap. 85, 9 to 12, coming up next, Nathaniel Thrasher taking the win. Caden Amarine in second, Joshua Varese is your third place ride. Chase Prince, Hunter Yoder routing out the top five. Then it's Crockett Myers, Aiden Shivey, Patrick Murphy, Sage Lewis, and Thomas Welch, your top 10.
Well, fantastic ride for all those riders right there as we get set to go now for another group of our uh, mini riders, 85cc, 9 to 12. Race number 86 on uh, the line here. Well, this one not so easy to get in. We had a couple of divisions for qualifying. Uh, Casey Cochran, the 66 from Groveland, Florida, took a uh, win and clean and care rider on the Yamaha. Tyler Moore, 331 from North Fort Myers, Florida, also took a division race win. And Ryder D, Ryder D Francesco, he took a uh, took a win in his division race as well. Actually, I'm seeing here, I'm thinking maybe Tyler Moore might have actually won his through the LCQ, and that's exactly what it is. So, uh, so it's Ryder D, the number 199, and 66 Casey Cochran coming in top shelf here as far as taking those uh, division race wins. But as we well know in these main events, Mike Garrison, that it's anybody's race, and these starts are very critical for these riders. And you put them all together, it's a whole different element of racing out there. Oh, you're absolutely right. Another one to watch for here in this one, the 411 and Nicholas Romano, the Team Green Kawasaki yes. rider and teammate of Ryder DeFrancesco. Yes, yes, those uh, those two definitely uh, ones to watch. Uh, see, uh, looking here, Preston Bozflog. This kid really saw some him coming on strong late last year. And we can see with his results from the earlier qualifier, he's kind of picking up where he left off with a second place position for the KTM Golden Tire Fox ODI back team. He's at a battleground Washington, a perfect place for him to be from to, to do what he's doing right now as he's getting set to wage war here at the World Center of Racing, Daytona International Speedway, the ninth annual Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross. And don't forget, folks, tomorrow it's ATV Supercross. We'll see the four-wheelers out here as well. Be sure and tune in. But right now, it's all about uh, can these 85, 9 to 12-year-olds can ride, can any of these guys stop Ryder D? He seems to be the fastest. We got a lot of them down in that first turn, Mike. Oh, and I tell you what, Ryder D, he did not get the start he was looking for. Deach Francesco, he's going to be buried in about fourth or fifth right now. It's going to be the 832 out front with Chance. the whole shot, Chance Hymas. Hymas got third on his Kawasaki Team Green Fly racing back Kawasaki out of Pocatello, Idaho. Hymas uh, got himself in a great position. Now he's just got to hope for the best things to happen behind him as he puts the hammer down. Well, and there you see Hymas down the back stretch. He goes right now already out to a little bit of a lead over the 66. That is going to be Cochran in the number two spot. Of course, Cochran already a race winner from earlier today. But look who is Ooh. right behind Cochran, the 199 of Ryder D. Francesco. This could get pretty good because these two are going to battle up. And if they start battling and Cochran can hold Ryder D. at bay, maybe your early leader here, the 832 of Hymas, might have the opportunity to stretch. Oh, but uh -huh. Ryder D. gets by. Threaded needles there. That was a perfect line choice as he goes in just under the 66 of Cochran. Laying chase. You can see that a little bit of distance did start to open up between those uh, two, uh, the Cochran and your leader there. But uh, now, looks like Ryder D's gonna try to close that back up on Chance Hymas now. Well, D. Francesco, right now, his speed is undeniable as he is absolutely attacking the track here in this one. Some of the fastest corner speed we've seen all day long out of these uh, 85 CC and Super Mini Riders to Di Francesco as he works his way out of the back straight. Last time by the line, they were 2.5 seconds apart between Hymas and Di Francesco. We'll see what it's going to be this time around. I got a feeling Di Francesco is going to close that gap quite a bit here on this one. And look at this, already closing in on him into the sand section they go. Well, I tell you, being here at Ricky Carmichael, amateur supercross, and one rider if I've seen in the history of this event kind of likens the uh, potential that Ricky had at this age might just be Ryder D, to be honest with you. Talk about prodigies. This kid is a prodigy. Winning at the youngest age, I think any rider has ever won a national championship at Loretta Lens at, what was it, just barely five years old. Yep. So, I mean, when you look, take into consideration all that and what he's done since that, man, this kid is uh, certainly on fire, and he's going to be one to watch throughout his entire career. Well, Rodney, what he's just done here is taken over the lead as he went to the inside there on the 832 machine. Ryder D. Francesco, now your leader. The Hope. 832, top of the number two spot here in this one of Chance Hymas. Poetry in motion there for Ryder D. No doubt about it. Uh, could be one of the next big prodigies as far 
As American Motocross and Supercross is concerned, this Hyman's trying to lay chase from back in second. He's got a good steady pace and rhythm going with Nick Romano, the 4 one out of Bayside, New York. Another Monster Energy Team Green Kawasaki rider back to the number three spot. Casey Cochran, your first yellow machine out there out of Groveland, Florida. Suzuki rider on the number 66 who took a uh, win in division races is uh, holding steady back there, 108. He's about three seconds behind Romano right now, but Romano is on a mission, it looks like. Preston Boastwalk, the number 28 machine, rounding out the top five in his trip Rex Road. Tyler Mashbrier, Jordan Renfro in eighth, Colton Truly in ninth, and Isaac Jurgens in the, the number 10 spot. Well, Nicholas Romano still in the number two spot right now. Six tenths of a second behind Hymas for second. Less than that now, I believe, Mike. Whoa, oh, down they go. Wow. And a huge crash there. Was that, I believe, the battle that we were watching there between, was that Hymas and Romano for that second place position quite yes. possibly? That was the 364 Okay, there. okay, that was not, but that is Ryder D out front. So Brighton Richards was the one getting caught up in that along with another, uh, Kawasaki Ryder, not sure who the other one was. All right, we're going to watch a replay on that and just see exactly what happened as Ryder D wraps up another lap. There comes DeFrancesco by. Ryder, lap traffic oh, gets out of the way. Man, wow. he got landed on right there. Oh. oh, what a heartbreaker there. Wow, and that was the 411 of Romanos landing on top of that other rider there. That is tough. Wow, hard, hard for both riders. I mean, you got... Obviously, the pain, I'm sure, that was inflicted by that uh, little get-together there. But uh, just the uh, time loss there, man. Romano is, I know, uh, got to be frustrated, but satisfied at the same time that his buddy's okay. Yeah, that's very true. Ryder DeFrancesco right now out front leading the way here in this one. No trouble so far in this race for him. Chance Hymas moving up to the number two spot. That's going to put Casey Cochran, the Suzuki rider out of Groveland, Florida, up into third. Most Lou's going to be up at the number four spot. Rex Road in the fifth place spot. Bashbeer, Renfro, Janik, Romano, and Truel, your top ten. So Nicholas Romano, there he is back on the track. Rodney. That's so crazy. Four. Well, I, he's way back. Let's see how far back he is, see if we can find wow. out where he's at back here for sure. Let's see Romano. He is back in the ninth place position. That is incredible, though. That wow. was a hard crash. Now, here, here's the thing to consider. Romano was turning about, oh, a four or five second faster lap than everyone else, and not, he's not going to have enough time to even get to the top five at this point, I don't think. I was going to start doing some calculations, but when you start looking at this, uh, you can see they are running out of time, and it's going to take uh, a miracle at this point to put him up there anywhere close to a top five position. But, you know, Romano is... Surprised us on more than one occasion. Back up front, we go to Ryder D as he is motoring his way around these final laps right now in hopes of taking home this Ricky Carmichael Daytona ATV Super or Daytona uh, Amateur Supercross Majors title. As he's working away around right here, you see him coming around to the uh, front straight into the whoop section. He goes white flag waving for everybody else. That checkered flag getting set to come out. Ryder D. Francesco, those your winner once again, the 85cc 9-12. Yeah, those Sunoco, Sunoco checkers flying here at the World Center of Racing. And Ryder D. Francesco takes another win here today. Chance Hymas will finish up in the number two spot. And when it was all said and done, he was 7.7 .7 seconds back. Your third place position going to the number 28 of Preston Bosplug as he moved up a couple of spots there in the closing laps. Casey Cochran dropping to fourth there at the end on the number 66. And looks like Trip Rex wrote out of Appling, George will round out the uh, top five. Then we're looking at uh, Tyler Mashburn, Jordan Renfro, Nick Romano will finish eighth, Kristen Janik in ninth, and Colton Truly will round out the top ten. Well, what a race we had right there for 85. 9 to 12. Congratulations to Ryder on yet another title here this uh, this weekend. That'll be at least his second, if not more than that. Coming up next going to be race number 87, our vet class, plus 35. And Rodney, this has been our vet classes.
have provided some of the closest racing we've seen all weekend long. I'm excited for this one. Oh, yeah. We, we got a little t uh, a taste of it. I think, what was it, in the Senior Plus 40 class there earlier? Uh, we saw uh, John Gruy out front. He had Barry Karsten. He had Greg Palmer. Uh, Paymart, uh, they were all right there uh, knocking on the door, and uh, I think that we may be in a similar situation. Let me check and see what the running order is. Is, is do we is see? I don't I see. Well, we got Paymart out there, of course. We got I seen the, that. the heat race winner, Josh Hudson, out of Ormond Beach, Florida. Uh, no, it's actually uh, David Ginolfi. Oh, David Ginolfi, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Ginolfi. Yeah, and I think, uh, honestly, yeah, come to think of it, uh, this plus 35 class, I don't think we see the Gruys and the Karstens and those guys in these particular divisions, but this one right here brings a whole new element to it as well. Uh, David Ginolfi, man, uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, made a big name for himself last year in the amateurs, especially at Loretta Lens, and uh, again here at Daytona. Uh, he's brought to us by Scott Goggles, Fly Racing, FMF, Dunlop, Pro Taper, and Twin Air. Greg Paymart, the uh, 44 Machine, Team Green, Crossroad Power Sports, GPMX, School Backed Rider. Third place went to Andy Matu, the uh, 53 from Sabatis, Mexico. That's Maine, I'm sorry. I feel like Mexico, it Mexico, Maine, it's Mexico, close Maine. <laughs> I see it here. Sometimes that happens. Fourth place, Billy Slag, and uh, we got the gate down on this one, looks like. Here comes our vet, plus 35 riders working their way through. And look at that, Roddy. It's going to be the 21 at David Ginolfi. There you go, right where he wanted and needed to be. Now, we talk about results from earlier qualifiers. Those do not count, as this is a super cross format. So however they finish in this moto is what they get for the overall. 21, Jabe, David Ginolfi out front. That's going to be Ben Graves. I believe they're in the number two spot. So we'll watch this. Now, looks like things are really starting to heat up there. Paymert now in yeah. the number two spot aboard the 44. He has really risen to the occasion uh, quite a bit. And, you know, I, I wondered, uh, has Paymart actually picked up the pace that much or has John Gruy let off that much? But I really believe it's that Paymart has picked up that much. I think he saw the successes that gruy has been having and said, hey, I want that love, man. Well, I tell you what, the team green rider of Paymart in that number two spot right now chasing down your leader. That first time by the line, they're going to be 1.1 seconds apart. But I've got a feeling Ginolfi, he's going to have company coming up behind him. Wow! Paymart airing it out through that rhythm section right there. Grabbing a handful of throttle into that one. Here they come through the sand section. Both riders going to take that tight inside line. Andy Matu now trying to get around Ben Graves. Graves finishing in the number five spot in his qualifier. Again, it doesn't matter. He opened up in third, but Andy Matu is now into the number three spot. I believe that will pop Graves off to number four. Janio Renzendi is your fifth place right. Billy Slag, six. John Sylvia, seven. Mark Powers in eighth. Shelby Retz in ninth. And Joshua Wyatt rounds out your top ten. Back up front to the battle now. Well, David Ginolfi. Out front, and Ginolfi seems to make up a little bit of time over Paymart on this far left side Man, of the track. Ben, ben Graves is under pressure now from Andy Matu. Or actually, vice versa. Matu is under uh, pressure from Ben Graves. These guys are going back and forth out here. Last time around at the end of the first lap, it was Ginolfi, Paymart, uh, Graves, one, two, and three. At the end of two, Ginolfi checks in. Paymart is second place position, 2.4 seconds back. But moving up, Andy Matu now only 3.7 seconds behind Paymart. Out of Sabatis, Maine. And then we got Ben Graves in fourth place for the 926. Billy Schlag moving up on the 50 slash of the fifth. John Sylvia up to sixth aboard the number eight from Middletown, Rhode Island. Pembroke Pines, Florida home to Genio Renzendi drops from fifth to seventh now. The 7-11 and eighth is Shelby Wright out of uh, Ham uh, Hemelstown, Pennsylvania, Rockford, Michigan for Mark Powers, is where he from, the 102 and ninth, and Joshua Wyatt out of Statesville, Virginia, the 115 rounds out your top 10. Well, Ginolfi just turning the fastest lap of the race right there, a 103.9. He's now got a 2.4 second lead over Paymart in the number two spot. They were looking at Ginolfi as he works his way back around to the front stretch. And Rodney, this whoop section here, several ruts starting to form through that whoop section. You see one on the far left, one on the far right, and then one in the middle. And it seems to me a lot of these riders having trouble staying in, as that's a long set of whoops there for those guys. So as they get in the rut, if they get out of the rut, the bike just starts swapping left to right, left to right. And these guys struggling with that just a bit here in this one. 
They most certainly are. And, uh, may, you know, obviously, I, I think maintaining good composure through that section, like, you, like you're saying, I think that's a section, and we've seen it a couple times earlier, that can sneak up and bite you the sand. The sand pit's another one of those that, that, that are, are kind of tricky there. So there's a couple really challenging sections on this racetrack that may not necessarily be the big jumps, if you know what I mean. Well, as David Iser said yesterday, the sand pits, it's almost like they're not made up of sand. They're made up of little hands that just reach up and try to grab you as you go through. And there's no telling whether those hands are going to be able to pull you off the bike or not because it just seems at random the sand pits uh, grab big bikes, little bikes, and it throws them all over the place. Well, this sand pit, actually a lot of that sand's been moved off over the course of uh, the last few motos. But I have to think after that track maintenance, you know, it might take a little longer for it to get back into that rough ruggedness that we were seeing it just probably an hour or so ago. It was really starting to be uh, a great obstacle on this course for these riders. Absolutely, as they're working their way around right now, we are looking at the number 53 of Andy Matthew. He's gonna be in that third place spot. He is uh, five seconds back right now from Greg Paymart in the number two spot. David Ginaldi out front with a 2.2 second lead here in this one. Looking at some of the differences in times, I'll tell you, there's not a lot of tight-knit battles out there, but a lot of folks well within striking distance if a circumstance or situation arise that it will afford them uh, they can strike on that uh, but really as we wrapped up lap number four I see those times and deficits are stretching out even more except until we get to about seventh place then it tightens up We're talking two seconds between first and second six seconds between third second third four to three third it's like that nine and ten seconds then you get down to sixth place Shelby Wright who's 6.3 seconds behind John Sylvia has only a seven-tenth of a second lead over Mark Powers, who is 0 0.023 ahead of Genio Rizendi. And those three riders very tightly knit together. I have to think, though, that Rizendi might be fading back a little bit, and that pass was just made on him. But Powers and Shelby should have themselves a good battle for that seventh-place position shaping up. Well, David Ginolfi still out front right now. We're looking at Paymart. This is their final lap around the track as Ginolfi Works his way up and over the wall one final time here. Down the back stretch, there's Paymart. As Paymart trying to pick up the pace just a bit here on this final lap. I don't think, though, Rodney, there's going to be enough time for Paymart to close the gap all the way up on your leader. Well, that's 2.4 seconds. They're running nearly identical lap times. I think Janolfi had this one dialed in from the word go. He reached that comfort zone out there on the racetrack and has maintained that lap after lap consistently. Uh, what we could see is maybe a lap rider slowing Janolfi down in these closing moments and giving Paymart the uh, opportunity to benefit from it. Well, that possible, is, but not going to happen. Yeah, that's right. Not going to happen. As David Janolfi, the number 21, taking the win here at our Bet 35 Plus class. Great Paymart with a great ride in the number two spot. Got to wonder if they'd had two more laps, what that race would have been like, right? I got to tell you, I, I, Greg Paymart, he was on a move there in that last one. And he was about a second and a half faster those last few laps. Yeah, he but, was closing the gap. But David Ginolfi was consistently fastest by getting out front, establishing that lead, and taking the checker flag. Andy Matthews going to finish up in that number three spot for the final podium. Here's a seventh place battle, I believe, that we were talking about. That's Shelby Wrights and Mark Powers battling it out there. The 102, and actually the 711, that's uh, Shelby Wrights and Janio Rizendi. And as they come across the stripe, Powers will win that one. And Shelby Wrights, actually it was Wrights and uh, Powers. And it will be Powers taking seven, Wrights uh, taking the 7-11. Jeff Hines, buddy, good to see you, man. Uh, he's in the eighth place position. Janio Rizendi will finish ninth. Joshua Wyatt in tenth. Jeff Hines, voice of uh, Florida Motocross here with us today. Uh, out enjoying the stuff. Want to say, hey, glad to be in your sunshine state, my friend. <laughs> Well, there you see your top five, Ginolfi, Paymart, Matthew Graves, and Schlag taking your top five there in that last one as we get set to go. Women amateur. Here's something cool. Women, the women in uh, mo uh, motorcycling conference that was held earlier today, uh, I, this right here is a good indication. I mean, we see the talents that are coming, and, you know, we've got a, a good, healthy, I think, uh, fleet of women riders and young lady riders that are coming up, but I think like so many other folks, there, there's room for more. And I Absolutely. think there's a lot of talent out there that's undiscovered, and hopefully we'll see that expand in the near future. We got Jessica Coombs, Brittany Major, Christina Wanat, 
Harley Parker, Emily Young, Faith Widener, Reese Camerata, Isabella Contapulo, Jessica Jeffrey, Ara Shelman, uh, Caitlin Hesler, and Madison Northrup off and rolling now. Well, looks like it's going to be the number 14 of Brittany Mocher going to be out front leading the way here in this one. She's out there on that Mocker Builders, Motorsports Nation, Razy, Jake Bellasterny Fitness, Honda out front, the 14, the 82 in that number, no, sorry, sorry, the number 62 in that number two spot, Isabella Contopolo. Well, I think Miss Brittany out of Preston, Connecticut has certainly made a name for herself and beginning to make a place for herself in the sport of women amateur and women's motocross period because uh, she is becoming more and more of a nationally and internationally recognized name for those folks that uh, follow the amateur motocross scene and uh, anybody that follows it I'm sure are expecting to see great things and possible championships in the future out of this young lady. Well we're looking at a good battle here for first and second as the number 62 trying to dive to the inside here. Isabello Contapulo. And uh, yes, I saw that Jessica Coombs out of Morgantown, West Virginia, part of the MX uh, sports racing family is uh, there. And yes, you do recognize the name as Coombs. That's Timmy Coombs, his wife. And uh, they are all down here. It's all a big family operation. We play just as much as we work. Brittany Major out front. Uh, Isabella Contapulo is second. Faith Widener is in third. And I think three of the hardest names in this class to pronounce <laughs> are the top three riders right now. We got, uh, well, I could have, for, the fourth name too, Reese Camarada. Uh, Caitlin Helzer is fifth. Uh, here's an easy one. Harley Parker, Jessica Coombs in seventh. Madison Northrup is eighth. And Emily Young is your ninth place finisher right now, or rider right now. And as of right now, that's the only ladies we've had five. Well, and this is our amateur division right here. Just in a few races away, we are going to see our WMX Pro Riders for their second moto. And uh, Hannah Hodges was able to take a moto one win. Bashnot took second. We'll see how that uh, shakes down in moto number two. And one thing to point out here, and I'm sure you guys did a little earlier, you said in moto two, just want to let folks know that this event is as uh, well, not only a majors event for uh, on the uh, for the Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross, but these ladies, this is a point paying event for their national championship series. Yes, and they, uh, the WMX class, the only class this weekend that actually is running the two moto format. Everybody else running a heat race and a main, but the WMX uh, riders, those girls are running a two moto format. And it's, like you said, that is the first round of their series this year. Ought to be uh, rather good series this year. The talent is just getting so strong in the WMX class. And with young ladies like this moving up through the ranks, you have to think it's only got a, a more brighter future in the in ahead. Well, look at Faith Widener right now. Widener, the 28, out of Clayton, North Carolina. Out there riding for Tucker Rocky, Sunshine Racing, KW's Auto. Triangle cycles, engine ice, and of course her family and friends. She is moving up here in this one. Two and a half seconds faster the last time than Brittany was the last time around. So we see that she has pulled up to nearly on the rear wheel of that first place ride. And it's a matter right now, she's caught her. It's a matter of figuring out how to get around at this point. Well, I think this is going to be it right here. I think she's, she's got the try. line. She's going to dive to the inside. No, I thought she was going to go to the inside. Not quite close enough to make it happen, though. You got to wonder if she uh, opted to go out of that, what the uh, inside lines are starting to look like. We yep. had made uh, mention that, you know, that those inside lines would get a little rougher. Maybe the outside lines might be a little faster if the race wore on, and this might be exactly one of those situations. Well, Brittany Mocker going to be out front here on the 14, but the 28 of Faith Wiedner right there behind her as they come through the switchbacks once again. Here they come. And Weider taking the outside line, trying to carry her speed up into the Rolex double, losing a little bit of time right there to your leader. Not much though, less than a bike length apart between them. Look Here at this. She, comes. she is putting that wheel in there, showing Brittany Major the competition is coming. But you know what? I got to hand it to Brittany. She has not shaken any or faltered any. With the sounds coming up behind her, with the, the visions in her. Uh, peripherals there you know that uh, faith has got to be in her head right now but at the same time it looks like uh, Brittany has total control 
Well, she knows Faith is there for sure, no doubt about it. And as you can see, Faith's going to try a little different line. Yep. This time she goes to the outside of this one, to the inside goes oh. Brittany. Lap traffic It's going to be the favor there for Brittany Major. I think Faith would have had the pass there on that one had it not been for the lap traffic as they work their way back around here. Another lap in the books here for our amateur women division. And right now, Faith Widener on the outside here through this rhythm lane. They have ridden about a half a second apart the entire last lap and a half. They were five tenths of a second. Lap times 115.4 and 115.2. So they're running nearly identical. Oh, Widener, a little mistake there. That might have been the one that Brittany needed. Well, we're about to find out. Is yeah, that put her. Wow. Yeah, I mean, she just one little time. bobble. Yep. I mean, she she was already in the drive, and 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 Faith was coming out of the turn. Didn't really hadn't really got the uh, drive going yet. She kind of bobbled, and it was too little, too late there for her as uh, Brittany was able to stretch that out. But it's not over yet. Look at this. It looks like she may have picked it up even more in this lap, just trying to make up that last little bit of ground. Well, if I'm not mistaken, they should be getting the white flag this time around, so they got one more lap. After this one, your full running order going to be Brittany Mott. You're going to be out front. Faith Wiener in the number two spot. Reese Camerata in the number three spot. Isabella Contopolo in the fourth place spot. Caitlin Helzer in the fifth place spot. Jessica Coombs in the sixth place spot. Harley Parker, Madison Northrup, and Emily Young. Your running order here in this one. One more to go. Major and Widener. Wiener. And right now, look at Faith trying to turn up the heat here. She is back all over the back door right now of Brittany. And she's going to take that outside line once again. Try to carry her speed into the Rolex double they go. Oh, Brittany comes up a little bit short. We are going to have a race right down to the finish here in this one. Well, no mistakes this lap. That's for sure. She is uh, closing that gap right back up. Or no more mistakes since the last anyway. And look at that, she has shaved off all the time that she needs to. It's basically a drag race to the finish, to the inside of the next turn maybe might be it as well. And look at that. I got a feeling right here, mm -hmm. Mace gonna go to the inside. Yep. Mace got the inside line on Brittany. Brittany though with the driver on the outside. That inside line getting deep and rough it looked like, so not paying any dividends for Faith just yet. Last few turns. Oh! We, oh. It's going to come wow. down to the drive in the whoop section. I'll tell you, that lap rider may have been the deciding factor there on wow. Faith's part because that lap rider, just like uh, we've seen a lap before, I mean, the, the lap traffic played a big part in this race. Two laps in a row, if I'm not mistaken there, Mike. Yes, it did. I tell you what, a fantastic ride there for Brittany Macher taking the win. So women amateur 12 plus. In the history books, and Brittany Major is a Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross Majors Champion. Well, as Tim Cotter put it earlier, she's a champion at Daytona. Yeah. That is that is wild to be able to say, the champion at Daytona. Well, there's that your is. top five finishers right there. Brittany Major taking the win, Faith Widner second, Reese Camarata in the number three spot, Isabella Contopolo taking fourth, and Caitlin Helzer rounding out your top five there for your women amateur riders. All right, 250C Junior coming up next, 12 to 17 year old group. Uh, riders to be on the, the watch for. He includes Luke Fine Phidias, the 103 slash from Zionsville, Indiana. We saw him running strong earlier today, if memory serves me correct. Uh, second place to Brian DeRuder out of Oakdale, California, the fly racing prop shop uh, Yamaha. Uh, third place position, then going to Roberto Burgos. Fourth place, Jonathan Fitzgerald out of Apopka, Florida. And let's see, do we have a fifth place finisher? I know we do. It is Doc Smith out of Chandler, Texas. Doc Smith, there you go. You, you taking off for a few minutes, Mike? Are, are you sticking around? Are you sticking around for a minute? Excellent. Jason Wygant back with us. Jason. Uh, Getting excited for the uh, WMX second moto coming up. No, I, that's what I know. I knew you were coming back for this one. Hey, let's get everybody up in here. We've got Ronnie Tomlin, Mikey Garrison, Jason Wygant. 
can give you the call. This is going to be spectacular. First moto was was great earlier in the WMX, so I'm pumped on that. So I'm going to come back over. I was helping work the podiums with David Iser. We handed out some awards. Check out some women amateur racing as well. The women will be out coming out here shortly. Yep. I guess this is our 250C junior as uh, anticipated there. 103 slash Luke Finney is grabbing the early lead on the Westfield Power Sports Fly Racing Back Machine. And of course, uh, with that, he is setting sail to try to be the uh, far and away winner as far as this particular class is uh, concerned and set the standard for 2018. And right now, he is in the driver's seat to do just exactly that. Got company coming in behind him right now, though, Matt Garrison. It looks like good battle. battle starting to shape up for second. Well, you're right. That's going to be the Kaijun Simons out of Tallahassee, Florida, working his way up to the number two spot right now as your leader through the whoop section, but the 188 can't count out Brian DeRuiter out of Oakdale, California, out there riding the fly racing machine as he is working his way up, trying to make a pass on Simons now. Into the rhythm section once again, your leader starting to stretch it out just a little bit, 2.5 second lead on lap number one. Cohen Long in the number four spot aboard the 321, Ian Kieran in the fifth aboard the 517. Roberto Burgos in sixth, Seth Stevens seventh, Olivia Mattias is eighth, Doc Smith in ninth, and Jonathan Fitzgerald rounds out your top ten. Well, your leader right now, Luke Panais, happy to be out front in control of this one. And Ty June Simon in that number two spot, Brian DeRuiter in the number three spot, going long in the four. And right now, DeRuiter trying to close the gap up on Simon. And they're working their way around by, say what, Simon looking pretty strong in the number two spot. On that 270 Kawasaki working his way through the wow. sand. Fourth place, a good battle going on for that one as well. So it looks like Ian Kieran now uh, rolling up on the back of the 321 of Cohen Long. have got a great battle going on. Jockeying for position in that one as well. And can count out that number 50 of Oliver Mattias. I think he's moved up a couple of spots as well. We'll reassess the situation for him coming here in just a few moments. But at the end of two, Luke Phineas. Phineas uh, and of course, it's K. June Simons. In second, Brian DeRuiter in the number three spot, Roberto Burgos in fourth, and Ian Kieran is now your number five ride as Cohen Long drops to six, Doc Smith up to seventh. Now Seth Stevens is eighth, dropping Oliver Mattias not drops a spot instead of gains one, and Jonathan Fitzgerald the 541 rounds out your top 10. Well, right now your leader, he is undeniably the fastest rider on the track with a 106.5. That last time by, he's got a 2.6 second lead right now on Ty June Simons in the number two spot. Brian DeRuiter still sitting in the third place spot. There you're looking at uh, DeRuiter sitting in third as he works his way in the sand. And Rodney, you made a great point about that sand section right there. The sand starting to actually get pushed out to the outside edges and actually looks to be a little bit easier as the day has gone on. Yeah, and uh, depending on what happens and how much of that they're able to dig down into, it could have a totally different characteristic underneath there and how much moisture there is into, in that dirt under that sand that was laying there. No, you're absolutely right on that one. The 217 machine of Kai June Simons in that number two spot. Now four seconds back. Luke Finus is going to be out front running away with this one. I know the base of this course is uh, like a really hard shirt. It's got a really good sandy soil mixture on top of it, which is a lot looser. So if they get down through that sand into that shirt, that could definitely uh, make, get create some hard uh, square edge bumps and uh, make it a lot different than any other section of this racetrack. Well, absolutely right. As we're looking right now, our 250C junior riders on the track for their main event, Luke Kleinheit. Out front, leading the way. Kai June Simons in the number two spot. Brian DeRuiter in the three. Going long in that four spot. Actually, it looks like it's going to be Roberto Burgos up into the four spot. And Doc Smith. We saw Doc Smith take a title early on in another class. He's up in the number five spot now. 29 riders taking to the gate on this one here. As we look next to race number 90. 89 on the track, but race 90 coming up is Masters 50 plus class. I'm getting close to that one. Race 91, college 18 to 24 year olds. And at some point here, we've got some WMX racing as well, my friends. Four laps down on this one. Mike Garrison, and not a lot of changes, but there has been some competition. Roberto Burgos, though, moves up into a number three spot, and I think that Kai June Simons might be under pressure next and is less than a second between those two in this fifth lap. Yeah, I think you're right here in this one. 
S. Simon starting to feel a little bit of pressure coming from Deruder. Yeah, Deruder's about a couple bike lanes back from it, looks like. Yeah. But it looks like long. Wait a minute. Was that 382? No, he's gotten around. He's gotten around Simons to 217. Missed that pass. Sorry about that. But look at that. A new second place ride in Roberto Burgos. Kai June Simons is your third place ride. Well, as you said earlier, they were going so fast we didn't even see it happen. <laughs> they go by, they blur, get blurry sometimes. That's right. Well, Luke Vine is going to be out front leading the way. Roberto Burgos now up in the number two spot. Simons drops to third, and look at Doc Smith. Doc Smith up in the number four spot now. Brian DeRuder, he was up in the front of the pack, and he is now in fifth. Oh, he's dropping even further than that now. He's down to sixth, so he must have fallen down somewhere. Yeah. Ian Karen back up to fifth. Like you say, though, Doc Smith, the rider that seems to have capitalized the most over that uh, last lap or so. And the misfortunes of the rider, Brian DeRuder. As they're working their way around, this will be their final lap. Yes. This time around, Luke's going to be out front on that 103 machine. Wow. He is looking for a win here in our 250C Junior 12 to 17 division. And this is where it can get a little hairy on this final lap for these uh, 250C Junior riders. There's your leader though, Luke Phineas, untouched basically since the drop of the gate in this one. He has a 7.6 second lead as they headed into the last lap and he has the checkers in hand and a Daytona Supercross Championship here as he takes a major's win here Ricky Carmichael, Amateur Supercross at Daytona International Speedway. Man, that's got to be some great bragging rights. Oh, absolutely. There you see Luke Fanias taking the win there, high-fiving the crowd here. This one, he is pumped up. The 382, a great ride for him as well. Roberto Burgess out of Deltona, Florida, working his way up to the number two spot. Kai June Simons taking third, Doc Smith fourth, and Brian DeRuder works his way back up into the top five. How about that for Brian DeRuder, man? I mean, he could have thrown this day away, but he salvaged what he could out of that. And it uh, looks like Jonathan Fitzgerald sixth, Ian Kieran drops to seventh, Hunter Blackledge is eighth, Raymer Sale in ninth, and Oliver, uh, Oliver Matt, Mattias rounds out your top 10. So well, you can see now the uh, water truck taken to the track, which is something, Rodney, we did not <laughs> expect to see this morning. If anything, uh, maybe the uh, water pumping truck to pump the water off the track after all the uh, the rainstorms and clouds that we had around the area. It was it was scary this morning, there's no doubt. But uh, I tell you, like I say, this, uh, I think they, they come into these events with that kind of in mind whenever track builders do this. And obviously there are certain points that there's just nothing you can do for things. But uh, whenever you have situations that came through like this, a uh, little preventative, preventative maintenance and a little, uh, I guess you could say experience in building these courses, you can find that uh, you can help aid and assist them along in the process. Well, and as Ricky Carmichael was telling us earlier, this track this year is unique because there is no clay on the track whatsoever. As in years past, a lot of the jump faces and the jumps have been made up of clay. This year is basically all sand. So this year it can take so much more water. Uh, you know, without becoming uh, the sloppy mess that the clay did before. And I think uh, they worried about it, you know, falling apart and the jump faces getting a little deteriorated and things like that because of the sand. But in the end, I think it's turned out fantastic. Yeah, they, yeah, uh, these jumps have held together uh, perfectly and beautifully, I believe. And of course, uh, we've had nothing but great moto after moto after moto today in these uh, final races for the uh, amateur supercrosses. And uh, right now, uh, we've had 34, well, we'll be running 34 motos, uh, main events today in that Supercross format, except once again for the WMX, which will be running their second moto coming up here in a little bit. Still looking at uh, sunshine for the most part uh, and about 70 degrees today. Perfect weather for bike week, if you ask me. I mean, you could go out for a ride today, you can go down to the beach today, you can hang out here at the Speedway today and watch great racing. It's just a perfect day to be in Florida. Oh, absolutely. And don't forget, if you're watching on racertv.com or if you're here, don't forget to stick around for tomorrow. The Fly Racing ATV Supercross right here from Daytona Beach taking place, as well as on Racer TV this weekend, the Maxxis General GNCC from Washington, Georgia, April 1st to be the GNCC Big Buck on NBCSN. Sports Network, 
And of course, April 7th and 8th, FMF Steel Creek GNCC from Morganton, North Carolina. Well, I tell you folks, uh, we are headed back to the Maxis General at Aonia Pass in Washington, Georgia. So, uh, we've been absent there for a couple of years or three years or so making a return back to that place. I know a lot of people are excited about that. And anybody that is watching and in the neighborhood, we invite you to come on over to uh, Washington, Georgia at Aonia Pass and check out the Maxis General GNCC. And if you're not going to be able to be there, tune us in on uh, racertv.com through uh, live stream as well and through Facebook Live. Well, Rodney, you were at the uh, GNCC this earlier this weekend mm -hmm. as well, over uh, just down the road in Palaka, Florida. Yes, uh, what an amazing weekend. Uh, great weather over there as well. The racing off the scale, ATVs on Saturday and UTVs. The side-by-side -side racing is uh, just becoming amazing. We had uh, a big track for these guys, a longer track than they're normally used to. About a 13.3-mile race course wow. is what these guys were racing on. Now, the UTV riders had about a seven-mile race course, but uh, re re regardless, it was a, uh, a great weekend, uh, both Saturday and Sunday. Uh, yesterday saw Caleb Russell getting off to a rough start. Uh, Stu Baylor got a whole shot if you follow that series very much. It looked like Baylor was going to win it, but man, from about sixth or fifth place over the course of three hours, having to stop in a pit stop, change his shifter and things like that, Caleb Russell was able to pull off the win over a three-hour stretch. It was uh, it was nothing less than amazing, I'll tell you. Wow, that is fantastic. As our track maintenance underway right now, here at the uh, Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross at the World Center of Racing in Daytona International Speedway in Daytona Beach, Florida. We are getting set to go here in just a few minutes. With race number 90, our Masters 50 plus riders. All right, John Gruy back out in this one. This is going to be the uh, fun one to watch again as Team Babbitt's Kawasaki Team Green Rider uh, Challenges the masses here in this class, and his first big challenger is that of Barry Karsten out of Bayville, New Jersey, on a Bromley Suzuki Answer a Rice Scott KPS back machine. We saw some great battles out of them earlier in the day today, and we only expect that it's going to transcend to this race as well. We got the 9:30 of Galen Dixon out of Weatherly, Pennsylvania, finishing third on a whole shot cycle Scott and Factory Connection back machine. Galen, actually, we saw him leading, uh, I believe it was the 40-plus class earlier and made a uh, big name for himself and uh, and looked uh, looking to try to take a win in this one again in the Masters 50-plus class. But again, John Gruy is going to be the one to beat, uh, only looking at, not only looking at the scores here, but looking at history, but looking at recent history. Something tells me if Gruy does win, it won't be by the margin that we were seeing last year at these amateur events. You can't, you can't count out the one and only Barry Carson. No, never. Hey, they've had some unbelievable battles <laughs> this <laughs> week. And uh, Roddy, this morning in their first battle together, Gruy led Carson by about two bike lengths the entire way. And in the last lap, Gruy crashed. And yeah. Carson Cruz by to take the win and gave a sick fist pump <laughs> over the finish line jump just to show the kids how That's you done. celebrate a victory here at Daytona. So <laughs> kind of a little showdown again between those two. Uh, Mikey can tell you that yesterday when you and I were at the GNCC, Karsten and Gruy had a race where they passed each other back and forth, what, like five times? Oh, Ten? You. 500 times. <laughs> <laughs> I love how whenever things are in the past, they grow, you know. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. like bass fishing. It's, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Regardless, though, it was a heated battle, and it's only going to carry over into this. I mean, it, it kind of sets the stage for the day, and I think gets them both fired up to come out and battle just like that again. Well, There's, there you see on camera, that's what those guys are going for, is Gatorade victory lane. Yes. That's Every, right. Everybody wants to stand there. Well, they probably just want some Gatorade, to be completely <laughs> honest with you. Oh, it's really thirsty. It's late in the week. Yes. Well, plus 50 riders. Jay drops. We are off and underway into the first turn they go. Will it be one of any of our riders that we've been talking about with that whole shot as they come in? It is. Said, yes. <laughs> Barry Karsten and, oh, John Gruy now. Gruy taking over the lead here in this one, the number 70. And we've already got the battle developed up front. Amazing. Karsten using those outsides again. They did not work for him. And every race they've been in has helped Gruy to go to the inside. <laughs> Barry all the way in the outside. Well, now we got the number 45 up in the number three spot. That's going to be Matt Crown out of Metamora, Michigan. And Barry Karsten chasing down Gruy. 
I love this. This has got to be the most excited I've been in a long time to watch <clears throat> to watch a plus 50 race. That's right. So we'll see if Matt Crown back there can hang with him. I think that's uh, the dad of Joey Crown, who had a pretty solid uh, amateur career of his own. Had a Team Green ride. Pretty sure that's him in third, coming out of Michigan. So that's cool to see, getting down here out of the winter up in Michigan. Same thing for Gruy. He's a Michigan guy. And Karsten coming out of New Jersey. And here we go, Gruy versus Karsten again. And I know Barry's been taking a lot of outside lines. No worries. He's going to roll back the odometer on that RMZ 450. So not going to hurt the resale value of that thing one bit. <laughs> the bike's probably 12 years old anyway. Probably has got a garage full of new ones, but he hasn't gotten to them yet. Karsten finally switched to the inside in this right-hander. Well, John Gruy there, that last side by, he aired it out through that middle rhythm section. I'm not sure exactly what line he took there, but he was way up there. You know, actually, as we mentioned all weekend, Karsten running outsides. This flashes me back to a few years ago when I was talking to Barry on the infield during the pro race on Saturday night. Malcolm Stewart had the lead in the 250 Supercross and was just blocking the whole race. He was trying to protect the inside, so he was running inside in every corner all night. And finally, Jeremy Martin was able to get by him and win the race. And Barry said, I think Malcolm's tired from having to hit those insides, insides, insides <laughs> for 15 laps. So Barry's just taking a page out of his own playbook, saving the energy by just running the high rail and not having to get hard on the brakes, not having to get down into that rut. Probably doesn't even have to downshift. One this year. section here is where he's been making up time. Yes, absolutely. He's been going for that triple-triple section. And Barry Carson last time by with a 103.9. He's going to be 1.3 seconds back from Gruy. Gruy had a 104.2 that last time by. Carson got held up a little bit with lap traffic just before the finish there as that outside line went to uh, take that outside line. A lap rider stuck in the outside. Galen Dixon, Don Baseflug, Frank Johnson, Philip Oberland, top seven. As they're working their way around, Matt Crown still sitting in the number three spot. He is going to be nine seconds back, though, from Gruy and Carson. So these two riders really stretch it out, and we, they're working their way into lap traffic, and as we've seen so many times today, lap traffic can play a big part in this one. Will Gruy be able to get through it as Phoenix Carson? Mm, boy, he got lucky there. Just wasn't sure which direction that lap traffic was going to go, and they did go to the left when he went to the right. That was almost a guessing game. It's like days of thunder. You just have to drive through the smoke. <laughs> oh, you can do it. So he, he did not lose any ground. He got through that thicket of lap traffic, and Karsten did not close up at all. This rhythm lane was big for Barry earlier. He's not quite making up the ground this time. Well, you know what? Go I, ahead. I was going to say, yeah. I think this time around, I believe Gruy is now doing the triple, triple, triple line. I yes. think you're right. Yep. So that is a race, the big advantage that Karsten had. And Gruy now trying to get away on this long front stretch where they go right across where the finish line is for the Super Speedway here at Daytona. Wow, look at all this lap traffic. And we've been mentioning it. When you get to these uh, age classes and some of the other divisions that are not ABC ranked, you get a much wider discrepancy with the talent and speed. So lap traffic becomes a bigger factor. And it's helped. Carson is actually right back to the rear wheel of Gruy. Look at this. Gruy's got to take the outside. Oh, boy. Whoa. Wow, Carson. Tuck the elbow in on that one. Oh, Gruy now. Gruy Almost crashed. Woo. I tell you what, this one's getting a bit dicey here for these riders in our plus 50 class. As you can see, both riders still airing it out through that rhythm section, coming back around into the sand now. Gruy still in the lead. Karsten in second. Both using these inside lines now. That was Karsten's chance. This is as close as he has been. The lap riders wreaking havoc. Now Gruy going all the way to the outside, avoiding that anthill down there. The Dragon's backs. This is the finish line from the pro race. And then this tricky rhythm through here. Now this ought to be interesting right here as Karsten usually uses that. Look, Karsten oh, right got there. the inside. Karsten with the move. Barry Karsten taking over the lead, but Gruy, he's trying to take it back from him now. Gruy sets him up on the inside. Gruy back to the front now. Barry Karsten drops back to second. Man. Got to love this battle between these two. So two passes already recorded. Oh, Karsten. Oh. I don't know if that was on purpose. I don't know if that was a mistake or that was Karsten just didn't want to get into that rut. But whatever it was, it cost him a ton of time. Well, yeah, it sure did here in this one. 
as they're working their way back through that rhythm section right now. Barry Carson trying to close the gap back up on John Gruy. Yeah, it's almost two seconds, and to think that two turns before that, Gruy was in the lead, and now he's two seconds back. Matt Crown, Galen Dixon, and Don Baseflug, your top five. Alan Alford, sixth. Frank Johnson, seventh. Philip Overland, eighth. Tom McGee and Rick Bigelow round out the top ten. Randy Phillips and James Nagy round out the top 12. Can Karsten find the magic again? Well, I believe this is going to be their last lap, so I think brewie has got this one in the bag. And he's going to make one final turn here, coming around through this one. I Karsten what, charging. Look, he's getting closer. He is. And lap traffic here for Gruy. Is it going to be old oh, white flag? They're going to go one more after this one. I'll tell you, Mikey, looking at it, Carson's got something figured out in that sand wash in the straight before the final turn. Yes, indeed he does. That seems to be where he makes up his most time. There he is, outside to inside. Carson's caught up again. Barry Carson keeping this one exciting for sure as he is all over the back door. John Gruy up and over the double they go now. Up and over the wall jump. John Gruy out front leading the way. Barry Carson, these two riders, anytime they take the gate, it's all smiles for the rest of us calling these races as these two riders have battled and kept it exciting all weekend long throughout the heat races and now throughout the mains. Carson goes to the outside, Gruy to the inside. Oh, this is going to be interesting here. Well, Gruy knows this is Carson's strong point. He went to the outside to try to copy him. He's going to leave the door open to the inside. Barry's going to try to charge in. He's going around the wide line. Side by side into the last turn of the race. Gruy is so good at getting into those ruts. Karsten with a big charge. Not gonna happen. John Gruy holds on by a half of a second. What a race. Wow, absolutely unbelievable. John Gruy taking the win. Barry Karsten taking second. Wow, Matt Crown gonna take third in that one. Jalen Dixon fourth. And Don Bosluk gonna take that number five spot. That's the kind of action you love to see. Different lines. They had different sections of the track where they were gaining ground and losing ground. Gruy's supposed to head to the podium. There he goes. David Iser is going to meet him down there of DMXS Radio. And the final margin of victory, 0.429 seconds. Fantastic race. There you see your top five once again. John Gruy with the win. Barry Karsten second. Matt Crown third. Galen Dixon fourth. And Tom Bosloot in the number five spot. Woo! All right, just when we wanted it, got those two out front, hooked up in a battle, and they brought the heat. Well, and coming up next gonna be race number 91, our college, 18 to 24 year old. This should be a good race to watch around. Well, here in this one, looking for that gate to drop. We are off and underway here in this one. We'll see who comes. Oh, couple riders piling up a bit there. It looks like it's going to be the 135, grabbing that early hole shot. That's going to be Marcus Phelps out of Cairo, Georgia. On that Thor, Alpine Star Bell, Space Sports Cycles, and the third, back ATM machine, the 30 in the number two spot of Chase Fastnot. As they head down the back stretch right now, Chase Fastnot in the number two spot. Of course, we're going to see Kylie Fastnot here in just a few races for the WMX. Look at this, tripling into the corner now. Wow, both tripling and sticking right with each other. This is a battle just as good as the one we just saw in the 50 plus class. Well, they've got Austin Kozad, the 138, just behind him there in the number three spot. Phelps maintains the lead, whoa, that was almost bad. For Fognacht, he just managed to get that foot back on the peg and recover. And the whoops before the finish, he could have crashed right there. He's back up. A little bit of a wild ride for him there. As you can see, there's your third place rider now. That's going to be Wyatt Lion Smith, Austin Kozad, dropping back to the number four spot. And the number 12 trying to make his move now. That's Jerko Vander with Fusion. Leaders working their way on the back side of the track right now. Looking at the number 30 of Fashnock out of Port St. Lucia, Florida. Riding the Yamaha. There you see the 138 of Austin, or 135, I'm sorry, of Marcus Phelps 
out front in control of this one. Well, Phelps with the 1.2 second lead right now. Lower Fashnock in the number two spot. Lion Smith in the third spot. Goes that in the number four spot. Man, those whoops are eaten up. Mike Garrison, you were talking about it, that at the entire track, the changes that they made from Saturday, that's probably the section that's closest to what the pros race. That whoop section is tough. Absolutely, and I think during the initial track walk before practice even got started here for the amateur event, that's what the riders were talking about. Everybody was standing in the whoop section. Everybody was looking at it, and everybody was trying to figure that out. The rest of the track, they felt confident in, but the whoop section, that was the big point that all these amateur riders were looking at. And it has been pivotal between these two. That section is where Phelps has made up the majority of its ground and pulled away from Fosnock in the battle for the lead. Lion Smith still third. Love seeing both these guys with the big triple. Lion Smith not that far back in the third place spot. Oh, Number 85. Then uh, Vanderweiser. Actually, no. Yeah, they're both actually right there. The 85 is Lion Smith. Vanderweiser is fourth. They are closing on the second place man, Fox Knot. We could have a four rider battle here. Uh, talking about the whoops, the different lines formed in them, those riders trying to get in the ruts, but that's a long set of whoops for these riders. And we, Rodney and I were talking about that a little bit. Staying in that rut seems to be a little bit of an issue for some of these riders. And as soon as you get out of it, the bike just seems to be swapping left to right for these guys. So it's a tough call on which line to take through the whoop section. There you can see those three riders all right there together as they head on to the back side of the track here in this one. Bash dot in that number two spot. He has got company coming up behind him fast though right now as White Lion Smith. He wants a piece of that second place here in this one. Marcus Phelps still gonna be out front leading the way by 3.9 seconds. You can see Phelps starting to stretch out his lead just a bit. Oh, they are all over Fosnock right now trying to hit him from both sides left and right through that sand wash. Let's see where the outside line works out for Wyatt Lionsmith in the 85. Gonna have a good drive through the whoops. Keeps the bike straight. This is gonna be a dog fight for second with three riders going for it. Well there it looked like Lionsmith, the rear wheel catching a tough block there. Just off the finish line, knocking it off the side of the track. The Lionsmith is doing everything that he can right now. He is pushing hard here in this one. At number 12 of Vander Wester Houston trying to close that gap up just a bit on Lion Smith. Side by side now for second. Lion Smith right behind Foxnock. But for a moment, they were elbow to elbow. Let's see who triples the corner. They all have it. Working their way through that sand section once again. Coming into the rhythm section now, Fonshock, he is holding really strong here in this one. He knows those guys are back there for sure. And he is uh, taking the pressure quite well. Back into the whoop section once again, you see Fonshock stretching out to the left-hand side just a bit there. White flag is out now, one lap left to go here for these riders. And look at the charge right now from Wyatt Lionsmith. Gonna work this high line, and he and, does oh, it. Wow. That was some serious corner speed right there, making it happen. Where is Ricky when we need him? As he just got passed on the outside. Yeah, it finally came around. You just want to prove yourself right. You had said this about nine hours ago. Yes, that that would happen. The outside would eventually work its way in. It took all the way to race 91 for it to happen, but it happened. <laughs> As they're working their way around right now through the sand section, they go. Phelps going to be out front leading the way. Fast not in the number two spot. Wyatt Lion Smith in the number three spot. Checkered flag is out now. The 135 of Marcus Phelps taking a big win here in this one in the college 18 to 24 year old riders. Well, Phelps just able to pull away from that one. He earned it. Yeah, Phelps right there, taking a big win here. This one, Lion Smith taking second, Fashnock taking third, and Wester Houston taking fourth, and Corey Karsten, I believe that is a direct relation to Barry Karsten taking Son, yep. five spots. Hey, real quick, we got uh, Andrea Lieb here uh, from uh, On Track Schooling, but also the mother of a rea reality show star.
Yes. Michael, Michael Lee, right? That's reality right. show. Yes. Star. Reality show star. Yes. Mom. Yeah. Part of that uh, IB Corp, uh, the race supercross. As you can watch on YouTube, uh, Ryan Hughes' team. But uh, On Track has been a part of this for a long, long time, the amateur scene. Yes. And I'm really excited because I went to my first DNCC race. Oh, I you did? I your advice. Finally. And hey. I think I'm going to get my TTR out. Go I'm ride, go one. ride. Go ride. Go the woods. You yeah. got two hours yeah. in yet? I just want to thank everybody because uh, it's been amazing between being there, seeing our students here, and being a part of the women's event. Excellent. We got the gate down. This is it, our WMX final moto. Phenomenal battle in moto number one. Five's not trying to chase down Hannah Hodges, but Hodges hung on for the moto victory, and we've got the contenders up front again. Coming out of this hard left-hander, Astadio has got the lead. Jarvis going to try to take it around the outside of the number 30. Astadio holds her off. Hodges is fourth. Boz, or sorry, Hodges is third. Bosnock is fourth. They are applying the heat to Astadio. Hodges trying to get her for second. Well, it's a good Duke, race already. Yes, and Duke White, this is what we saw in moto number one. Remember, Jarvis was up front. She went for that triple just like that right there. But she made it that time. In moto number one, she came up short on lap one and was able to, uh, unable to keep the bike running. Sold the bike, and that let Hannah Hodges take over the lead. Yep, not going to make the same mistake twice. So, oh, oh, no, no, she does. Second time today, Jarvis tips it over on the first lap. And look at this. Bosnock has gone from fourth to first in one corner. Wow, the two-for-one special right there for Bosnock as she goes all the way to the front. The 469 in that number two spot now with Hodges in third. Wow, so I, I, I believe that Fosnock was trying to work the pass on Astadio for third, and then at the same time, Jarvis fell. That slowed up Hodges, who was stuck behind her, and that allowed Fosnock to go from third to first. Well, so now, now it's Hodges' turn to play catch up. Yes, and Astadio now dropping back to the number four spot as Jarvis is on the back door now of Hannah Hodges. Jarvis didn't lose as much ground as she did in the first moto. She is right there. This is going to be a phenomenal battle. Uh, real quick, Andrew Lee, uh, what is Hook in there for on-track homeschooling, real schooling, I should say, as opposed to the homeschooling, and how can people get more info? Yeah, so anybody wants to get in touch with me, just go to ontrackschool.com, send me a message, and I'll get in touch with you, and we'll make sure that your kids are getting a phenomenal education. Our teachers are great, our school is growing, and we couldn't be more grateful than, you know, the opportunity that we have to be here and share it with you guys. And being accredited is a big difference in some of the alternatives out there. Yes, absolutely. Speaking of the difference, uh, accreditation is huge. Oh, we just saw Jarvis with a mistake in the whoops. How did she save that, Mikey? No idea. Sheesh. All right, somehow she kept it on the track and didn't even lose that much ground. You know she's going to dig deep, and so is Hodges, and they're going to try to get the Foz knocked here in the opening round of the WMX championship. On your lead with on track. Uh, you got some hookup for some of these riders who are at the training facilities and trying to integrate yourself with some of the riders that are living that full-time yeah, lifestyle? Uh, absolutely. We've, uh, one of our scholarship riders got third place today, Renfro. Uh, right. Renfro so yeah. grateful to be able to help him out with his school so that he can train and actually get an award today. He was very stoked about that. Rider DeFrancesco, uh, Casey Cochran, um, Aiden Beckage. We've got a whole slew of little guys coming up that are really fast. Yeah, yeah, that's a bunch of titles right there between Cochran and Pete Francesco and some others. So yes. good luck to your riders, but most importantly, good luck with the studies. Yeah, Important. yeah, you know what? I love seeing them successful on and off the track. Awesome. All right, we're going to get back to this battle. Thanks for stopping by, Andrea Lee. Thank you. From uh, On Track. What? And uh, oh, wait, well, we give her apples because she's a teacher, and we get lollipops. That's, that's a fair trade in my mind. Oh, it's apple flavor. Okay, we're good. Back to our battle. Jordan Jarvis, what kind of fitness and endurance does she have? She's absorbed a going off the track, a tipping over, and still digging deep. I tell you what, and she's had multiple little occasions here. She's just able to hold on to that bike, and it's amazing what she's able to do with the bike and the saves that she's made here in this one. She's pushing so hard to get back up to Hannah Hodges. And Hodges trying to hang with Fosnock. Astadio still Oh, forward. no, oh, no Jarvis. Jarvis! A big crash on the triple. That was the section that cost Jarvis in moto number one. And now it has put Jarvis on the ground here in moto number two. That is not what we like to see. Wow. She was still digging, still going for it. Meanwhile, back to your leader, Fosnock. 
Hodges is not too far back. This one is certainly not over. They're going to get into lap traffic. Complete roll reversal of race number one, where Fosnock was behind Hodges and had to try to make up ground. Now it's Hodges' turn to try to do the same. Well, if they were to finish the way they sit right now, Fosnock looking for the 2-1 overall win, where Hodges would be going 1-2. So right now, Hodges, to get that overall win and start this season out with the points lead, she's got to get up there and at least fight her way into the number one spot over Fosnock. Man, it's some great racing right here. Lap traffic could tell the story. We mentioned it in this WMX class, especially early in the year. Some of the riders able to train full time through the winter. Some riders are not. So late in this second moto, you're probably going to see a fairly big speed differential with some of the riders. So that means lap traffic will be a factor. Man, Hodge is absolutely blowing up some berms out here. But despite that effort, Fosnock just inching away out front. Well, Nasadulo now going to move up into the number three spot. Shelby Rowland in the number four spot, and Brinsley Dias in that number five spot here in this one. There you see a later working her way through the whoop section. Last time by the line, they were 2.5 seconds apart for Fosnock and Hannah Hodges. Hodges this time around going to be 2.5 still. So right there together, first and second. Two and a half seconds apart. And Jason, at this point, if you're Hannah Hodges, what do you have to do to make up the time? They're running so close in lap time. Both of them last time by with a 106.8. What are you going to have to do for Hannah, if you're Hannah Hodges, to catch up to Kylie Fashtock? Yeah, I think she's got to count on when they get to lappers. It might help her out. I don't know if there's a different line that's going to help. It might actually hurt if she gets too experimental back there. So I say you try to do exactly what Fosnock is doing, and then hope that the lap traffic is your ally. It's going to be tough in this WMX class. We saw what a factor it was two motos ago in the 50-plus class, where it really cost all the lead. And the 70 of John Gray had opened up, and that allowed Barry Carson to get back in it. And the, the corner speed on the outside, really, in these firms worked out pretty well for Hodges. Let's see in the whoops. A little bit closer. Than Whoa, close. wow. Hanging on to that thing. That bike was left, right, left, right. It sounded like the uh, marching orders from a drill sergeant. <laughs> Holding on to it, though, is Hodges not giving up. But still, six tenths of a second quicker was Fosnock the last time around. Uh, Whatever yeah. Hodges is doing is still not quite enough to close the gap. Fosnock down into the 104 range here in this one. That is the new fast lap of the race. A 104.737 for Kylie, your leader out front. And as you said earlier on today, there's a reason she's got a number one plate. Trying to start this championship off the right way, gunning for the overall win if she gets the 2-1. Talking to David Iser after the podium in that one, he said that Jarvis in third, Fosnock in second were not happy. Just one moto, but it doesn't matter. They want to win them all. Well, good news. Jordan Jarvis, by the way, must be okay because we see her now. She's back up. She's wow. going to go a lap down. But the fact that she was able to get up from that wicked crash, these girls are tough. That was a bad crash. And that section back there, that is some big air that she was going for there on the triple section and some fast sections there as well. She was moving when she hit the ground. So good to see her back on the bike and back out there. Yes, that was as over the bars as over the bars gets. That was like a complete front flip. Landed flat on her back. Oh, it's okay. Wow, that got a little tight there yeah. <laughs> between the leader, Fosnock, just trying to put Jarvis a lap down and they collided. And Jarvis right now says, well, I'm going to at least hang with her, show her that I've got at least for round two of this season. She's got to be a little bit worried about me. Hannah Hodge is now going to be 4.3 seconds back. So Fajdot taking over right now here in this one and trying to check out. Yeah, I was just going to comment. It has gone unraveled for Hodges here over this last lap or lap and a half because Fajdot really pulled it out just to get into that lap traffic where I thought that might be advantage for the second place rider but Fosnock has checked out now, and now just has to put the finishing touches. Well, coming around now, looks like that white flag gonna be out this time around for your leader. One lap left to go here. Kylie Fosnock looking for an overall win here in Daytona to kick off the WMX Championship. She finished second in moto number one. She's looking to finish first here in moto number two. Hannah Hodges in that number two spot right now. Ossadulo in the three spot. Shelby rolling in the four, Brinsley Dias in the five. And Jordan Jarvis, even after that crash, wow. is running six. Wow. That's valuable points later on, and she's going to be gunning for this title. But right now, the rider they're all chasing, both from last year and now into this year, is the number one of Fosnock. It's 
switching over to the Yamahas this year. You see Jarvis, unbelievable recovery. I mean, that was a hard crash. You can see she's very much back up to speed. That is how determined these riders are. So it's just about over for Fosnacht on the number one. There's Jarvis. That big crash still in sixth. But we're about to crown our WMX overall winner today from round one in Daytona. Put your hands together, take them apart, put them together again. Let's cheer for Kylie Fosnock. What a fantastic ride right there for Kylie. As Kylie coming around for a moto number two win and the overall fantastic run there for her. Hannah Hodges is going to be coming in the number two spot for a second overall here in Daytona. Austin Delo working her way around, hoping for a third place finish. I like the versatility of Fosnock, man. I've seen her obviously ride very well in the traditional motocross tracks. And she did not skip a beat coming out here to the Supercross style Daytona design here in Florida. She was on the gas, didn't get that first moto. She was super bummed about that. I'm telling you, this group is not just as competitive, more competitive, more angry when they finish second than probably any other group of riders out here. The Fog's not able to challenge that or channel that energy back and get the win. Here is your top 10 in the WMX Moto 2. Hodges second, Estadio third. Shelby Rowland and Brinsley Dias, top five. Jarvis recovers for six. That's impressive. Poland check seventh. Bryce Martinez, eighth. Amanda Brown and Amel Emily Jade Lavelle rounds out the top ten of WMX. That was awesome racing. We got the big stars up front that we wanted to see. And Fosnock not going to be really happy because she actually had to get around them and she did it. Again, you got to be happy, too, for Jordan Jarvis as a sixth-place finish. As uh, you know, Ricky Carmichael has said, you championships are won on your worst days. And I would say, with a crash like that, that's one of Jordan Jarvis's worst days of this season, I think. So uh, to see a sixth place finish out of Jordan Jarvis, that is fantastic. So that's going to do it. We end with our pro race. And by the way, I remember we actually did that at Loretta Lynn's this year. The final moto of the week was the final WMX Pro points paying moto. And it was a battle literally down to the last corner of the week. The last race, last corner, there were passes and action. So it's really cool to uh, finish it up with our WMX Pro division after uh, two straight days of solid amateur competition. We'll be back next year for the 10th annual event. Uh, but this is Racer TV's production. We're glad to be able to bring this to you live. Welcome aboard. Thank you Mike very Garrett, much, sir. I had a fantastic time. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look, he, he saved me when uh, we had to be here at whatever, 5.30 in the morning and then set your clock forward or ahead or something like that. Mikey was ready on Sunday morning, taking us to the qualifier, practice, and everything else. I have a feeling this is just the first of many, 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 many more times we're going to be seeing Mike Garrison. Yeah, I, I have a feeling as well. Yeah, we'll bring it back from Wednesday's race. I like that feeling. You like having that feeling. I, yeah. I like having that feeling. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> what happens on Wednesday? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. He's no coming right. back tomorrow yeah, for ATV Supercross. Oh, yeah. right on. You're in. Yes. yes. All right. Yeah. ATV Supercross by Fly Racing yep. Yep. tomorrow. So uh, we'll continue with our professional racing. It'll be awesome to have uh, the riders out there. We'll be seeing Joel Hetzer donning a number one plate. Joel Hetzer on the number one. Chad Weenan will have the number 44. It'll be interesting to see whether or not, though, uh, Chad Weenan can... Uh, resume himself as a uh, championship contender here and win the uh, Daytona ATV Supercross as he did last year and the year before. It's going to be interesting, no doubt, and uh, I think folks ought to stick around and watch it if you get a chance. If you're going to be uh, out and about someplace, certainly uh, pull it up on Racer TV because you're not going to want to miss a, a moment of the action that's taking place here tomorrow, amateur and professionally. Absolutely. That's the Fly Racing ATV Supercross at Daytona tomorrow right here on racertv.com. For everyone enjoying this show, the Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross at Daytona is now complete for the ninth year. We'll be back, I'm sure, I'm certain, for year number 10 next year. So for everyone who helped out, David Iser, who did the heavy lifting, working all of our podiums and trophy presentations, Mikey Garrison, Rodney Tomlin, I'm Jason Wygant saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you from Daytona again tomorrow for ATVs and for amateur and professional motocross next year. And for everyone at Daytona, by the way, there will be the uh, Daytona TT that you can watch Thursday night on uh, Fans Choice TV if you want to watch the TT action right here from Daytona as Bike Week keeps on rolling along. But for now, that's it on a Tuesday from Florida. Thanks for watching.